question in total. How many syllables are there in a haiku? 215-263-WMMR, the number. We will go to Corey and see if we can get the answer. Yo, Corey, good morning. Hey, good morning. Gadzooks, guys. Gadzooks, buddy. All right, so do me a favor. Tell me how, how many syllables are in a haiku, please. I'm going to go with uh, 17. You are correct. Yeah. Yeah. 17. How many in a high mic? Is the uh, answer in a high mic? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> two high mic. Yeah, I think mean, it's just two. Yeah, yeah. high yeah. mic. Yeah, one yeah, two. There it is right there. <laughs> uh, Corey, hang on. We're gonna give you a family four pack of tickets for the 2023 Philadelphia Auto Show, January 28th through February 5th at the PA Convention Center. It's over 30 indoor vehicles in motion at Camp Cheap E Track, and for the first time ever, the Ram Track, and you can experience the ride. Tickets are available at phillyautoshow.com. I think they're going to go this year. It's been a while. I love the auto show. So we're going to lead with, obviously, uh, the bizarre news that Lisa Marie Presley, the only child of Elvis Presley, died at the age of 54 last night. Uh, so effed up. Priscilla Presley left uh, said in a statement, uh, it is with a heavy heart that I must share the devastating news that my beautiful daughter Lisa Marie has left us. Uh, she had started the week in a festive mood, first celebrating what would have been her father's 88th birthday with fans at Graceland, and later tearfully applauding alongside her mother Priscilla as Austin Butler received a Golden Go Globe Award for his portrayal of the King of Rock and Roll in Baz Luhrmann's biopic Elvis. They both really embraced him. They were, I think, part of the selection process when when picking him. So they they're they're all very tight and uh she got especially emotional as i was watching i told you preston she did look a little off during that thing but yesterday uh she suffered an apparent cardiac arrest at uh, her home in calabasas and was transported to a local hospital and she died hours later although presley was famous from the moment she was born and a singer in her own right she did have three albums she released she truly uh leaped into the pop culture vortex with her surprise marriage uh, to Michael Jackson and later Elvis aficionado and actor Nicolas Cage. Both those marriages were short-lived, although more lasting unions brought four children, including her son, Benjamin Keough, who apparently died by suicide yeah. in 2020 and was laid to rest at Graceland. So she just, always blamed herself, by the way. So just a series yeah. of uh, tragedies for, you know, Priscilla specifically. You remember, them, the, the, I mean, each one of those is a pop culture moment uh, of... Great import. Michael Jack. Do you remember that Michael Jackson marriage when everyone went, what? Yeah. How did that happen? Yeah, Nick absolutely. Cage, the same thing. Kathy, you said something earlier in the, and when you reported this in news that, uh, you know, Elvis died. Was he, You said he was 42 years old. Yeah. I, I, I just have a hard time wrapping my mind around that because Elvis will always seem much, much older than yes, me. Because of where he sits in, in, the, in the timeline. In the timeline. Yeah. Uh, and, and the fact that 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 Lisa Marie outlived him by more than 10 years I blows know, my mind. Well, he his well, Elvis's mom died, I believe, was of a heart attack. He died of a heart attack brought on by an impacted colon. Uh, where, just all the drugs yeah, all he that did. Stuff, yeah, yeah. Just, it just made it. Um, he was in poor health. So genetically, you know, she was, might have been predisposed to it, but 54 still, you know? Two nights ago, Butler thanked uh, her from the Golden Globes stage for de uh, the, her dedication to honoring her father, by the way. Uh, we have a couple of clips, I think, uh, yeah. here, and these are um, who, who are so you sent these over, Steve. Who are right. who are the people? So at least Marie, these we, we have Lisa Marie talking about who she favored. You know, does she take after more her father or her mother? Okay, here we go. I think probably more my father. On I'm, I lean more towards that side of my family a little bit. Although I have my mom's strength, I think. Um, his personality and her, sort of his intensity levels sometimes I, I can emulate pretty well. Um, not intentionally, but just kind of in some obviously mannerisms, which I don't even sometimes know that I have. And then, she, yes. She, she, did, she did have the eyes, oh, you know, yes. and if she held her head down, yeah, she, she looked, looked like Elvis. A lot like him. And then we have a clip of Elvis who would mention Lisa Marie very often on stage. Here he goes. That's what my little daughter says. My little daughter goes around and says, Hey, Elvis, what you gonna do? So, what do you got? You know, six years old. Hey, Elvis? You know. I said, honey, I'm your daddy. Don't call me. Hey, okay, Elvis. <laughs> it's funny. When you, when you do listen to Elvis, he does do that. He, he, that that's all right. Yeah. That's right, man. Yeah. He, he did talk like that. That's right. It ain't no joke, man. Um, but uh, he adored that girl. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, Nicholas Cage did release a statement. They did uh, get in touch with him last night. He said, it's devastating news. Lisa 
had the greatest laugh of anyone I ever met. She lit up every room, and I am heartbroken. I find some solace believing that she is reunited with her son, Benjamin. So I went and saw uh, Letterman one time, and uh, she was the guest, Lisa Marie Presley, and um, it was um, surprisingly uh, boring. Uh, yeah. You know, it, she didn't really bring a whole lot to the right. table. and, and, and She day, wasn't dynamic. No, she was yeah. not. And, and, and you expect... Oh, Elvis's daughter. We're going to get Elvis stories. Right, right, man. Michael Jackson I'm stories. Period. <laughs> and, uh, Look out. Look out, man. <laughs> Karate. Put a but, sofa cushion in there. But there were times, like, there there are, ve- she can be very boring, but there were times, maybe not so charismatic, but she'd tell a story, yeah. and you'd be like, oh, my God. Like, right. she's talking about Elvis. Yeah. That's pretty cool that we know yeah. that now. Yeah. yeah. Just terrible news. 54 years old, a heart attack out of nowhere. Especially because when I first heard it and heard she'd had the heart attack, the, with the perception was that she was being tended to and that, okay, she got beat. Yeah. And, and then later on, she passed. What? Yeah. 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 Woke up this morning to that uh, to that news. That's messed up. On WMMR.com. It popped right up on my oh, on my phone screen. Yeah, yeah. Breaking news right there on WMMR.com. All right, so I have a few other stories. This is a little lighter. How about this? We need light. It's uh, uh, sad, bro. Yeah, Julia Mitchell. Doesn't have the same ring as Julia Roberts. The pretty woman star discovered on a recent episode of Ancestry's Finding Her Roots that her great-grandfather, John Roberts, is actually the result of an affair that her great-great-grandmother had with a married man. And when she found out the news, the actress asked Dr. Henry Louis Gates Jr., but am I not a Roberts? And researchers found that Julia and her cousin most closely matched the DNA of a man named Henry McDonald Mitchell Jr. Who lived down the street from the family. Oh, really? That, wait, so, yes. Wait, so she was the affair? No, she, she was from the affair? No, 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 no. It was her great great grandmother, but if the lineage continued. She, okay, she right. would not oh, have. Okay, yeah, yeah. got Dude, it. Got I, it. Listen, your first sentence threw me off yeah. so much because <laughs> you said that it doesn't have the same ring. And so yeah. it doesn't have the same sound is what you mean by ring, right? Like, yes. All right, so when you said doesn't Julia Mitchell doesn't have the same ring as Julia Roberts, I was like, well, why would she have the same ring? Like, Yeah, I so said the way it's written here is Julia yeah. Mitchell doesn't have the same ring to it as Julia Roberts. But we're so familiar. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, yeah. oh, whose ring does she have? She has a ring doorbell? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what does it look like? Sorry. Yeah. All right, we'll back that up. <laughs> Julie Roberts had a, a, a DNA match done, and her dad, her great great, her great grandfather, is actually someone else. Have you ever watched that show? I, I have it, clips it, of it. I've never watched it from beginning to end. It's but. Very, it's very cool. It it shows you, I think, two things. It shows you the wonder of checking on your ancestry and the potential pitfalls. Yeah. As when um, Ben Affleck found out there were slave owners in his past. Ben Affleck's not a slave owner. Right. Yeah. But it, it was just right. in, his, in his in his past. Sure. But it's something he did not want to. It, it was he, he it hit, hit him. Obviously, it would hit anybody. Yeah. But um, there that's the that's the edge you walk. Yes. When you do that, if you want to know. Yeah. I did see one episode of a, and it was a, a really beautiful girl and her mother. Uh, she didn't know who was the father of this girl. Uh, I could, don't think I'm the mother. It could have been three different guys. You always joke. It, yeah, I know. It could have been three different guys, and uh, and they had them. She had them meet all of them. Oh and man! And then they opened up the DNA results in front of like all a Mori. Yeah, it was kind of wild. That's weird. But it was very sweet. Like, okay, like everybody was. Everybody was happy. Now good all for these this. men had constant sex with your <laughs> Dude, mother. That's all yeah, I yeah, kept yeah, thinking yeah. about. But the mother was like sixteen or something yeah. like that. Wait, and, you always joke what? Uh, <laughs> that Rochelle's adopted. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, because right. she just doesn't seem she, like, like the them. rest of her family. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. You got her out. She got out. Uh, <laughs> all right, you mean mo- Rochelle Roberts? We're moving on. <laughs> I, I have a couple of other stories that, that definitely need to be, be reported on. Variety has uh, reported that uh, Justin Roiland, co-creator and star of Adult Swim's animated science fiction sitcom <laughs> Rick and Morty, is currently facing felony charges related to a 2020 incident of alleged domestic violence. Don't like it. <clears throat> Royland was charged in Orange County, California on one felony count of domestic battery with corporal injury and one felony count of false imprisonment by menace, fr- violence, fraud, and or deceit. Uh, the charges <clears throat> date to 2020 and an alleged incident that occurred on or around January 19th against an unnamed Jane Doe who was dating Royland at the time. He was previously released on a $50,000 bond uh, that was back in August of 2020 and was arraigned in October of that year. Uh, pleaded not guilty uh, in that year as well and appeared in court uh, just this past, uh, it was just a couple of days ago, uh, for a pretrial hearing. 
and a trial date has not yet been set. He co-created the popular animated offering Rick and Morty alongside Dan Harmon. Uh, he voices both the show's titular characters, uh, Rick Sanchez and his grandson, Morty Smith. Uh, the series' sixth season ended last December, and seventh season is in the works as part of the series' long-running deal with Cartoon Network. Uh, he's also co-created Hulu's Solar Opposites, in which he also voices that series' main character, Corvo. And he's also voiced characters on Adventure Time, Gravity Falls, Fish Hooks, and a bunch of others. Oh, he's deeply entrenched in that world. I wonder yeah. what that's going to mean. You yeah. know, obviously, well, they, they'll probably take a, you know, let the court proceedings play out, and we'll take it from there. Maybe so. Hey, uh, Kanye West recently exchanged vows with Bianca Sensori in a private ceremony, though it's not believed the union is legally binding as they haven't filed a marriage certificate. Uh, Kanye was first pictured with Bianca, but he's got like his own church and all that stuff. He can do whatever yeah, he wants. You are you know? the poopity to my scoop. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <to> my scoopity. <laughs> and you are the scoopity to my poop. Uh, so Kanye was first pictured with Bianca, who has worked as an architectural designer for his company Yeezy for several years at the Waldorf Astoria Beverly Hills earlier this week. And he was wearing a wedding ring. Mm -hmm. uh, sources say that the jewelry mm -hmm. signifies 45-year-old star's commitment to Bianca. Meanwhile, Kim recently admitted that she's worried that people will be scared to date her uh, because Kanye isn't the easiest person to deal with. Uh, she said, and they're, they have kids together, so if you get with Kim, yeah. there's going to be a part of Kanye that's around. If you want to be her lover... Yeah. you got to get with her friends. So uh, that's if you want to be. Yeah, yeah. So uh, she said, there's a part of me that's like, oh, my God, is everyone going to be scared because I don't have the easiest ex? I don't think that's fair for me uh, to ever put someone in a situation or bring a new person in uh, who could be super innocent. And then there's that side of me that's like, why would I ever have to live that way? I wish Kim would have consulted us before she got married. Could have told her all yeah, we, about yeah. this. We, we called it from the beginning. Yeah. I think a lot of people called it. Uh, the 42-year-old beauty also cried over the struggles of co-parenting with rappers uh, with the rapper, but uh, said that she knows that she will uh, find her forever partner. No, one, she won't. One day, yeah. uh, maybe. <laughs> one but day. I, here's the deal: uh, she has these these babies, these children that like she loves more than anything. So we'll just focus on that, right? This love that she she never knew before. Kanye was able to give that to her. Not the love that they shared together, but the love that they created. It's beautiful, man. And, you know? <laughs> so, Wow, Casey's sticking up for Kanye. I know. Yeah. I'm not sticking up for Kanye. You're no. taking the high road. I yeah. am taking the high road. Okay. Yeah, listen, any divorce That's we might learn something. <laughs> out there. You know, no matter how <laughs> amicable or, or ugly as it can get, if you, if you created children through the bond that you had together, at least you have that. And let's focus on the love that you were able to create through that. Amen. Uh, Preach, brother. No, yeah. but, uh, but I kind of agree with him because I had um, cousins who would have to meet at the police station when it was time for the kids to go with right. their mom or their dad. Yeah. And it, I mean, so much so because, I mean, it was awful. Like everything. Were physical, their parents screaming. Yeah. No, but I mean, it just was, it was so terrible. And I said to them, I remember at one point I go, at one point you guys loved each other and created three children. Like, yeah. What, can't that's, you focus on that and nicely exchange the kids? Yeah, Kathy. It, it, besides that, there's also been a whole run of stories in the news about people that about murders that took place between a husband and wife, and wife, and you know the other way. And you see these pictures of them at you know parties. Yeah, and like stay. at one point, how do you disconnect so dramatically from that? Yep. Well, there's it a thin happens. line between love and hate. Yes, absolutely. It's yeah. a long road case. Nick, yeah. you're divorced with a son. You, yeah. you usually have an armed guard when you guys are... <laughs> you guys go to the police. Well, yeah. yeah. Off. I, I had to hire that guy a long time ago. <laughs> um, there's a TV show uh, that's called Divorce, and it has Sarah Jessica Parker and Thomas Hayden Church on it. It's a good show. It's on HBO, and it really talks, Steve, about how... Uh, you can make a few left turns instead of making right turns after getting divorced yeah. and end up really hating your ex. Or uh, you can take the high road like Casey was talking about and try your best to at least look out for the kids and have an amicable relationship. And I'm lucky enough to have that. So I don't have to have the arm, oh, guard, arm guard anymore. Right. But like, listen, I, I can see how it happens, you mm -hmm. know, and, and if you let your ego get in the way and, and pride and whatever the hell else. Uh, money obviously can be a, a big issue, so it happens. People, it's people, so there you go. Long. Yeah, it is a long road, ladies and gentlemen. Hey.
I know. Uh, you need to shut your hole. Yeah, I have a lot of stories. <laughs> Be nice. It's seven o'clock. All right, I have a lot of stories to get to still. It's Friday, no sad bros. <laughs> That's the approach that should take place in divorce. No sad bro. Yes. Yeah. If we haven't and learned no it. no sad bro lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I have some clips to play with this. Gina Davis made headlines in October of 2021 after revealing in her memoir, uh, Dying of Politeness, that Bill Murray allegedly harassed her during the making of their 1990 crime comedy, Quick Change. Uh, Davis wrote that Murray tried to use a massage device on her in a hotel room. Oh, my. And then oh he berated her on set in front of a bunch of uh, strangers. In a new interview with journalist uh, Kara Swisher, Davis opened up in even more detail about Murray's alleged set abuse. So uh, there's a few different stories. The first clip is about that, that, um, that massage, massage thing. I think it's a massage table or something. I don't know. Yeah. All right, here we go. Uh, the first day of shooting, they said, it's, we're ready for you to come to set. And I said, well, costumes asked me to wait here one second. Can I do that or should I come with you? And he said, no, no, no. no. AD said, no, no go ahead, this is wait the, here. This is the second clip. Right, this is so, but, but that's okay. This is this is where it gets into the meat of it. This is when they had their first, um, he comes in like a lunatic, Bill Murray. Yeah, so this is, um, she's supposed to be on set. And, right. And there were people outside. It was in a, a, a public setting. So right. here we go. Seconds later, Bill Murray, in a full clown costume, by the way, slams into the trailer with a rage coming out of his eyeballs and starts screaming at me and swearing at me, get the f out there, what the f are you doing? Move, move. And he got behind me and screamed in my ear, move faster, move it. And we're getting to this intersection where there's hundreds of people watching this and he keeps it up and keeps it up. He says, stand there and, and starts shooting. And, uh, and I was literally like <laughs> shaking. Wow. Uh, and then and you hear in the second clip, it, it left a, an emotional scar on her. Yeah, so this is the, the, the massage thing. Here we go. When you think it, about that, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I, I was going to say, but it, it's still. Uh, or is this her talking about the getting yelled at? Okay, here we go. Just talking about it actually still is. It's, it's very emotional for me because uh, I felt so shamed, you know, mm -hmm. for somebody who wants to do things right, you know, and. I felt so ashamed of that I, I didn't, my, uh, <clears throat> sorry. That's okay. I never told anybody until I wrote the book. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's just a shame that I took on um, blame mm -hmm. for that happening. Oh, man. That's horrible. Oh, that's yeah, Bill Murray, he's had the reputation for a long time. He's, he's, he's a jerk. He's, yeah. he's he, and, and But he can also be a wonderful, super nice, uh, friendly guy. But he has this side of him that comes out and just... Even uh, 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 like um, Richard Dreyfus on What About Bobby said that he would just needle him what? all the time and throw stuff. And, for, and, yeah. and he's like, and especially he had said if he, <clears throat> if he had a couple cocktails, yeah. he would turn mean. It's not, yeah, that's that's it's sad to hear her it's, after all these years, <clears throat> yeah. an accomplished Academy Award winning actress, yeah. um, you know, feel that way. It's terrible, yep. terrible, absolutely. All right, I have uh, some other stories. Let's go to this one. Pamela Anderson still hasn't seen the stolen sex tape that she and Tommy Lee made in 1995. Well, I think we made up for what? you. Know what I'm saying? Really, she didn't see it. In a pre well, I, I don't think she's seen it since. Right. So, in a preview of an upcoming interview with CBS Sunday Morning, uh, she said we were naked all the time and filming each other and being silly but those tapes were not for anybody else to see and I've not seen it to this day. Oh, maybe she's never seen it. Maybe she never watched no, it. Maybe she didn't want to. Uh, she added that having it stolen and released by a disgruntled former employee was very hurtful. And so there's what, a documentary coming out about her too. Do you think uh, would that be the thing that you'd whip out your tapes of you naked, you know, like him getting the, the Hummer in the front seat of the... Is, <laughs> Hey, let's watch that. Wouldn't you just do it yourself? You know, here's the deal. I think I, I, I and, and I could see why, like, I've never watched my wedding video. Now right. we didn't bang or anything like that. Neither have I. I, I. I don't need to watch it. But um, I have a feeling Tommy made that because he's got the hottest woman in the world. Right. And, and who is his wife. Yeah. But nonetheless, and I'll bet you, I'll bet you he showed, showed it, it to, to some friends. people. Yeah. I would have, judging by what we've learned. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I don't think that's out of the realm of feasibility. That's just a guess, but I mean, uh, I don't know. Uh, and they did it just to to, to be fun, to, to, to have to, fun or whatever. But who knows? I have a correlation to that. Okay. I will occasionally post pictures and videos of new Batman figures I get. Wow! Right. Right. So it's the same thing. Similar, yeah. very similar. Uh, ben Savage uh, got engaged. The Boy Meets World alum announced on Instagram Wednesday that he and his girlfriend Tessa Andermeyer are getting married. Well, that's going to be like the royal wedding. Uh, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> she showed off a new diamond ring in a picture that was captioned, the best is yet to come. So he's getting married. Was it like Julia Roberts' ring? Uh, it was a lot like that ring, okay. yes, that some other gal had. All right, and then, uh, now I haven't seen this yet, but Robert Downey Jr. has undergone a serious transformation for his role. It's wild. In The Sympathizer. Uh, e! News reports that the Iron Man star was spotted in a red curly wig with a receding hairline. Yeah. That sounds like Larry Fine from it, it, the Three Stooges. Uh, it, it took a while to to figure that out, Preston. Uh, in images that were taken on January 11th, we're looking at pictures. Yeah, yeah, that's his new Marvel character, the Sympathizer. Oh, is that what it is? So he just he sees everybody's side to the argument. Okay, <laughs> he just understand. I understand. <laughs> I, get I get it. it. Yeah. I sympathize. All right, and then uh, one last thing, and then we'll move on to clips and so forth. Uh, Reese Witherspoon and Ashton Kutcher star in a new Netflix rom-com called Your Place or Mine, and the trailer was released yesterday. Uh, it shows a pair of execs turned friends falling for each other after switching lives for a week. Uh, it's set to stream on February 10th, by the way. I'm a sucker for a good rom-com. Yep. All right, so we got new movies opening today, and <laughs> we're going to go through them. All right, we'll start with this. A Man Called Otto is a comedy drama. It stars Tom Hanks, uh, Mac Badia, and Mariana Trevino. And it's based on the comical and moving New York Times bestseller, A Man Called Otto. It tells the story of Otto Anderson, a grumpy widower whose only joy comes from criticizing and judging his exasperated neighbors. Uh, when a lively young family moves in next door, he meets his match in quick-witted and very pregnant Marisol, leading to an unexpected friendship that will turn his world upside down. Uh, two hours, six minutes long. It's rated PG-13, wide release uh, today. And Rotten Tomatoes gives it a 69%. That's not so, bad. Yeah, it's pretty good. out, though. Yeah, my Has dad it? saw it already. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It says it opens today. In I guess, select cities, it opened earlier. I guess wide release. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Uh, number two is Plane. P-L-A-N-E, not P -L -A -N -E. P-L-A-N-E. Plane. Um, it's an action mystery starring Gerard Butler, Mike Coulter, and Yosin Ahn. Uh, pilot Brody Torrance saves his passengers from a lightning strike by making a risky landing on a war-torn island, only to find that surviving the landing was just the beginning when most of the passengers are taken hostage by dangerous rebels. The only person Torrance can count on for help is Louis Gasper, an accused murderer who is being transported by the FBI. In order to rescue the passengers, Torrance will need Gaspar's help and will learn that there's more to Gaspar than meets the eye. Hour and 47 minutes long. Rated R, wide theater release, and Rotten Tomatoes gives it a 73%. Oh. And then finally, House Party opens. Uh, it's a comedy starring Jacob uh, Lattimore, uh, Tosin Cole, and DC Young Fly. Uh, the plot is aspiring club promoters and best buds Damon and Kevin are barely keeping things together out of money down on their luck and about to lose the roofs over their heads and freshly fired from their low-lift jobs as house cleaners, uh, the pair needs a huge windfall to make their problems go away. In a what-the-hell move, they decide to host a party of the year and at an exclusive mansion, uh, the site of their last cleaning job, which just so happens to be none other than LeBron James. <laughs> no permission, no problem. What could go wrong? It's an hour and 40 minutes long. It's rated R, wide theater release. Rotten Tomatoes gives it a low score of 20%, by the way. Is, oh. uh, is that like a, uh, a reimagining of the Kid and Playhouse parties? I think it's a continuation of the house party because they've done a couple of house party movies. Yeah. I never saw house parties. Is that what it was? They went to someone else's house, like a rich person's house? No, I don't Not, remember. I think it was just a, a, a party that got away. Okay. So it's like, it's like the barbershop movie. Movies, you know that sort of vibe, a little different, a little, a little more outlandish. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, this is um, it's not getting well received. All right, we got clips to play. All right. 
Audiences who have buckled in for a thrill ride that is Servant. Love it. Should get Ooh. ready to hold on as a gripping mystery is going to take another surprising turn in season four. And here producer M. Night Shyamalan explains the importance of hitting the correct note in his work. What you're left with at the end of the movie should tell you what you saw. And by that, I mean, you know, when I'm mixing genres and I'm, I'm creating a different tone or any storyteller is, when you stick the landing, you're, you're giving them the keys to say, this is what, how to interpret everything that you, that you watched. Yeah! I bailed on the third season. Oh, you did? Yep. I got to, I have to get back in because it just, it kept leaving these open things and I was like, yeah. I need some resolution. I need something so, to keep me coming back. I will tell you this, they like, uh, and the... In the last season, they, uh, they've they developed a lot more. There's a lot more, what in the F is going on here as far as stuff that transcends basic our basic understanding of the world yeah and so that's very cool and the, right. the like the cliffhanger that how they they leave it i yeah. was like oh this is great I, I have questions for you guys and i'll ask them all because right, right. i'm i'm curious because i do want to it, it is creepy cool yeah it's pretty wild uh servant is and, it, and it's shot in philly i mean it's oh, awesome God, it's seeing great. the scenes out on the streets of philadelphia yeah uh servant is available today on apple tv plus here's the next clip for you Hunters Season 2 will see the team on an international mission to find and kill Adolf Hitler. In this clip, star Greg Austin discusses comparisons between him and his character. Here we go. I like to think I'm an empathetic person, and so I like to think I can try and envision anyone's circumstance to understand it in a way that they become the hero of their own story, their own protagonist. And he is entirely feels that's what he is. He is the main character in his mind. Shut up, dummy. <laughs> Al Pacino was in this? Yeah. Oh, huh. okay. We're He's looking playing at, Hitler. Uh, Nick is playing a uh, role in the, the trailer for it. I did not know that. Uh, Hunter's season... Wait, my Nazi children play with their toys. <laughs> Hunter season two is available now on Prime Video. So there you go. All right, that's it. Entertainment report for Done. you, my friend. Let's take a break and come back and prepare ourselves for what is a Friday morning... Uh, we're starting to get a little bit of daylight. We'll, uh, we'll we'll share this day together. Stay put. We'll be right back. Preston and Steve on 93.3 WMMR. What's new? Why have you asked? Link 182. Bring on uh, our next guest uh, Twitter account, and he's got a, a tweet from Ryan Reynolds. Yes. Uh, it says, uh, excited to see the Snyder Cut, but ahead of its debut... And with the aid of a good amount of aviation gin, tonight at 6 p.m., I'll do something I've never done. Actually watch the Green Lantern. <laughs> Happy St. Patrick's Day. That was sent to Zack Snyder. Ladies and gentlemen, we're very fortunate to have this gentleman on. Uh, he was gracious enough to give us this wonderful interview at the Camp Out for Hunger. It uh, was fantastic. So cool. And we're stoked on the day. That this big event that we've long awaited, that he is joining us this morning, is very, very cool. I mean, the stuff that so many people thought would never happen, and here it is. Please welcome Zach Snyder Yay! to the show this morning. Yay! Zach. Hey, guys. Hey, how you doing, man? Doing great. Doing really great this morning. Uh, it is an exciting day uh, for a lot of people, <laughs> including, most of all, you. And the first question I want to get into, Zach, is just to remind everybody... How did this come to be? Where did this idea start that th this movie needed to, to to go back and be redone and, and added all this extra footage? I think it was it was fan based, was it not? One hundred percent fan based. Um, I don't know. It's a it's a long saga of what what happened um, during the film. Um, you know, people might not know that I I the original Justice League that was released in theaters that um, I've never seen the movie. I left the project um, due to a family tragedy that we had. And uh, so I never, I never completed the film. They, and they brought in another guy to finish it. Um, but, um, and they made a couple of changes uh, in my absence. Um, and so, um, you know, I guess the, there was a hashtag that circulated called release the Snyder cut. Um, and that hashtag started on November 17th, 2017, which is the day the movie was originally released. Wow. <laughs> there was a guy who walked out of the theater and just went like, nope, and, and just <laughs> and, and tweeted that. And since, you know, it's been tweeted millions of times, um, and uh, 
you know, the, the studio finally was like, okay, well, I guess we have to do this. It's, and um, it's miraculous. Yeah. It, it, is, it is a miraculous thing when you stop and think about it. So the actual release itself, Zach, the actual movie that it's in existence the way you originally envisioned it, but now the story of it has become Hollywood legend as well, how this actually was executed. So something that I'm sure ha would have to frustrate any artist and any guy, and I consider you a visionary person. I, we all love your work. I mean, we're massive fans. And and to think, okay, I guess I have to cast that one into the dustbin of, you know, that's it. And then to be able to go back, and then you're getting things like IGN saying Zack Snyder's Justice League is a vindication for the director and the fans that believed in his vision. That's got to be awesome on this day to hear stuff like that. Yeah, it's really it's really cool. Um, and just the fans have been so amazing. You know, our big cause um, is suicide prevention and right. mental health awareness. And, you know, the fans have raised now like you know, $600,000 just, you know, in the little fan community um, because every time they did an activation, like if they bought a billboard, half the money would go to AFSP and the other half the money would be like a billboard or like whatever they, whatever they do, they half of the money goes to, you know, AFSP and, you know, for suicide prevention and mental health awareness. And it's just an incredible... You know, I, I've said a hundred times, like, well, if there was no movie, what the fans have done is incredible, I, you know, especially during this pandemic where, like, you know, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of people suffering, you know, through 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 some hard times. You know, on top of the, you know, this virus, there's also just the impact on all of us as people. And I think that they've, they've really been just amazing and, and, and you know, tip and spear in that way, and I really, I, I'm just proud of the community. Well, you participated in our camp out for hunger, and just to put into, um, you know, perspective what happened, that ended up, when we thought we were fighting, you know, the Battle of Sisyphus there, pushing the boulder up the, the hill, uh, it ended up being by far, by leaps and bounds, our most productive camp out ever, you know, and again, thanks in part to, to you and the other people who, who did it. So uh, the, the generosity is not gone, and for anyone who's going to enjoy uh, you know, and has been excited for this event that we're going to we'll put the link up. I'm sure Nick probably already has mm -hmm. to direct money for people want to make donations to uh, this this charity, which has touched your life and, and is sadly touching so many lives right now. Uh, and then, t you know, turn a, a, a negative into a positive. But uh, I have to ask you. So there is so much that, that initially I was unaware after having seen the movie in the theater and having loved the way you had progressed this story. Uh, you know, with uh, the with Man of Steel and Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. It was to me, it seemed very Wagnerian and very operatic, and I love it. I love that whole thing. And uh, while Justice League definitely has its moments, it, it, the tone was different. Uh, and uh, and so now that I realize there were huge chunks that were excised. Preston and I loved the character of Cyborg, mm -hmm. and just you oh. could just feel he had been shorted so much screen time. That has been corrected, correct? Cyborg is really the it's his movie in a lot of ways. I, I think when you see it, you're going to be very much, um, you know, you're basically seeing Cyborg's story in a lot of ways. It's his origin, you know, and that was always when Chris and I, Chris Terrio and I, were working on the story. Our, our intent was always to have Cyborg. It, it was his time. You know, we thought this movie was going to be all about Cyborg. And and, and, and and frankly, Justice League really takes that character, you know, all the way. And I love I it. I can't wait for you to see it. But um, I was suggesting that you guys leave the, the studio right now. Oh, yeah. Zach was actually giving us a pass. <laughs> all right, and great. Suggested, and, and I suggested we ran the show from, like, the time of Live Aid, and That's it would probably... Cool. Uh, right. Yeah, it wouldn't work out. But, yeah, yeah. That we So we're going to tell our bosses you've given us the pass right now, actually, on, on social media, and, and there are people responding who are just, who are just loving it. Um, you know, and you've always dealt with people who have just summarily just don't buy into what you're doing. Uh, I've, from the get-go, has had legions bought into it. And, and you, you're, you like long movies. We talked about this last time at the Camp Out for Hunger. And, and if you're telling yeah. a story, how, you, like, it's like, I was looking at the runtime initially when Justice, the first iteration of Justice League was released. Like, how are you, <laughs> what is this, what was this filmed in a, in a photo booth? I mean, how does this, how are you getting this, this, these huge stories yeah, compacted? 
the movie, I think the runtime of the movie is it's two hours with credit. So it's, I think an hour and, <laughs> you know, 40, you know, or 50 minutes. Yeah. Total. I mean, I think that's, that's, you know, not even half of the movie that I, that I've just finished. So I, I, yeah, if you're ready for a deep dive into, um, <laughs> into, <laughs> into, 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 into some Justice League characters. If you're ready to really go all the way, please, please that this is what it's all about. Uh, Zach, you know, uh, mentioning a long film, and for those who maybe have a hard time uh, consuming something that's four hours long, I did read this uh, this morning that it is kind of broken up into 30-minute chapters. Is that the case? Yeah, you know, when I originally finished this cut of the movie, I finished in um, January of uh, 2017. Um, so I've been working on it even 2016. So it's a, and I had this idea then that uh, I should divide the movie into chapters. And so it's really easy to, I think it's, look, for, as a stream, when you're streaming it, and, you know, this is a great HBO Max thing that's happening um, in that when you sit on your sofa, if you sort of think about it psychologically, like you're about to binge, uh, basically seven half hour episodes of a giant, you know, some are 40 minutes and whatever, but I think you really, in that sense, it's really easy to watch and you can always pause it at the chapters and go get your chips or go to the bathroom <laughs> or you can come back the next day. But it's really, it, it, I think in that way, it, it's, um, it's the right sort of platform for it. We did finish an IMAX version of the movie as well, which hopefully when the theaters um, kind of uh, open up more, we can um, we can put up an IMAX for you guys because uh, we want to do that for charity, you know, in the fall. Oh, we'll we'll be but there. We'll promote time. it. Yeah, we'll absolutely do that. And just to let people know, and it's my understanding that the um, they might be thrown off as you watch it, as everyone will watch it today, and then donate to to Zach's charity as well. Uh, that the 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 aspect ratio that you'll see at home is a little bit different, correct? Yeah, it's like the opposite of letterbox. So everyone took a while to get rid of to get used to letterbox format, which is. Uh, you know, when you have black bars on the top and bottom, the kind of widescreen look. This is the opposite. It has, it's in Academy or it's in full app. So it is uh, shot in the sort of IMAX format, which is like a big square. So so you'll okay. have you'll have some bars on the sides of the screen. So don't worry about that. That's part of it. I was seeing side by side comparisons, and I listen. I I love from you know to, to you see more you see more stuff going on. You need to see the bad signal. Yeah. I was just here with my yeah. Batman here with me. Uh, uh, but I mean the fact that all of that is going on, and just the the, the color changes that you've done. Uh, Steppenwolf got a badass makeover. Uh, and I mean, uh, with what you did, and, and HBO Max gave you yeah. some money, but what you've been able to do, and I haven't, I've just seen still, so I'm very excited, uh, but oh, everything yeah. looks fantastic. Uh, cheers. Yeah, you're going to get to see Darkseid. I, I don't know if you know anything about I do. DC, Darkseid is, he's the King Daddy, bad guy of the, the DC universe, and he's, uh, he's not, he's not messing around. He's not, he's come, <laughs> he's, he's not. He's not. He doesn't play nice. You know. He's just here to to yeah. mess everything up. Yeah, and mess every single thing up. All right. Let's hope to just. Let's hope to just gets it together. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't give it away. So so with that, I'm was saying it, I hope. I hope. Okay. <laughs> where, where, are there are there know. other actors who were initially on the cutting room floor that are now getting you know uh, their treatment uh, in this film? Listen, I don't know 100% uh, because, I, as I said, I haven't seen the theatrical cut. I'd okay. like to do that analysis. But um, I do know that Ryan Choi, uh, the character of Ryan Choi, who's the at, who plays, who would eventually become the Adam, um, his character was cut. And Kirsten Clemens, who plays Iris, um, she was cut. Um, uh, uh, so anyway. She's and, in a uh, sequence. Mom, She's in a sequence. Uh, with, uh, I think. The Flash is, uh, gets a lot more... Um, uh, time on the screen, Ezra Miller. We we know there's a new Flash movie that is in the works. We get to see a bit of what the Speed Force, uh, you know, oh, yeah. concept looks like, which is very cool. Sure. Uh, uh, Cyborg's dad, uh, 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 Silas Joe Morton. We see a little bit more of him. And, oh, yeah. and what, what I love Joe, is that Joe, Steppenwolf Joe has a really amazing arc. Yeah, sorry. No, no, no problem. Steppenwolf, um, like in in that version. Uh, 
didn't you know, it was like what, what why are you so pissed off what is this about with dark side in the mix you you i guess from what i understand and what i've read is that you, uh Steppenwolf comes off more as a um uh, he's just trying to please his boss and he's he's he, he's he, is he, that correct a family issue yeah he has a lot of like he has a lot of i mean kieran hines who voices him is amazing and uh, i think you know brings this amazing gravitas and and, and i would say Frankly, he brings a lot of um, sympathy to the character. I mean, I know it's hard to believe that you might, you know, feel sympathetic toward this big spiky monster from space <laughs> who's, really, who's into world domination and has a giant axe and it's just basically chopping everybody in half. But he is you know, cracking up. Bob Boom. Bob Boom. Proud of yourself? <laughs> I am. It was well, a, good, it was a banana I'm, I'm fart. You were so, eating a banana. You are in the mood. Yeah. He's, had, he's had technical problems. Yeah. And but I was in a mood before that. Were you? Yeah, I don't know. Oh. Okay. Yeah, you get a little gassy? No, 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 no. I'm like, um, just, I don't know. Like, I, uh, I picked up on it. I didn't want to say sad anything. But today. We've, yeah. had, we've also sad. had tech yeah. issues all week. Like, every yeah. morning that we've come in, there's something has gone wrong. And I don't know if it's like Mercury retrograde or whatever, but it's been challenging. I'll tell you what, I'm not challenging. Gonna, Nick, I'm not going to stand for the creator of No Sad Bro being sad. Yeah, all right. I know. Yeah. All right. That's not going to happen. Hey, not um, on my watch. What's your favorite cake? We'll get you one. <laughs> Carrot cake. All right. Okay. That's your favorite? Favorite? Yeah. yeah, that's what I get for my birthday every year. Oh my gosh! Would, wow. would, you, would you pep up some if we got you a carrot cake? Here's the deal: like, I need one. my <sighs> carrot cake to either be like from a bakery, it needs to be homemade, or homemade. <laughs> yeah, right. And like nothing against like uh, supermarkets or anything like that, but yeah, like, uh, and I yeah. uh, don't get me wrong, I like supermarket carrot cakes. It just doesn't hold a candle to the love. And you're you're, but you're, what you're if, down. What yeah. if what if the supermarket has a bakery? Uh, department. It's just not the same. Okay. It's yeah. It's just not the it's same. It's not the same. Yeah. I'm sad too. Could somebody bring me tequila? <laughs> <laughs> it's dry January. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's not. Nice. You of that. <laughs> I mean, wait. So I, know, I saw your text. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And also, I was at my my girlfriend and I were doing it together, and I had to. Stop. And you were shopping at Target while you were drinking. No, well, no. I had to. I had to stop over her house, and we were sitting. And she's the one that has like the yeah. Kim Kardashian White House. So we're sitting in her little white living room with like her fluffy pillows, yeah. and she pours us a glass of wine, and we both sitting there with a glass of wine and her husband walks in from working out and he goes i thought you guys were doing try january <laughs> we were like yeah no that stopped it ended well you know what i have something for you in the connoisseur oh, i think you will appreciate it's time for the completely alcoholic connoisseur yeah not quite but it does talk about uh, this first story about dry january yes. A lot of people and attempting it, at least. It asks the question, but what if complete abstinence isn't your goal? If you'd like to cut back without going entirely dry, you might be better situated for what is becoming known as damp January. <laughs> All right. Moist January. Uh, Rather than foregoing alcohol completely, the premise of this temporary practice is to drink mindfully and in moderation throughout the month. So you're you're completely out of control for the remaining 11 months. Yep. But in January, you, you just have a little moderation. You reel it back. Right. Bit. Okay, so do you guys remember Allie Gorman over at yes. ABC? Yeah. Medical yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. Yes, medical reporter. Right, okay, so she she is no longer there. She, I um, kind of, I, I believe when she's... Happen. I think she stays home with her son, and she adopted her son, and I think she stays home with him and does her. kind of like PR stuff on the side. But she yeah. just emailed me uh, this this week about an app that she's pushing. It's called Reframe, and it basically, it's uh, an alcohol reduction app for damp January oh, okay. is okay. what it is. Reframe is Reframe what it's called? Reframe is the app, yeah. Okay. They were uh, trying to spell refrain, but they were drunk. <laughs> so with damp January, the idea is that one can still reduce their intake of alcohol while uh, reflecting on and having conversations about their relationship with it. One reason the trending resolution may be gaining traction in... I love you, Knob Creek. This year is that <laughs> Americans' drinking habits have, broadly speaking, been in flux. According to a survey conducted by Morning Consult, uh, participation in dry January dropped... Uh, from 19% in 2022 to 15% in 2023. However, they argue that the reason for the decline is that consumers, and millennials in particular, are drinking less overall. If you're interested in trying out damp January for yourself, a couple of approaches you could take. One option is to reduce the number of alcoholic beverages you consume each week. Play around with making mocktails instead. Mock? 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. And it's also the ideal time to experiment yeah. with low ABV wines, spirits, and beers as well. So you can go with lower alcohol level. Interesting. Uh, 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 booze situations. Um, so I'm not claiming to do dry January anymore, but I will <laughs> say I probably am doing damp January. Like, All right. I, I'm making yeah. sure I'm not having anything during the week, but like when Friday comes, I want a glass of wine. So uh, I th- I, there are a lot of people I know who will occasionally... Um, they, um, they'll do that. They'll reduce or they'll do a couple of, just a couple of weeks, like two weeks. Yeah. Just to, just think, and I heard one person call it get, just getting a handle on things. Yeah. I've, getting I mean, a handle on And it. just feeling like a little bit better, a little right. healthier yeah. after the holiday season. But Steve, I will say I'm holding strong with no shopping. All right. Okay. How's that yeah. going? It's good. I'm, I'm, I'm doing it's it. just buying liquor. The, uh, the not drinking during the week <laughs> thing <laughs> goes a long way. Like, it, it, I, and I don't... <laughs> I like drinking during the week, but I feel the effects the next day for sure. Right, and so, right. like, if I can yeah. cut it out, and especially with our job and the you know the hours that we get in here, eliminating drinking during the week goes a long way. What? <laughs> you said I feel it the next day. <laughs> the next day? Yeah. The next day. The Don't worry day. about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, then that leads me to my question. I wanted to ask uh, you guys, not you, Steve, because you don't drink, but. When was the last time you guys were hung over? Not uh, not oh, feeling the effects the next Saturday. day, like but like hurting, hurting, hurting. Oh, at, at the thirty first, exactly. I went out on the thirtieth of okay. December and uh, we partied, and we didn't have to drive anywhere. We had a hotel room, and uh, the thirty first of December, I was hurting. There was there was a day in January that it happened. Uh, not January, I mean December. Uh, and then earlier this summer, I made a mistake. I told you guys I tried to keep up with <laughs> my friend Steve. Uh, that was a mistake. <laughs> so that was two times. But it had been a long time since okay. I'd had a full-on, I'm staying in bed, the day has been wrecked, hangover type of thing. So, uh, Those are horrible. Let you? me ask you uh, just a quick question then on that, on that case. Uh, if you if you have been away from it from for a long time, do you get drunker more profoundly? A, it, yeah, I, I definitely feel it more quickly, more acutely. And yeah. then on the other side, I assume it takes that much longer to come out of it. Yes. Yes. Don't know. As, as you well, as you for me, as I age, right. yeah, absolutely. Okay. Like I'm the hangover doesn't last one day anymore. It's like two full days. <laughs> I mean, wait until you get into your thirties, Kathy. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm so scared. Totally yeah. changes. Uh, no, Kathy. Uh, when was your last yeah. uh, bad one? Um. So I don't normally drink like that any, right. anymore because strictly because I the hangover ruins your day. I've got responsibilities, a kid that you know we have things to do. Um, activities. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. However, I'm having an awesome time. However, Casey, the last one I... Laurel and Hardy, I just got it. No, I know exactly what it was because it was a bad one. I, like, I, we don't even know what happened. We said, really? We said that oh, like, yeah. it was like our own hangover movie. And don't mention because I, know, I don't want to connect it. But um, yeah, we went to a winery and when we got back, I remember. We yeah. Oh, like, yeah. What we woke up the next day and we were like, what happened? Yeah. Yeah. You and? Wait, no, no. Yes, Dennis, there was five of wait us. Wait a minute. No, I was going to say you us. and Dennis, but Dennis doesn't drink. It was when they told you not to drink too much of that one. Wine. Wine. And yeah. we were like, which yeah. one? <laughs> <laughs> How did I get in the kibbutz? <laughs> So anyway, damp January, it's an option for those who are interested. All right, what else we have here for you? All right, this has been all over the news, uh, but egg prices are way up. You guys, I'm sure, have seen the the yep. stories by now about this. It's making the people that um, have been raising chickens that we've been talking about, uh, they're, they're on Easy Street now. Yeah, well, they've had the problem, though, because there's been these avian flus. Yes. Uh, and that's been a part of it, and inflation and a few other contributing things. And then and you have supply and demand yeah. and all that stuff and all these things. <laughs> this kind of things with the chickens and the eggs and, uh, so, and the bacon. But it's like... <laughs> the waffles and the, and the, big, the pancakes. It's like this vicious cycle that happens. Uh, so, yeah, egg prices climbed the most in Arizona in December, Nevada, and New Mexico, according to retail data. That's why, because they have all those egg mines there. A carton of 12 eggs increased over 64% in all the aforementioned states. That compares to the 18% increase in s- seen in states such as Oregon, California, and Washington. Let me ask in you. November, grocery store prices in- increased 12% compared to a year ago. As a, as a, uh, a chef of sorts, or uh-huh. at least you, you cook. I like to cook. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, do things like egg beaters? Fill the. I've n- never, no, never, I've never okay. considered. Right. I, you know what? And I, I don't know what the price difference would be on those because are, are there not eggs and egg beaters? I, I don't were. know. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we we cook a, we use a fair amount of eggs in, in All right, yeah. at home. Um, so my wife uh, found a store that uh, she thought that the eggs were 
Exceptional? Except no, no, no. The prices were were oh. better than anywhere else. So much so that she had to like text all of her friends. Okay, hey, you know, go, and I'm not gonna say it out loud right. because I don't want everybody to go there and get all my eggs. Is it Aldi? But, what's that? Is it Aldi? No, but close. Okay. Um, but uh, <laughs> my question for you is this: What about the farm fresh eggs? For you know, uh, what about where them? they haven't? Well. Are, are, are they Where can gouging? You find them? Are they gouging as well? Like, like these... what? Like going to the actual farm? Oh, because and buying you're getting them the, the farm? like organic yeah. and, and farm fresh. Um, the ones that know. haven't have been affected by any avian chicken flus, like a roadside stand. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, there are all over the place in South Jersey. You know, uh, beach towns, Cape May. They have them. Yeah, we had a lady who uh, who used to work here. Uh, the chicken lady. No, no, no. She was our receptionist, but that she had a whole bunch of chickens, and I know a bunch of uh, fellow coworkers would. Buy eggs from yeah. Her. We had we had neighbors yeah. that, that had had chickens and, and we would get they would give us eggs. Yeah, they were like, we need to get rid of these because yeah. uh, they're laying them like crazy. We got so. chickens next door right now, and then I got another egg lady. I got two egg ladies. Uh, oh, right in your neighborhood. Uh, one one in the neighborhood and one as a friend. And uh, sadly uh, for me, she's pregnant right now, so I'm not getting nearly as many eggs. Mm. Oh, I know. It's a bummer. Yeah. Human eggs. But uh, yeah. but I don't know, Case. I'm not sure if those prices are affected at the uh, at the mom and pop uh, thing or not. But, yeah, so that's... Sometimes they charge a premium because it is organic or it's farm fresh or whatever. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. it's possible. So uh, uh, egg beaters are mostly just egg whites with a little bit of uh, additional um, filler. Sure, okay. sure, what I know. I thought they were, like, uh, you a know... A replacement. Like, like, I can't believe it's not butter. Right. I can't believe these aren't eggs. Yeah, I can't yeah. believe these are actually eggs. Yeah. Uh, more than, by the way, so yeah, the uh, uh, the avian flu, the bird flu, uh, impacted 58 million birds over the past year. More than 43 million of those birds, all of which were killed to control the virus, uh, were egg-laying chickens. Casey, you have a special name of a chicken that passed you wanted me to read for you? Uh, this is uh, Jen Johnson. Jen Johnson. <laughs> Ramona Quimby. <laughs> the Stepford Wives. Who is Jen Johnson? <laughs> so my friend Jen, and I love this idea, but she texts me. She she listens to the show religiously. We went to college you made together. Made request last week, Preston. You she, might have forgotten. She no, said, no, I remember. I just forgot why. You should have a contest where uh, one of the chickens in the five million dead chicken roll call okay. is named after one of our listeners, first okay. and last names. And okay. I was like, well, then Jen Johnson has to be Jen Johnson. the first recipient. Okay. Casey, of all my chickens <laughs> that we lost, Jen Johnson was my favorite. All right. Should we have people uh, submit a list and yeah. put their name on the Send list? Your names and I will. <laughs> Steve will get the to chickens them. That you've lost. I'm sorry, Gene will get to them. All right, chicken at wmr.com. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, we gotta set it up. All right, oh. All right uh, more from the connoisseur. Uh, we're going. We're leaving the chickens. Aww. You never really leave the chickens. <laughs> we're leaving the eggs. The chickens leave you. <laughs> so uh, let's see. What's today? Thirteenth. So Sunday is National. Bagel Day. I'm a bagel man. January 14th. Me too. I don't eat them a lot, but I love them when I do. Your bagel of choice, Preston, what would it be? I have two. Okay. okay. So the ones that, that are my go-to, uh, everything bagel, oh, number yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, number two, if I see an Asiago bagel, oh. I will snag that. And then number three, a sesame bagel. So oh. you, you hit two of mine. Uh, well, actually, uh, uh, sesame and everything. Yep. Uh, the, uh, those uh, sesame for sandwiches, even everything for sandwiches. But Panera has a really good uh, Asiago. Uh, ah, bagel, yeah, you do that. always like that one. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, my family's coming in from Long Island on Saturday, and they bring bagels every time they come. So I'm not it's the same a, with us. It's not a bagel eater. I wouldn't order a bagel, but when it comes from New, when it comes from my family, when they bring it down from New York, I have to have one. It comes uh, from Broadway Deli on uh, in Hicksville. Ooh, hey guys, don't sleep on the jalapeno bagels, by the way. Ooh, and yeah. uh, <laughs> Kathy, the same place where my wife got those eggs yeah bagels are cheaper as well <laughs> i will you tell you this you remember she's... we had that service that goes up to uh yeah. they're, they're, they're doing great they yeah. go yeah go up to yeah. new york they bring them down the, the difference is and i think in, in taste i when they do kettle bagels you know when they they prepare them in, in the in the kettle and then they yeah. bake them that's when they're a home run kathy my wife will go hey how much do you think i pay for these and i'm like <laughs> i'm like i never look at prices so i don't even know where to guess i'm like Five hundred, <laughs> five, uh, uh, two fifty. I'm like, I have no idea where even to start guessing. By the way, bagels for me fall under that um, that that old pizza, uh, you yeah. know, pizza and BJ's. Uh, 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 Good or bad, it's always good. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Still okay. <laughs> uh, bagels are the same way. Yeah. When you have a superior, yeah. you certainly oh, oh, know. Oh, yeah, it. most definitely. But even a mediocre bagel is can get the job done. So we have a couple of bagel places near us that do that do a pretty damn good job. You know, and they also give you Hummers. Which is yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think. You just put like, the bagel you get, over your junk. Yeah. You get a blogie, right? Yeah. 
Uh, what happens when you get one while you're eating pizza? What's that called? Banal. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. We have to figure it out. Okay. Uh, bagels. What are you going to have to do? Figure it out. Shut up. <laughs> bagels have a uh, long and highly yeah, documented yeah. history. Having sex with peaches. <laughs> yeah, well, completely distracted now. <laughs> Uh, long documented history that travels uh, from the Jewish families of Poland in the 1600s uh, to wrapped up in parchment paper in your hands today. And unlike many things created nearly 500 years ago, bagels are remarkably unchanged. Uh, bagels actually made the jump to America with a massive Polish Jewish immigration in the 1800s that firmly entrenched itself in New York City, where it thrived. In fact, an entire union was created in the early 1900s. It was called the Bagel Bakers Local 338 uh -huh. uh, to support the growing immigrant-led industry. And that also begat the Bagel Brunch that we still enjoy this, to this day uh, with little to no changes. And the, the uh, classic is lox, cream cheese, capers, tomatoes, and red onions. Right. Uh, Bagels well, are overrated, by the way. It's not that I don't like them, but, like, come on. <laughs> it's not even, like, a top three breakfast bread. Oh, oh, you get out me, of me. What? Well, what are your top three breakfast breads? You mean for you? For everybody in the entire oh, history of oh, mankind. Wait, the top, I what are your, to hear what the are your top, top three, three breakfast breads? Breakfast breads. <laughs> Rye bread. Rye toast. That's number one. Uh, the English muffin, I would put there number two. Get out of here. No. Yeah, yeah. The only problem with English muffins is just they're just not big enough, right? If they made them a little bit like, like this. Like manhole covers? Like a bagel? Well, maybe like a bagel the size, size of a bagel. Maybe <laughs> okay. the size of a bagel. Uh, and then I would just, I would put like regular white toast in there, man. Your list uh, sucks. All right, so boring. here's a question. Here's a question. Uh-huh. Uh, and the reason that I uh, am liar going to whore. go counter, <laughs> you liar whore, liar whore, you know it. Yeah, okay. Liar whore, liar whore, and you know it. The reason I'm going to counter that is because you could sit down and uh, and I would be, if, if you, you could just have a bagel and that's your breakfast. Yes, huh? yes. You, it, just having a piece of white toast. Oh, really? Yeah. You could just have a bagel? Absolutely. Yeah, with, without, without dressing it up with anything? Oh, no, no, yeah. no, no, no. You can put stuff on it. You can put butter. Or right, why do you do that? Because the bagel cheese. doesn't stand alone. Oh, so you're going to have a piece of just white uh, toast you're all goddamn by goddamn right. And you know why? Because I just needed to prove my point. I know. Because <laughs> this is my hill and I'm going to die. Yeah, I'm going to die on it. Yes. Give me a, an English muffin with nothing on it, uncooked. Yeah. So the uh, <laughs> the classic one, Preston, where the, the lox and the cream cheese, uh, I like all of that except for, I'm not a big capers guy. Oh, I love capers. Do you really? Yeah. Okay. To me, it's like it's a, I don't know, it, it, whatever, it turns me off a little bit. But Especially when they rob a jewelry store. Yeah. <laughs> <Don't>, <laughs> my favorite kind of caper. Uh... <laughs> Okay. When we were in Chicago, yeah. I'm sorry to no, interrupt. No, no. When we were in Chicago for the uh, uh, National Hall, uh, Radio Hall of Fame yeah. awards Which ceremony. Which seems almost unbelievable at this point in the I show. Know, right? I know. We're yeah. talking about capers. <laughs> Across the street at the hotel, we had breakfast. They had capers. I've never seen them like this. They were like the size. They were like. Nipples? They were huge. They were like big, like <laughs> Norma big. Stitz nipples. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, That's our Norma Stitz collection. But I never, I never knew they got large. I know capers yeah. is tiny. Well, you have to tickle them. Itty bitty, <laughs> dude. Put them in your mouth a little bit. Maybe rub a little ice on it. A little flick. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There. Yes. I tell you what, I never was a caper dude, and, and I, I love them with smoked salmon. Yeah. They yeah, go right. with that. Uh, Steve, um, so that's my, nowadays, that's my breakfast of choice. Uh, um, smoked salmon, you know, lox yeah. or whatever, and, and a toasted bagel. That's your breakfast of choice. I love it. And When it, you have that entire menu of, like, pancakes and waffles. Why don't you get off my ass? <laughs> it's my, yes, it's my breakfast You're of choice. You're over there eating uncooked English muffins. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I am not. You, you make, the Amish are going, can't you spice it up? It makes Casey's breakfast bread yeah. list yeah. sound good. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, oh, there's, okay. Yeah. But no, Steve, no, it's your thing. You, yeah, you, it's yeah. my thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh... But Steve, I know you're, you know, a big salmon guy. Are you a salmon guy in the morning a lot of the time, or because you don't? I don't oh, think you're gonna fall to it. No, no. So I never knew that I. So the 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 landing, the uh, Nick. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, they have. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sure I've said it a couple of million times. I buy it all the time. I love it. It is the salmon toast is sensational. So, but is that I a never... breakfast go to for you? Yes. Oh okay. well, I I I, I can't say that oh. I I I get it. Oh, my main. If I'm gonna have a breakfast. Probably oatmeal. All right, or or the parfait. Because I'm toasted bagel, lox, yeah. a little bit of cream cheese, tomato, and then uh, if I have it, onion. I don't know how I always have onion in the house. <laughs> or you know, if I'm really bored, uh, not bland enough. Yeah, English muffin, nothing. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Speaking of English muffins and there are a number of texts corroborating this, I'm going to go to Mike. Uh, hi, Mike. Hey, Mike. Good morning, guys. Uh, all right, Mike. Hi, Mike. What do you want to share with us, bud? Yeah, so we actually came across them the other day, but uh, Thomas has now makes these giant English muffins that are essentially the size of a bagel. Yeah, uh, somebody was texting in saying they're like the size of a burger bun. Like you could make a yeah. burger on an English way, muffin. By the way, I've used uh, English muffins as burger buns for years. They're really? tremendous. No kidding. Yeah. Have you ever used a bagel as a burger bun? Yeah. No. I have. <laughs> You're going to say that just to prove your No, point. I have. Thanks, yeah. Mike. By the way, I do need to say, it's not that I don't like bagels. I just don't think they're as good as the top three there. You don't think they're as good as, as people make as them out As plain white bread, uncooked English muffins. <laughs> I, I have never Unleavened said that bread. I eat uncooked. By the way, they had a whole damn uh, a union dedicated to bagels. Did they have that for English muffins or toast? If you remember what Mr. Thomas did, yeah. he fled his town, didn't pay any of his bills, and came to the United States. Oh. Yeah, and that's one of those commercials. He woke up the next morning and Mr. Thomas was gone. Mm. All that was left was a note that says he can all suck my ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm done. It's National Bagel Day on Sunday. Whatever. All right. Have a bagel. Whatever. English whatever. Yeah. Uh, let us know when National English Muffin Day is. All right, so let's see here. All right, there's a, uh, a group, a food tech company uh, that is called One Third. And uh, they, uh, it was created to address the annual loss of one third of all food produced due to spoilage. And they announced the release of technology that will allow growers, food distributors, grocers, and grocery store shoppers to predict the shelf life of fresh produce and minimize food waste. One third's technology currently supports and predicts the shelf life of tomatoes, strawberries, blueberries, and avocados. What's your degree of accuracy? And will extend to a total of 10 types of produce, including grapes, bananas, mangoes, and raspberries by uh, later on this year. So they were at the CES, they were at the Consumer Electronics Show, and they have what's called a ripeness checker. It's designed uh, for use by grocery store shoppers, it allows them to quickly scan an avocado and get accurate information about when it's ready for consumption, so well, which is the great mystery. That is. When you're shopping for avocados, it sucks, man, because let's say you want to make uh, some guacamole tonight. Yeah. And you go to the grocery store and you can't find one single avocado that is properly ripe it's tough and because people take those immediately and then what's left are the slightly unripened ones and then you got to wait like three days before you can have your guacamole i know i get very snooty I, like i if a tomato is a little bit overripe I, I'm, I'm i'm not digging it you know what else i was well, technically but watermelon when watermelon has to be right in the sweet spot yep. no pun intended uh, or else it's just horrible. Uh, up to one third of the food bought in, uh, brought to market annually is wasted at an estimated cost of one trillion dollars, wow. and almost half of it, forty percent, <laughs> by the way, is fresh produce. Uh, <laughs> produce has varying shelf life, can spoil within several days, and is tough to safeguard. At the same time, fresh produce is an invaluable part of a healthy diet and provides necessary nutrients that support longevity. So. Uh, the shelf life of produce is typically only known in hindsight when it's too late to address, and very few <laughs> safeguards are in place to combat w food waste across uh, the food chain. So one-third provides uh, what they say is an inclusive system that combines AI in the form of proprietary algorithms with a near-infrared-based <laughs> scanner, which makes it non-destructive and fast to determine the shelf life of produce. I don't know exactly how it, it works. It means a either. robot comes out and squeezes the fruit. Uh, data is tracked via the cloud-based cloud one-third dashboard that provides <laughs> data and insights. Knowing the shelf life of produce in real time enables stakeholders across the food supply chain to make immediate and dynamic decisions regarding the shipment and sale of produce. So they're also hoping that it will get the properly ripened uh, produce to your store yes, yeah. at the right time. So it will... It could it will be at the uh, at the consumer level, but also at the corporate or the um, uh, industrial level as so, well. Yes, and for that reason, if you if you can determine how you're running you're running down the clock from the time that the produce is picked to the time it ends up in the produce section, yeah. and from there on, when the consumer buys it, how long they have to have it at its freshest uh, state, right? Yeah, yeah, I agree. If I understand what I'm talking about, and I no. don't. By the way, National English Muffin Day is April 23rd. I know. Yeah, so that's a go. Hitler's birthday. So they do it. No, yeah, Hitler's is. birthday is the 20th. <laughs> All right, so another story. We were talking about the, uh, uh, the egg prices here. Yes. In the Philippines, authorities have busted numerous smugglers attempting to bring an everyday staple food into the country. The item has become a hot commodity as domestic prices surge. And at markets in the Philippines... 
onions are more expensive wow. than meat, Whoa. costing over three times more than chicken. Onions uh, cost more than a daily minimum wage in the country. So are, is there like an onion black market? Uh, yes, there is. Huh. So wow. the Philippines now have the world's most expensive domestic onion prices. And Filipinos consume a lot of onions. On average, the nation consumes about 17,000 tons of onions monthly. At their strip clubs, they make it rain onions. Uh, however, <laughs> uh, onion de- recently, onion demand has greatly outpaced supply of the staple vegetables, sending prices soaring. Crop raving super t- tycoons, soaring global inflation, inaccurate crop projections, and local crises such as price manipulation have contributed to the raising onion prices. We had earlier this week a caller uh, who said that she got enraged, so angry <laughs> yeah. over an omelet with onions in it. Yep. And her story was so great, so I didn't jump in, but I feel the same way about onions. I really? Oh. I, if they're on some, especially if they're cooked, I can pull them out and I'm okay with it, but if there is an, a raw onion on something and I have to pull it off, it ruins my day. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> I love them. Hey. I do too. Yeah, uh, Kathy, especially like, on a burger. Like, Kathy, oh, if, they're, if they're sauteed and worked into a recipe or yeah. anything like that? I, I'll pull she them out. She said you can take them out. I yeah, can take okay. those out. Like, that's not going to make me angry but the raw onions make me angry because they're actually once you cook them they're very sweet right uh they, they caramelize they, oh the sugars come out love that they're taste fantastic yeah, yeah. Love it. Love it. well they're yeah. too strong for me when they're raw but when they're cooked i think it again back to the whole Market texture thing I'll bet, yeah. i think it's the texture it's got kind of a it, the cooked onions like that can have this kind of slimy yeah uh the sense to them uh, uh sensation kath have you ever <laughs> ha- tried a blooming onion no that's no? a blooming onion Mm-mm. yeah they're very healthy <laughs> they're like one of the worst you. calorically yeah. things yeah. in, in the fact, water. No, like uh, they were the rings. worst calorically. They were the highest. There was a survey of uh, you, you. It was years ago. Yeah, yeah. that's what Fast they hand, hand out to people when they finish marathons. Take a bite. No, uh, like onion rings and stuff. Case now. Nah, I don't. Like I onion like onion rings. Onion rings. Yeah. What is, isn't a blooming oh. onion just a big? Essentially, onion ring? yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's the same type. Except it's with that Aussie spin, breaded and fried onion. Okay. So onions have become the hot commodity for smugglers. Uh, at the Port of Manila, Border Authority seized about $310,500 worth of smuggled onions hidden in containers labeled as clothing, plastic buckets, dish plates, and cat litter. They pulled over a guy with uh, onions stuffed up his ass. Uh, and another shipment labeled as uh, udon noodles and frozen fish contained about $2.5 million worth of smuggled agricultural products, including onions. So it's a big deal in the Philippines. I don't want to get into the onion thing. They consume <laughs> a lot of them. All right, uh, we have time for one more, I think, and then we got to move along. Let's go. Oh, man, there's so many good things. I mean, we, we, the bagel battle took up a lot of time, but I think we came to some good conclusions, and I think we grew. All right, I always mention Shake Shack and the Connoisseur, but they just keep doing great stuff. Are you they, getting free shakes from Shake Shack? Uh, have you ever <laughs> They're they're bringing two delicious custard shakes to locations nationwide for a limited time, and they have picked two of my favorite flavors. Is it right. yeah. uh, No, but okay. that is everything one of my in favorites. sesame. But these are stu- both really good. Dreamsicle shake oh. and tiramisu shake. Mm-hmm. Hello. What constitutes the dreamsicle? Oh. Uh, orange and cream. That's, oh my God. People love that. I've always hated that. Oh, I love it. Like oh. the orange Julius. Casey, Coors. Uh, Cor- oh my God, Core Brothers. Core Brothers at the Shore. Oh, yeah, 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 Ice cream. Yeah. Their signature one is is an orange and vanilla. Oh, is that their main thing? That's, that's their main thing. It's yeah. super popular. People it's love it. fantastic. Yeah. Do you get Jimmy's, Rainbow Jimmy's on it? I do not. I need it pure. I love it just the way it is. <laughs> Preston, I had a moment with uh, my son, Jace. Uh, remember when I told you when you eat, you make it look like it's so delicious? Yeah. He loves Shake Shack so much. Like, when we go by, he's like, Mom, can we please stop? So, you know, I stopped the other day. I, I got him. He ate that burger like it was the most delicious <laughs> thing he has it. ever eaten in his life. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, Kathy, I was at home. I forgot we were having something for dinner. It was a dish we made. It was good. And I'm, I was doing the whole thing. I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh, mm, mm, mm. oh, mm, mm. oh, this is so good. I can't help it. It's just it's this hand shot. Was it corn? Yeah, <laughs> I know. Mm. There's a uh, mm. a Shake Shack by, in, in King of Prussia by the movie theater, right? Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah, I like yeah. that one, especially before a movie. Yeah. There's one, is there one inside as well? Yes, there's is there? Yeah, yeah, yes. there's one inside. Two. Yeah. Nick, the only reason I know this is because that's the one I went to, and when you order on the app, it says inside the mall or oh, no outside kidding. the mall. Yeah. And do they have one in the Wells Fargo Center now yep. as well? Okay. 
Yeah, and Citizens Bank. No kidding. All right. Uh, yeah, and uh, there's one at Plymouth Meeting. And they're, they're, Good for To them. be honest, they're I've never spot. had a shake from Shake Shack. Oh, oh, they're thick. Yeah, oh, yeah they're good. Are you sad more... today? Maybe we should get yeah. you one. <laughs> 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 and I keep farting. Uh, so... <laughs> well, that should make you happy. So the Dream Sickle Shake features hand-spun <laughs> vanilla and blood orange custard and whipped cream, while the tiramisu shake is made with tiramisu custard, notes of coffee, uh, mascarpone. Is that how you say that? Mas- Mars- mascarpone. Oh, yeah. No. Mascarpone. Mascarpone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a later ladyfinger cookie Ooh. in it as well. Wow. That's pretty damn good. Hey, by the way, Press, if you um, read his water ice, I feel like that hands down, just the pure water ice by itself. The, the Florida orange is the best. Yeah. But if you love that creamsicle flavor, do it. Do a um, oh the uh, gelati, a, the gelati or the misto with that. Okay, oh, so good. All right, uh-huh. I'm on board. Is misto like a blizzard? Oh, yeah. No, well, it mixes uh, it mixes water, ice, and custard. Oh, okay. And then it's, they blend it. Their milkshake essentially. They have a they have a blizzard at uh, Rita's as well, but I forget what they call it. It's something. It's called something else. Oh yeah, yeah. Rizzard. Yeah, yeah. Is it a blendini? <laughs> that might blendini. be it. Yeah. Oh, that's Rizzard. it. Yeah. <laughs> I like Rizzard. 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 <laughs> I like Rizzo. Yeah. <laughs> this is a Rizzo. <laughs> I'll take three. One, two. One, okay. One, one two. Yeah. Three. <laughs> and oh, a just con- me. Wow. <laughs> a Knugget. He's taking three for just him? Yeah, yeah. Wow. One, two, three. Just me. Uh, wow. You going gonna to drink them all in the car? You pig. I like to drink in the car. Yeah. All right. Get away from I me. I don't want to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> get away from me. I don't want an English muffin. <laughs> All right, I need then, you to stop talking. Thank All you, right. Bill. We will. Uh, that's it for the connoisseur, but we thank you for uh, allowing us to have you salivate over these wonderful food dishes that we talk about on a Friday morning. Huh. All right, let's take a break because some bizarre file stories await you, my friend. I got some good ones today. Hang in there. We'll be back in just a moment. President Steve on 93.3 WMMR. Mustache twirling, one dimensional villain does nothing for me. Some, a villain that you can slightly understand the impetus for is far more interesting. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. yeah. 100%. You know. So I wanted to ask and, and double back to uh, to Ray Fisher because I was reading something about him for those who don't know. He, he's the one who plays Cyborg. Actually, he's from um, uh, the area. Yeah, yes. Uh, we spoke to him years ago. Um, he uh, apparently has had a great reaction to uh, the Snyder Cut. He, uh, I, I read this morning that he absolutely loved it. Now, he had his issues with the replacement and its controversies, and we won't get into that here. But how does that feel to you to know that, that he's happy with, uh, with what he's seen? Well, you know, raise a buddy, and, um, you know, I just, uh, when I hired him and when we, went, we, when we started this process, it was really, to me, it was all about, um you know honoring the character as best i could and i just anytime an actor um sees the movie and is moved by it and in, enjoys it you know that's that's you know for me the ultimate um you know the ultimate in vindication and yeah. and, and I, it makes me super happy so i'm glad that ray Got to enjoy it, and, yeah. and uh, I, I, I saw that video of him where he was just going nuts. So, he yeah. watched it in a hotel room too. Apparently, it was oh, the uh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah 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 not the best viewing experience, <laughs> but you can see that if it yeah. plays in a hotel room, it'll play anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> hey Zach, yeah. I, I wanted to ask. Uh, first of all, I wanted to thank you for joining us today because I know today is a huge day, and I'm yep. sure everybody wanted a piece of you. Uh, and so the fact that you woke up early, uh, you know, it's like five o'clock in, in your time right now, that you woke up early, that you're spending some time with us. I, I want to thank you for that. But I also want to ask, why? Why <laughs> why did you get up at five o'clock in the morning to call in to fill it up your radio? I, I would like to think that you like our show, but is it because you have family in the area? Look, look, I'm, a, I'm a friend of the show, and uh, I, I, yeah, I really do. I love you guys. I Whenever I get a chance, if you guys, when 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 I see the text arrive on my phone, we're doing a show. You want to jump on? I'm like, let's go. <laughs> hey, I have a question. Uh, since we're since we're doing this via Zoom and we can see into your domicile there, do you play piano? My kids do. Okay, uh, kids all right. Play. There's a piano the book behind you and a piano. Oh, I was going to have you tickle the ivories there for us a little bit if that yeah, was the I, case. I, by the way, if I could, I would jump on. I, I would be. <laughs> play a little i don't know what but i'd be uh and sing of course Um, speaking of music though uh just to bring up this point you there's a everyone's raving about the the um the new music for the film and explain what happened 
Junkie did this uh, again when I left. Um, Junkie uh, XL, who does the score, uh, um, he he you know they 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 replaced him as well. And then when I came back to um, to finish the movie. Uh, junkie, I called him and I said, we're doing the movie. We're going to finish it. And he was like, what? And I said, do you have any music like left over? And he goes, you know what? I'm going to do it all from scratch. I want to wow. start over. And so he just, you know, it's four hours, pretty much four hours of music. And it's unbelievable. He did. He just destroyed it. And oh, and we're, we are doing a, it's coming out. I don't know exactly when it comes out. We'll have to check out, but a, um, we're doing a vinyl box. So like if you're into vinyl, oh wow, you know, they're going to do they're going to do a full release of the soundtrack on, on vinyl. And that should be, that's pretty cool. As well as, of course, at Apple Music, you can, see, you can, you can check it out. Uh, well, Zach, I'd like to ask a follow-up question about that uh, topic because I loved the soundtrack for Man of Steel as Hans Zimmer did that. Do you have yeah. um, favorite uh, composers that you like working with? And, and how do you end up choosing one? Because there are a lot of great ones out there, and, and uh, Hans is, is legendary. Uh, so why change, you know, in the same cinematic universe and do a different well, composer? Hans Hans and Junkie worked together. That's why I, I met Junkie. Uh, he came, um, you know, from from sort of uh, Hans's camp, and that's how we got. That's how we sort of got together. And then, um, you know, when you know, because the two of them um, did uh, Batman versus Superman together. Okay. And then um, they they and then when we went on to Justice League. Um, I was like, okay, Junkie, you, you want to do it? You want to do the whole thing? And he was like, absolutely. And we worked together. He did, um, you know, he did Fury Road and a, a bunch of other amazing soundtracks. Um, you know, and it's just, uh, I, and he just finished Army of the Dead for me. When is the release the on that? Shot right over there in Atlantic City. When's yeah. the release on, on, on that? We, we hear it was bumped back again. Uh, May twenty first. May twenty first. Okay, uh, just to also be ready. To, to, say, I'll be back on the show in no time. Oh, you bet, <laughs> you bet your ass. You you made a We're critical. A critical mistake in 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 uh, answering our texts because we're going to be on you like white on rice. But the um, and I just want to convey the excitement to people who may not understand. The, for example, and I think I mentioned to you uh, this to you at the campout. Batman v Superman: Dawn of Justice, the original theatrical cut, really enjoyed. Yet there were some things like, like that. To me, we're like, well, there, there didn't seem to be an explanation fully. When I saw the full director's cut with the additional footage in it, it, it was, it was, um, it, it took greatness and made it even better. Because to me, it, uh, you know, all those things are filled in. To know that you've had this ability to go back and add in those little things, and there, I, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil anything. I had to do a little research, so I, I know there are a couple of new characters that make appearances that are going to rock fans worlds so um yeah 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 so uh, are is it is it are you kind of like a guy who has the ultimate gift to give someone on the hot you know on christmas or whatever and now you can get to see them unwrap it and get the reaction yeah i mean that's a cool way to look at it i i i, I hope fans get this take this opportunity to really um and, and i think if you haven't seen justice league you know at all then you really, I think this really represents an amazing opportunity to just kind of go deep into a world and, and um, excited that people are going to get that chance. All right, so um, what other press are you doing today? I know you have a watch party, so maybe you can talk a little bit about that, but uh, where else can t can your fans uh, uh, catch you today? Yeah, there's a watch party. Um, I don't know if it's live, but I'm doing a uh, thing for 300, <laughs> weirdly, um, with uh, um, Stephanopoulos. Uh, uh, um, uh, with the Hellenic League, because uh, you know it was the, um, I think it's the 2000. No, it's got to be more than that. It's 480 BC. So the the anniversary of the Battle of Thermopylae. Yeah, it's the fat. It's one of the anniversaries. Like, uh, <laughs> but it's thousands of years. But, it, <laughs> but that's exciting. So I'm talking to them. Are you going to have anybody oh. from the battle attending? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're Leonidas is coming. Uh, so, so that's kind of weird that I was like, wow, that's a, uh, that's a blast from the past, but you absolutely have to do that. What an honor to have so, some of the original veterans in attendance. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, exactly. We better hurry up and get their stories. So, uh, uh, you know, before it's too late. Uh, go press, but, I'm yeah, sorry, go ahead. And then, uh, yeah, I'm doing a couple of, uh, yeah, watch, well, I don't even, like, you, I'm delirious, so I, I can't remember, I don't know. It's well, early. Well, go around, but, 
But always stopping here. Is yes. Very, you know, important. We appreciate that. It was uh, announced that uh, that you're going to do the Fountainhead. Is that correct? Well, no, I, I own the Fountainhead. I don't really have a uh, we don't really have a, a model for it, um, you know, but uh, I've got it. It's kind of uh, on the I, I would say it's on a slow burn. OK, um, OK. But, uh, you know, we'll see. Uh but uh, yeah, the next thing I'm doing, um, I'm trying to do this small movie that I, I wrote with my friend Kurt Johnson, who actually wrote the script, um, uh, called uh, Horse Latitudes, and uh, we're just gonna. It's a movie that we want to just go shoot in South America, you know, with two guys, and it's like it's it's like a real um, sort of micro budget movie, and then um, that's got to be refreshing. We'll that that that's gonna have to be. Yeah, <laughs> it's like that's like a, go a complete divergence. The actors, you know what I mean? So that could be fun. Cool. What is, so what does this mean, just quickly? Um, you've got this. The reaction so far has been tremendous. Uh, everything s sort of stopped for the Snyderverse. Do you think HBO Max, do you think we are seeing perhaps um, uh, the potential for allowing you to complete your longer game in this? Uh, listen, I mean, I, I don't, you know... That's not necessary. I didn't. I didn't make it with that intention. We did make the movie. Yeah. With the um, when we originally filmed the movie, we assumed there would be two more movies. That's kind of how the movie's made. Um, there's a cliffhanger at the end, and I know it's rude <laughs> that there's a cliffhanger for uh, a movie that may not get a sequel, but it's just the way it was constructed, and I wanted to do it exactly as we had talked about. Uh, so, uh, you know, look, I didn't think I'd be sitting here talking to you guys about this. Yeah. So, you know, you never know. We're the stranger things have happened. So. All right. Yeah. Well, I don't know if we talked about this or not, but uh, Army of the Dead is going to be released on May 21st. Yeah. And <laughs> I don't know if we talked about wh where, can, where where is it going to be released? I, I don't know if we. That's on Netflix. It's Netflix. Netflix. It's, okay. Okay. Netflix has been amazing. You are going to get, um, trust me, you will know. Where Army of the Dead is playing and what it's about. <laughs> Netflix, Netflix does not. We they do not play. Yeah, no, okay. no, they, right. they like to advertise. So, yeah. yeah, you trust me. And the trailer. Um, I saw it. I mean, really soon in April, like right at the beginning of April, like I think middle middleish of April. And the the new trailer is okay. just a, a a it's a butt kicker. I okay. Say a word because no one. You can say a word. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I was an ass kicker. Well, then it is an ass kicker. I do want to thank you again for joining us this morning, and then also I want to thank you because uh, when I was texting with you the other day, uh, you know, my son was next to me, and I go, hey, I just uh, I just got a text from Zack Snyder, and he was like, no way. <laughs> and so I looked really, really cool, and he was like, tell him I said hi, I'm a huge fan, so I did. And then you texted back, and then I promised him I would say this. He said, you have to put an, a character in your next movie whose name is Seamus, because that is his name. <laughs> oh, my God. So, cool. there so you go. <laughs> there we go. There you go. <laughs> it's super Seamus. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, my son's name is Ben, if you want to talk to him. No, no, no. Leave <laughs> Zach alone. Soon he's going to be doing shout-outs. Yeah, so right, right. right. Um, well, listen, Zach, thanks again. Uh, oh, it, it. It's a big day for you and also for uh, AFSP, like you said, uh, you know, uh, people – uh, bring awareness to that and suicide uh, prevention and and uh, and uh, getting uh, uh, therapy and uh, for people who need it. So uh, we appreciate the time. Yes, Casey. Yeah, we do have information about that on our website. Okay. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, it's located. Awesome. We'd Thanks, like to guys. donate. You our pleasure. To Great to talk to you, Zach. Good luck with everything and congratulations. All right. Uh, yeah, you can go check out. Justice League on HBO Max, and I will talk to you guys later. Outstanding. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Exciter, guys. Uh, nice. Wow. Wow. Huge. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, stoked for tonight. Yes. Uh, or as soon as are you gonna you gonna watch it today? Um, I want to watch it straight through, and yep. it's a to, it's a tough thing on a work on a school night. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna try. Uh, if not, it'll be tomorrow because I want I want to live and go into this world. Nice. I'm so damn excited. <laughs> All right, we're going to get right into this with a story. I love this one. Uh, it's about the band Corn. So when it came time to choose a name for the band, they had considered being called Larry. Oh, stop it, <laughs> Larry. This really? is a great. This is a great story. Uh, that was from. That was the name of their manager at the hey, time, Larry. who had told them that they could not call their band Corn. <laughs> 
Now, Jonathan Davis told Revolver Magazine that he responded, well, we're going to pick it, we're going to name it Larry then. And he's like, F you. And I said, look, it's either going to be Larry or Corn. You F and pick it. <laughs> and once they decided on a name, Davis said that the logo, this is interesting yeah. too. Which the, is the K? Uh, well, it's the name, yeah, yeah. Corn, drawn out. The logo came about when he grabbed a crayon and wrote Corn with his left hand. Oh, Thank you very much, Kathy. Nick just pulled up uh, the Instagram account for uh, Co Wetzel, the song we just played, and apparently he likes to play golf. And uh, they were somewhere out west playing on a on a golf course. I'll have to see where this is, but there's a lot of a uh, um, uh, desert type of uh, terrain. Although it's right up against the the uh, the water, and I guess either he or a friend of his. Was that a watermelon? It looks like it, yeah. Okay, so they're way up on this hill, and he just drops this watermelon and starts rolling down the hill, rolling, 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 and he's probably a good 200 yards away. Right. It rolls down onto the green and hits the flag. <laughs> crazy. Like a one in a million shot. It goes It goes through different types of terrain, and that's crazy. Huh. Speaking not to go this off on video. A, a tangent, uh, did you see that footage? I think I sent it over to you yesterday. For, uh, Preston, I forget. It might have been Pebble beach but they had this huge wave come crashing up i don't think it was pebble i was i was looking yeah. at it uh i was trying to figure out where it was but it, it looked uh, like california coastline like a crazy rogue wave yeah crashed wow. up onto the course yeah it was it was wild they, like they had to run yeah yeah <laughs> press i watched a guy make a uh he he putted the ball and uh and this was yesterday i saw it he puts the ball and the ball goes past the hole and he's so pissed off and he, he snaps his putter in half right yeah but then the ball rolls back and goes in the hole. Nice. <laughs> and all he's got to do is go buy a three hundred dollar putter yeah. now. After that, always wow. wait before uh -huh. you snap your uh, totally. equipment in half. All right, uh, it is indeed Friday, and before we do the bizarre file, we are required to play your Friday song from Froggy. So here we go. To the weekend. Uh, before we do the bizarre file, because I'll forget to do this, uh, but on our YouTube streaming, yes, uh, a lot of people uh, tune in and comment. Uh, and uh, Kyle ran a poll of your favorite breakfast breads, <laughs> oh. and I have the results here. Ooh, okay. Okay. So, uh, fifty-five percent said bagel. Twenty-two uh. percent said croissant. Yeah. Yeah. I totally ah. forgot about that. Didn't yeah. even touch on. What are you aha about? Uh, you know, that makes <laughs> That's me That's what I didn't mention. Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. 22%. So 55 for bagel, 22 for croissant. English muffin, 16%. Toast, 6%. Mm. So the people have spoken. But now ah! it, my my top three is different because I completely forgot You're about You're too croissant. fickle when it comes to bread. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, now we have the bizarre file. No. Bizarre. WMMR presents bizarre. Kristen and Steve's Bizarre, bizarre File. All right, replace your aging heating and cooling system with a new one from Horizon Services. Have it installed as soon as the next day. Put zero down, have zero payments till 2024. Book fast at horizonezbook.com. All right, uh, a lot can happen while making a delivery for Amazon. A driver can be caught in traffic. They can be expected to carry heavy items or in the case of a TikTok chooser named Charles... They can even accidentally fall into a customer's septic oh. tank. Oh! oh. oh what? In a video that has over 7 million views, Charles claims he was walking past a hole on a customer's property when the ground collapsed below him, causing him to tumble into their septic tank. Well, you people don't realize when your septic tank starts to go, yeah. a, a lot of times the ground around it, the surface ground, will get very fragile. So he said, I'm like six feet down, and I tried using these roots around me to get mm. out, and they just 
pulled more dirt in on me. It's a, a clip of him standing in the hole. Like, he's yeah. making this video while he's in the hole. Can someone come here and murder me? Uh, Charles clarifies that he only began recording the videos after calling the proper authorities and attempting to get out of the hole himself. He also claims that he only posted the videos after he had safely exited the hole. In the text overlaying the video, he calls what happened a crappy situation. <laughs> uh, Charles then posted a second video from his time in the septic tank. He says... Uh, I'm back in now. ...that his rabbit, the device that Amazon uses to track deliveries, fell into the tank. He said, I'm not digging for it. The rabbit's gone. Jesus. Hopefully they don't make me finish my route. In the third video, Charles reveals he actually did, in fact, finish his route. He said, I guess I'm too nice. Amazon sent another driver to take 50 packages from him, which gave him time to go home, change, and shower, shower before heading out to complete his deliveries. That's, there's no effing way. He also claims that the city sent the fire department, police, an ambulance, and a helicopter to remedy the issue. Yeah, he's right by a discharge pipe. Uh, he was eventually able to escape using a ladder provided by the fire department, but the dude dusted himself off. Oh went back out and finished his route. Fortunately, there was plenty of corn to eat. Uh, <laughs> police have identified the, listen to this, badly burned body that was discovered January 2nd in, and I repeat, in a large banyan tree in uh, Hilo, Hawaii. Uh, the victim has been identified as 59-year-old Deborah Ann Humalu. Uh, an autopsy performed last week showed no signs of non-fire-related trauma. An incinerated corpse up in a tree? Inside a Inside tree. Inside Not up a tree. tree, in a tree. Uh, the final autopsy, autopsy results are pending toxicology and additional forensic testing. Shortly before 11.30 a.m. on January 2nd, the Hawaii Fire Department responded to uh, the report of a large banyan tree on fire. Was, is it possible it was a dead Keebler elf? I don't know. Upon uh, extinguishing the blaze, fire personnel discovered the charred human remains with an opening at the base of the tree and immediately alerted police. It's crazy. Police canvassed the area and interviewed numerous beachgoers. However, no one reported hearing any type of disturbance prior to the witnessing uh, to prior to witnessing the smoke and flames coming from within the tree. Never heard of that one before. That's pretty strange. Banyan trees are cool. Yeah. Listen to this one. A Rainbow Six Siege player got the fright of his life recently when his house was raided by police after uh, calling 911 by mistake. Rainbow Six, the video game. That is correct. Yeah, yeah. Yes. The incident occurred after the player, known only as Elijah, but dialed emergency services <laughs> while he was playing a round of Rainbow Six Siege at his oh, home. No. Police officers were dispatched to his residence after a 911 operator overheard him saying, I killed two people. Oh, my <laughs> man. Unbeknownst to the operator, Elijah was actually oh, making a harmless comment to his teammates via voice chat. <laughs> Barely two minutes after Elijah confessed to a double homicide, several police officers showed up at his front porch and the entire incident was captured on camera, by the way. Needless to say, Elijah looked visibly stunned when he answered the front door. His bizarre story was shared by his friend on Twitter, much to the bewilderment and amusement of Netsians. Elijah's misfortune is reminiscent of those who have suffered by uh, swatting. Swatting, which can and has gotten people killed. An illegal offense where people call in fake reports to police. But in Elijah's case, some Netsians said that the police actually responded appropriately to a potentially life-threatening situation. So he's just playing his game, and all of a sudden there's a knock at the door, and it's SWAT police ready to go. A judge, here's a follow-up story, has ruled that GEICO does not have to pay a Missouri woman $5.2 million despite her claims that she contracted a sexually transmitted disease while inside a car insured by the company. Remember this? Yes. The case made its way to the Missouri Supreme Court on Tuesday, which ruled unanimously to overturn a ruling from a lower court that sided with the woman being paid by the company. What's this? button on the dashboard that says syphilis. Uh, the woman in the case is identified in court documents as M.O. or Mo, I guess. Uh, she claims that while having sex in 2017 with a male partner inside of his 2015 Honda Gen or, uh, Hyundai Genesis, uh, she contracted human papillomavirus. papillomavirus. Uh, a, co a complaint claims the car was covered by a Geico insurance plan at the time the two had sex. Yeah. It also says that because the man knew that he had the disease and didn't tell her, he and his insurance were liable. Four years after the woman contracted the virus in February 2021, she alerted the insurance company she was pursuing legal action against the man, asking for a million dollars. According to the complaint, she claimed that the car insurance policy should, should cover her injuries and financial troubles, being that the virus was contracted in the car. However, Geico did not accept this settlement offer, saying that the car was not the typical use 
was not in its typical use when she contracted yes, HPV, the documents say. So it's insane. The Supreme Court of Missouri decided to not have them pay out the money. And then finally, uh, we'll end with this. I'm sure we've all heard ourselves doing a routine task. Well, this Missouri father of four feels your pain. Joel Hendrick uh, took up pickleball a few years ago and even won tournaments with his brother. But in November, uh, in November of last year, the unexpected happened. The 35-year-old father of four tore his neck artery oh God. just by turning his head. What? While playing pickleball? Yeah. He was following the ball, and boom, it tore his, a neck artery. He said, I felt a pop. I felt a pop in the back of my neck about two minutes after it happened. Jesus. I was having to be helped over to the bench with support because I couldn't stand on my own at all. Whoa. In addition to the torn artery, uh, Hendrick suffered three strokes as a... Uh, as a result, he's is it only, possible this guy was he? What, 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 what kind of shape is he in? He's thirty-five years old. He's in fine shape. Uh, fortunately, it looks like the dad will make a full recovery, and he vows to continue playing. It was just like this freak uh, thing, you know, like uh, uh, like getting hit, you know, right, and, right. in the heart at the wrong time. Uh, and it's so, insane for pickleball. Yeah, just turned his head, and that happened. So it's there, like breaking your leg while dancing to Madonna. There yeah. you go. Hmm. That's what I have in the bizarre file for you this morning. All right, we have a break to take. We're going to do that very thing. Don't forget our Word of the Week prize. We give that away today at the end of the program. So hang out with us, if you will, please. We'll be come back, coming back in a moment. Uh, Davis said that uh, he credits them getting their record deal due to the number of stickers with their logo on it that they had stuck all over town. We, we had to share this little story. So um, every evening at 6 o'clock, we do a quick conference call with us, uh, with the members of the show, just to see uh, where we are in preparation for the following day's show. If there's anything notable that we need to be aware of, you know, interviews and so on. And uh, that also includes topic conversations. And uh, so we're getting ready to wrap up the call last night. And then Kathy's got one more thing to add. Well, uh, Steve, so I was on a bachelorette and Steve's like, Did, you know, bachelorette produce anything? I was like, no, not really. It was actually pretty low key. And then I was like, oh, wait. Yeah. There was one thing. There was one thing. I was talking to these girls. You remember how last <laughs> week how Preston was saying uh, that he likes to make sure that, <clears throat> you know, his sexual partner has achieved. Right. Gets the, cookies, the cookies. Gets the cookies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, before going for the main, uh, the main course, and then Kathy says, and I'll say this verbatim because yeah. it's not yeah. vulgar or anything like that. She's like, I didn't know until I talked to these girls that not all women uh, will have an orgasm by having sex. Yeah. And uh, so we're like, oh, okay. And then all of a sudden, you <laughs> hear Casey go. I guess I should have told you guys that I'm in the car and have the Bluetooth on and Seamus is sitting next to me. Uh, I also brought up uh, something from another conversation we're going to have about the, the, the wall sitting. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, how, but even yeah. that was more benign. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Even that, I, I, like... I, I just, out, like, I was... Yeah. Sex, orgasm, like, just all the right. words. Right, all the words. All yeah. the words. Yeah. 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 Coming out of Kathy's mouth. <laughs> and so Seamus is just sitting there in the, dry, in the uh, passenger seat, and I just look over at him, and I can see him smiling. Couple minutes late, and oh. you had already announced that you were in the car with your kids. I didn't hear it. So <laughs> at the end of the... I, I think I cursed, like, I said the yeah. F word or something like that, but, like... I was like joking around trying to make you guys laugh and then there was like silence and Casey was like did you not hear me say I was in the car with my kids and I was like uh, nope I sure nah. didn't Sorry. Um, I, uh, here's the deal I don't even know if he knows what that O word is yeah all the other stuff I'm sure he knows all about right uh, but uh, the 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 main just uh, juxtaposed of the uh, of, of the, the conversation, the yeah. gist, whatever. Yeah. I sound like uh, anyway. <laughs> um, the main gist of the conversation, it being the O oh, and women not getting to that. Yeah. I don't even know if that that all that stuff could have gone over his head, and he probably was looking that word up. Yeah, how, yeah, old, yeah. how old is he? He's in eighth grade. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. But the the kids have the internet these days. Yeah, those kids. Yeah, and they're well, internet. if not, he knows now. <laughs> I tell you this, so uh, that that you know that that's something that I've never had to deal with because it's just my wife, you know, or right, yeah. we're transporting pets in the car. But I that it's such a common thing. 
I, there's no way that ha- doesn't happen all the freaking time. Yeah, Shell and I started instituted a, a standard greeting, yeah. which if if you're in yes. the car and Rochelle says it to me, she, says, she um, goes, hi, you're on speaker. So-and-so is in the car with me. Like, that's the yeah. first thing that mm-hmm. comes out of her mouth. Say hi. Yeah. 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 Now, in, in my defense, when I joined the call... <clears throat> There was already a conversation going on, so right, I didn't, right. you know, so I, I couldn't bust in and go, hey, by the way, I'm a speaker, yeah. you know, like, well, I, I just. Normally, yeah. it's okay. Like, yeah. the majority of our calls. It's pretty benign. Yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah, doesn't just, get that detailed or graphic. But when you're all worked up and horny, it comes yeah, to Yeah, apparently yeah. I needed to. <laughs> Kathy was all hot and bothered. Well, yeah. you know what, Casey, a, a couple of weeks ago, suggested maybe we do, uh, I forget, it was like Zoom call or FaceTime or something for our conference calls. And I was like, I can't do that because I am. My phone is always on speaker, like when yeah. I do the conference call, because it's dinner time and yeah. you know we're either cooking, cleaning, like whatever it is. And Jace is always there. And when I feel like so, or like sometimes there'll be like a curse of lips. I'm like, right, oh, yep. oh, oh, and I quick get the phone and right, like, right, right, put yeah. it up to my ear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So whenever I talk to my buddy Jeff on the phone, you you're pretty sure that the conversation is going to go to an NC-17 rating, right? Uh, so right. we always <laughs> will go. Are you on speaker? Are you alone? (laughs) Or whatever. Right. I mean, but with our conference call, you know, and also my my kids are older now. So it's like, you know, but when they were children, children, it was like. Hey guys, by the way, you know, I got the kids in the car. Well, it's, it's, for me, it's like my, my, you know, a Christmas story. Uh, we, we heard a lot of stuff from my dad, and so it was all part of the deal. But you never, you, we never received calls through Bluetooth in the car. Yeah. While I was in the back seat when my dad was driving. It was something that didn't happen. <laughs> Anybody see the. Um, did anybody see the uh, South Park quarantine special? Yeah. Yes. I watched it with my son over the weekend. And the last five minutes of it, uh, there is a giant phallus that Mr. Garrison is uh, <laughs> carrying back into town. And my son, who is a little bit older than Seamus Casey, could not stop laughing. But he was laughing so hard that he was, like, holding the pillow in front of his face. So, like, we we dance around the topic. But the closer, the older he gets, <laughs> the dancing just becomes less over. You're just like, no, nah, right. That's fine. Like, yeah. he knows you don't want to be the person... I don't know. You don't want to be, like, overt about it, but you also know that he knows. Listen, I've, I've told my, you know, like, and I say this time and time again. Listen, my kids are going to hear this stuff in the schoolyard. Yeah. Which is fine. Right. I don't want them teaching this stuff in the schoolyard. There's a difference. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, you, you know, want them and, getting and, shed talks. <laughs> no. Shed but talks. at the same time, <laughs> uh, you know, with the, the, whatever they're watching, it's like, all right, there's, <laughs> there's that weird fine line between, you know, condoning and encouraging. Yes. And so I don't. Like, my son is now watching clips of The Family Guy, and yeah. he's getting such a kick out of it, and I hear him cracking up. And, Have you know, my wife— parts? Probably. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. what he's—you know, but my wife's like, you know, it's not appropriate for him. I'm like, well, you know, I know what I watched when I was 13 <laughs> yeah. years old. I, I, think, yeah. I think my—like, my, my like with my situation, um, my my dad just got tired of trying to restrict it because, you know, and then and then my mother just sort of gave up. We, we tried, mm-hmm. and, you know, and, and we, were, we, we were fine, but— uh, yeah, a lot of the stuff just went over our heads, and then eventually it was like somehow I just remember knowing about it. I forget exactly where I became aware of it. It was, bo- it was a combination of both the schoolyard and my dad. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> I've got um, my you know my two olders. They they can say whatever they want to. Yeah. Right. It's 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 free reign now. I mean, they, you know, they're twenty and eighteen. Right. So. Yeah. Whatever, and they do, and they will say stuff in front of my 13 years year old. So it's all everything now is well, on the table, is on the table, <laughs> except for like graphic yeah. sex or anything <laughs> like that. You know what I mean? So the, the, you can. I, I love when parents say, "Ah, they've heard everything." You know, when they're talking about their kid who's a toddler, no. ah, he's heard everything, but no, no, they haven't. He may have heard all the words, not in a specific order though, yeah, mm-hmm. which can make it yes, very graphic and dirty. Well, like Chuck D'Amico, right? So Chuck D'Amico is part of our pod. I work with. Chuck and then I and I and so my kids and and his, we we see each other on the weekends. Chuck D'Amico says things that are like I was like I would never say that in front of my kids yeah. and and he says it in front of my kids and I'm like well I guess this is just where we are now you know like, wait he, Chuck <laughs> says stuff in yes. front of his kids we, that you wouldn't say in front no, of your kids he says it in front of my children he says it in front of my like children like what all right so so for instance we were playing using your mouth on a donkey <laughs> no <laughs> is it categories yeah we were playing categories right. Uh-huh. And the uh, things that are round came up, and the letter was T. And okay, he got said, it. and I'll just, uh, so he said tiny toddies, right. okay. but it wasn't toddies. Right. It was, you know, yeah. boobs. And I was like, we, you know, and like. You were like, we don't <laughs> say that. Right. So that's two points, you, you, man. You also, I, I know that, but you also have to rem- remember, I also have a, 
Like, I have the youngest of everybody, too. Yeah. So my, my sixth grader is there. My sixth grade daughter is there as well. So That's she's, not appropriate. It's not. It is not. So what but you're saying is he's a bad dad. Well, <laughs> I'm saying he often forgets. And, you know, that we also, we all have different parenting styles. So he might have said that in front of his sixth grade daughter when she, but she's a sophomore in high school now. So yeah. there's, there's, there's a difference. And you lose track. When, when he did that, my wife and I looked at each other like, <laughs> but, you know, like, I don't, do I say something? Well, I'm saying something to him now. Don't say stuff like that in front of my daughter, right? Don't say stuff like that in front of my my 11-year-old daughter. My 11-year-old Catholic wow. school daughter. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> Kathy, don't talk about orgasms in front of my son. <laughs> but I didn't, Unless I, you're going to listen, teach and, him how to give one to a... Oh, oh, no. oh God, stop it. Dear Lord. Stop, stop, We are stop. crossing <laughs> yeah, no, I don't the territories. Yeah, this, this By the way, I just jotted down, I need to watch South Park movie with my son. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we've yeah, ever yeah. seen that. And that gets as dirty as you can possibly get. And watch this quarantine special because it's pretty okay. damn funny. Okay. And there's a huge phallus in it at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. there's a little one in the South Park movie where uh, Saddam Hussein whips out. <laughs> right. No, this is a, a giant a man gets turned into a penis and gets uh, okay. uh, yeah, hauled into town. <laughs> All right. Nice. All right. Well, anyhow, if Kathy's on your call <laughs> and you're on Bluetooth yeah. with your children, make sure you say something because <laughs> otherwise... There's going to be just let loose. I, but an literally, I would be moment. the last person to say something in front of a kid. Are we still too. on for the swingers party tonight? <laughs> stop, mm-hmm. stop. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. By the way, today is National Cheesesteak Day. Yes. Uh, so I figured it's food, a food thing. Food is on the brain. Yeah. And, uh, we're we're going to do some giveaways with Steakham in a little bit who have uh, stopped by this morning to give us some stuff to give to you. Uh, but uh, let's have a seat and uh, have a meal, if you will. Let's, uh... It's time for the connoisseur in honor of National Cheesesteak Day. We're going to talk all things food. We definitely are. Maybe we can get into a cheesesteak discussion at some point. You know, there's a Goldberg's tie into uh, cheesesteaks. Here we run that episode. Yeah, where they, donkeys. Uh, donkeys. Right? Yep, and, absolutely. And the whole big thing was that uh, the best cheesesteak in the world is not in Pennsylvania. And you know what? It was really, really, good. really, really, really I need to good. get back there. I know. I'll have to yeah. when I have a, a cheat moment. I'll do that. Well, yeah. and some people call no fair uh, because it's not on the long roll. It's on a Kaiser. Yeah, and Poppy C Kaiser or whatever. Uh, oh, I man. got no problems with that. I oh, man. I don't care. Yeah. I, I think it just tastes great. That's I think it does. Do it. If you and put less it in between, yeah, if you put it in between white bread, it's still a cheesesteak. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Word. All right. So uh, I've got my yes, chef's chef's hat. Hat. Uh, chef's hat. Thanks, Kat. Uh, so uh, we had a story in the bizarre file of a guy who was delivering for Amazon, walking through uh, someone's yard, and he fell through a hole into a septic tank. Uh, was in there for a while. They eventually got him out. Uh, and then you would think that would be enough for the day. I'm, I'm off for the day. He <laughs> goes home, showers, gets back in his <laughs> truck, and finished his round Uh, which is unbelievable. So I I thought it might be an opportunity uh, to hear some stories of people who, damn it, I finished the job. I got got it done. This happened to me, but I finished the job anyway. I went ahead and did it. Um, 215-263-WMMR. Maybe something traumatic happened or I don't know, something weird, whatever it was. I'm sure there's some stories that exist. I really don't have any myself. Where you just, yeah, you have that incredible work ethic. I mean, mean, almost anyone who's sane tells you not to continue and you do anyway. I've pulled doubles and stuff like that. that, But but that's a a little bit different. This is way different, but I I basically played an entire baseball game with a broken wrist. I broke a wrist in the first inning and uh, and I continued and I went to three with a broken wrist did you sense that you had a broken wrist oh man it was it hurt so bad but the yeah. problem was steve we there were only 10 guys on our team and if i came out this other guy was going to go in i didn't really care for that guy that, that much uh as a player as a person i thought he was fine but i was like i can't have him play for me and so i ended up playing with the broken wrist and i, I probably did more damage i ended up having to with a wrist have a cast all the way basically up to my shoulder uh, because I had Jeez. kept it up so bad. My dad played two full college football seasons with two broken wrists. That's, wow. What? <laughs> uh, and I, I, I think he. It was a while before he figured out they were actually broken. Uh-huh. But, uh huh. But they casted him up and he played anyway. He made, made him different back insane. then. Uh, yeah, they yeah, did yeah, make yeah. him different. Yes, they did. And that was Ironman football. He played. Yeah. He played uh, naked deep, offense and defense and naked. <laughs> naked. Right. Uh, which is crazy. Yeah, it was a no a, pads. A, no a, a league that they did. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the dog on that quarterback. Uh, <laughs> let me see. I'm going to go do some calls. Uh, I've got uh, Sam on the phone. Hey, Sam. Good morning. 
Good morning. Get Zooks. Get to you, Sam. What's up? Um, so I have recently had a work trip uh, out to Seattle for a conference, and my first night there, my boss took us out to dinner, recommended the restaurant, recommended the dish I ordered, and I got food poisoning. Oh, oh no. God, that's the worst. So I got about two hours of sleep that night, and then the next day we had conferences all day, and then we had to entertain. We were hosting a, <laughs> like a happy hour for our clients and potential clients, and I had to rally and town drinks and make it work and stayed up till about 6 a.m. You Okay, so you ended up tearing it up after all that? Oh, yeah. Like That's I, insane. I literally, I was <sighs> taking shots, I kid you not, of Pepto-Bismol and apple cider vinegar. Oh, my God. Before we went out, and I was like, "All right, I guess just get me an espresso martini." And I'm like staring at the food that I know I can't eat. I'm just like, "All right, I guess this is what we're doing." Tim, oh, I don't know what you. God. I mean, you, you, you know, awful. you had you, both times. I've had food poisoning twice, and both times I wanted to sure. die. I was but, incapacitated. I, I I couldn't move. I had to guzzle Pedialyte. Uh, I don't know how you did it. I literally, and I said to my boss, I said, look, I complain about everything. I said, but at the end of the day, who gets the job done? I was like, I'm, I rally. There you go. Wow. wow. Yeah. Yes. You get the award. Thank you, Sam. Press, I, I have to disagree with you. You have, like, you've worked with MRSA. Oh, I yeah. remember, I, I mean, you were hunched over. There yeah. was, a, there was a, in the old studio, I remember, clearly remember, there was yeah. a pillow up on the, the counter. Uh -huh. Yeah. Because it was under my armpit, this uh, this thing. This Pit huge, is the worst. Oh, my God. It was it was extremely painful, this, this uh, uh, infected area. And while we did the show, I held a pillow up and, and, uh, and put it under my arm yeah. because uh, it was painful just to have my arm resting. Uh, but, yeah, that was a few days. I was really, really sick. You're and right. I, I, I never missed work over that. Yeah. Two uh, Camp Out for Hungers ago. Oh, my God. Literally oh my God, were... laid down on the floor in between <laughs> breaks because you were so sick. I was horrible. Yeah. I guess it, it's not the same, but I, I, I scheduled. I only missed two days for, for prostate, prostate, prostate yeah. cancer. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I punched it right up against the vacation, but I'm like, oh, let me put it that. D does that make me your hero? Yes. Yeah, of course it, it does. does. <laughs> no, 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 no. But I mean, because I had a vacation right up against it, so, so it's not like fully playing hurt. Um, you know? Here's another one. It says, uh, shot a nail through my index finger. Oh, no, no, no. Finished the job with it stuck in my finger. Oh, Jesus. That's from uh, oh another God. Sam who emailed, texted in. That food, back to the girl that went to work or whatever and ate and drank after having food poisoning. I don't, it's. How do you do that? I don't know. Like Steve said, the times that I've had it were, I mean, it's, it was the worst sickness I've ever had. It wasn't the, the longest, like COVID was, the was long powerful. and I, I got the pneumonia and right. all of it, but worse like in bed couldn't move couldn't even open my eyes was sick was uh, so food Kathy, poisoning. that was the time the the first time which is in mystic connecticut under cook chicken oh. i they gave me morphine and i slept for two days oh my god more, yeah i felt like i could yeah. add morphine so we're gonna go to this story this guy uh, if you're just tuning in fell into a septic tank and uh went home showered off and finished his route uh we're gonna go to chris hey chris good morning uh, yeah yeah What's up, Chris? Yes, I was over for that. Um, right, so <laughs> I won't say what car dealership I was at, All right. but I used to do a lot of automotive equipment uh, installation and stuff, but we were installing a new um, smart lift. And the hole itself is about two and a half feet wide, mm. eight feet long, and 11 feet deep. Oh, my God. Okay. I was I was down inside. We didn't have any shoring in the hole, and yes, we should have. You know, if OSHA came in, they probably would have had a problem. But yeah. I was down inside the hole, and I noticed the wall looked like it was uh, starting to cave in. Oh, no. So I'm raking. You know, I'm, I'm trying to rake and square the corners off because we don't do plumber holes. And all of a sudden, the hole literally started coming in at me. I had my one leg and both hands up against one side of the hole and my back against the other. And I'm screaming at the operator who's Jeez. sitting in the back oh. to drop the bucket down. And literally, he drops the bucket down, rips me up, and right as the hole collapses and caves in. And he, then he dangles me over the hole. And I'm screaming, <laughs> boom, over, boom, over. <laughs> And oh man, that was close, dude. That's amazing. So you were kind of you were holding it together. I, no, he he dropped the bucket down, and I grabbed oh uh, the teeth on the bucket, and he pulled me out just as the hole collapsed. That's crazy. And then he dangled me over it, dude. There was a volunteer firefighter who was a mechanic working at that shop at the time. Yeah, he said flat out that was the closest he's ever seen anybody coming to die. Yeah, that was yeah, that, that could have been certain death. Oh my yep. God, Chris, that's insane. And then you finished. 
We'll be finished the job, though. So you, you kept working for the day. I don't know how you wouldn't yep. be, because that would have been the, the, the come to Jesus moment where you're like, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> oh, dude, yeah, it was, I'm not going to lie, it was, uh... I've been in sketchy situations. That's probably the the, the hardest my heart's ever. Been. Oh my god! That's yeah, insane. All so right. somebody, in fact, they just had was in Allentown. They had the uh, the collapse on the two yeah. workers. Yeah, yeah, and they got them yeah. out. Yeah. All right, so, uh, thanks I for love the you story. Guys. Thank you, thank love you, Chris. You, Take care. Uh, here's a text that says, "Hey guys, uh, my intestines." perforated oh and i went to work drove home and then to the hospital oh my god uh they they finished the day so maybe a lot of that also a lot of that them. you you benefit by blissful ignorance like it, you you sometimes don't know how bad it is that's happened you can it, die yeah you can die with perforated yep uh, oh yeah yep yeah uh let me go next to ashlyn uh ashlyn good morning good morning hey what's up ashlyn so I'm a chef at a um, at a country club, and so one day I, there was a lot of orders. I was doing salmon with some skin. Uh -huh. I gave myself on my right hand a second, a deep second degree, almost third degree burn. Oh, wow! Like covered my whole hand. Oh my god! I ended up finishing the shift out on saute. Oh. I texted my mom, who's a cat scan tech, and was like, "Does this look right to you?" She said, um, all right, let me call the burn doctor. I didn't hear anything, so I, like, wrapped it up. Went to work the next day. Halfway through the shift, she was like, you need to get to the hospital. The burn doctor said, you're done. Oh, no I had to get that thing scrubbed, and it Ooh. hurt. Oh. And that night, people were complimenting the mystery ingredient. Yeah, yeah. the secret <laughs> sauce. The human flesh. It's like Parmesan <laughs> cheese. This is delicious. Uh, <laughs> wow. Ashton, do you still have a scar from that? Yeah, I actually have multiple scars, but yeah, on my hand, you can see it's discoloration because they were like, oh, put some sunscreen on it. You'll get color. I said, no, nah, this is a battle wound, y'all. I need to keep this. No, especially in your line of work. You got to show yeah. you, you have the, uh, you'll excuse the pun, chops to do what you do. That's wow. pretty amazing. All right. Thank you, Ashland. Yeah, she continued on, finished the job, came back the next day, and they were like, no, I don't think so. Uh, I will go to Stu next. Hey, Stu, good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Hey, what's up, buddy? Hey. So, uh, Back in the day, I was a roofer, and uh, used to use staples and not nails. And then uh, I slipped on the roof, and I stapled my foot to the roof with a big toe. Oh, my, oh my God. God. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Listen to that laugh. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it was so stuck that I couldn't get it off. Uh -huh. I had to borrow a pry bar from one of the other guys and pry my toe off the roof. Stu, let me, let me ask you. So, obviously, you know we know like a nail gun. So, how big were those staples? Oh, like inch and a half, inch and three quarters. All right, that big. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so then, so you were able to pry it off? Yeah, I pried it off, and then I climbed down the ladder, and then there was, like, all these masons, and they're like, what are you going to do, man? I'm like, well, I'm going to grab uh, some vice grips. And I, I stepped on my foot with my other foot, and I pulled the staple out. Oh, and they my were God. All like, <laughs> they were all, like, dying. They are like, you're going to go to the hospital? I'm like, no, man, I'm going back to work. <laughs> wow. Jesus. And you finished the day. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's but I didn't like... take my shoe off till later because I just didn't want to know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Forget like me, it. Me this morning Thanks, reminds dude. me, I uh, I forgot to set my coffee timer last night. I still came into work this morning. Oh, my God. Are you all right? I'm, 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 I'm barely okay, but all I'm right. here. You know. I love that about you. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go next to... <laughs> That's why he was so sad. Yeah. We're going to go next to Randy. Hey, Randy. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Great. What's up, Randy? Well, a very long time ago, I was framing a house on the second floor, okay. and a nail gun bounced off the end of the partition on the floor I was framing, and it shot into my hand. Oh, my God. Don't they have safeties? In my left hand. Well, it caught the edge of the partition, and just enough of it compressed the safety. Oh, my God. And it shoots right into my left hand. Oh, my God. Well, my helper was on the first floor. I go to over where the ladder was. To, He's coming up the ladder to help me, and he sees the nail sticking out of my hand, and he passes out and falls <laughs> out. <of the> <laughs> he fell off? Oh, he fainted. I wonder. Well, that I would be me. Uh huh. The nail in my hand. Yeah. He's on the floor, passed out on the first floor, and I have no ladder to get down. I had to <laughs> claw down the framing. Oh, my God. With the nail in your hand. You had to climb down the framing? What's that? You had to climb down the framing. The ladder was, <laughs> you were stuck up there. Well, first I had to pull the three-inch nail out of my hand. My oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh. And then 
shimmied down the framing, <laughs> picked him up, put him in the truck, took him to the hospital. Yeah. They let they he stayed at the hospital. I went back and finished the day. <laughs> and finished oh, the, the day. guy oh, who reacted God. to your accident had to stay in the hospital while you went back and finished the job. Wow. And then the kid took three days off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jesus. Randy. Thanks, man. You're an Iron Man. You're a trooper. Do you think uh, so? Like in, in Lethal Weapon, was it two with the uh, the nail gun? We see somebody in, in Casino Royale. Yeah. Could you? Uh, how? Well, yeah. I mean, depending I mean, on where you right? shoot it, yeah. like you know, he shot it. I think into the guy's head and, and, What's your question? and heart. Could you do what with the nail gun? Is is it is it? Uh, uh, you know, how how far in would it go if you got? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Was it going yeah. through wood. We had right. uh, we had a concrete nail gun. When oh, my dad okay. was. Uh, Actually, this is the off topic a bit, but um, the way they used to make nail guns, I yeah. kid you not, and this is when we, my dad was finishing the basement, there was a, a 22 caliber I, shell. I remember that. That you yeah. would put in it, and it didn't have a projectile yeah. in it, but, well, the projectile essentially was the nail. Yeah. And so it was this, it was a, a shaft looking thing uh, with a handle on it, and you would take a regular hammer, and you would hit it, and it would go... Bang! It would it would explode, uh -huh. <laughs> and that's how you would drive those things into concrete. It was crazy. And has that changed? Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. 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 That anymore? Yeah. Now, now they, they use they air pressure. Use compressed air. Oh wow! But it was literally it was gunpowder. <laughs> oh my god! And it was hilarious because you'd hit that thing, and it was like somebody shooting a gun inside your house. You had to wow. wear you know hearing protection and everything. Because you know you see like. A, you know, shooting and and, and the, the nails going in. I'm like, yeah. I mean, if you have that many perforations, if you get it in the in the heart or whatever. Yep. But yeah. Uh, let me go. This one's pretty wild about finishing the day after a, a tough day at work. I'll go to Craig. Hey, Craig, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Dramatic pause and a huh. Craig, what's up, bud? So uh, a few years back, I used to work in the cell phone industry, and I worked at a store in Havertown, and a guy walked in. It was a cold day. I remember it like it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. He had a, a mask on. It was He had a hood up over his head. He walked in like he needed help with his cell phone. He walked up to the counter, and he pulled a gun out. Jeez. Made me lay on the floor and tied me up with duct tape. Oh, my gosh. And he stole a bunch of iPhones. Okay. And, you know, I broke out of the duct tape eventually after I, I – Felt like he left. Right. Called 911. The entire police force comes out. There's guys with guns all over the place. Um, long story short, I ended up finishing my shift. Okay. <laughs> wow. You know, yeah, you'd think like a <laughs> manager would home. come in. Listen, you've had it. Listen, go home and, and, and just take the rest. Take a couple of days. Yeah. You my, finish the shift. My boss came, you know, to see if everybody was okay, and he never even offered oh to my, let me go home. Oh, my God. Listen, here's a free phone case. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God, That's Craig. That's insane. That's crazy. Uh, a lot of people texting in, Preston, about the nail guns. Oh, really? Since All right. They thanks, still man. use them. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So for concrete nail guns. Okay. They they have 22. They also have 27 caliber. So <laughs> it's uh, it, that... Method is still in use. Yeah, Chuck just came in and said that I think it's called a ram set. Yes. I had yeah. no idea. I thought it was kind of antiquated now that they have the uh, mm. uh, compressed air. That's so wild. I was doing work with concrete and sinking um, hooks into concrete and use a, that impact drill, you know, uh, yeah. which is pretty cool. So I, I figured that would have replaced the old uh, compressor. I thought, I thought that was a thing of the past as well. <laughs> I will go next to... We need to do that on the air. <laughs> Kristen. Hey, Kristen, good morning. Hi, uh, Krista. Oh, what's hey, hey, Krista, what's up? Like the jewelry. <laughs> yes, like the jewelry. <laughs> but I'm not so easy. <laughs> uh, what's your story, Krista? <laughs> I started working when I was uh, 13, and it was at, like, a small pet store, none of the big chains. And one of my jobs was to clean the aquarium. So I'm cleaning the lionfish cage, and it just brushes my hand. Like, I didn't think anything of it. So... <laughs> Like, 30 minutes later, I'm, like, blown up like a balloon. I didn't know what to do. I'm only 13. My boss is, like, freaking out. Didn't know what happened. They're um, very toxic. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah. They didn't tell me. They oh. just told me to clean the... the oh, my God. Experience. My boss is only in his 20s, so he took me... Now, to you might want to be careful because those things might kill you yeah. while you're in If there. you just gently brush against them, they'll cause you to heave up and die. Wow. Like, a little warning would have been great. Yeah. Then my mom goes to pick me up at 8. I'm not at work. She's freaking out. Nobody called her to let her know that I'm in the hospital with, like, anaphylactic shock. You know? Oh, that's crazy. Like, uh, did you go back did, did you go back to work I after did. that? 
Yeah, I did. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Come on! That's a good one. How does the boss not step in and say, take a take a little yeah. while. Let All me right. get you lunch. Thank I'll you. buy you an English muffin. Thank you, Krista. Uh, let's see. There's a Man, there's a lot of good ones here. Yeah, okay. This one I got to go to. Uh, we have Kevin on the phone line. Hi, Kevin. Good morning. Hey, guys. What's the word? Oh, oh no. 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 Yeah. We're not. We're not. No. Oh, you sure? Everybody's here <laughs> about the bed. <laughs> It's been a while. It has been a while. Not it long has enough. Been a while. Yeah. What's up, Kevin? All right. So back in high school, I worked at a pizza shop, and I used to work right after school. So I worked that shift, got done, thought I was done work, met up with a bunch of my friends in the parking lot, and we decided to eat a bunch of psychedelic mushrooms. All right. Okay. Sure. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Well, why not? So we're hanging out in the parking lot. My boss comes out, and I had to go back in and go to work to cover somebody else's shift. Oh, man. Oh, no. So you were tripping on mushrooms oh, while you're wor working? Let me tell you, I had the time of my life. Yeah. <laughs> Seahorses forever. I'm sorry. Absolutely insane. Uh, so, all right. So what, what all did you have to do? Were you just making pizzas? Yeah, yeah, I was just, I was at the pizza station. I was kneading the dough and playing <laughs> with the dough. And, well, and let me I ask you. Did, did, everybody did, that's ordering mushrooms on their pizzas, I'm having fun putting the mushrooms all over. <laughs> <laughs> are you, are you absolutely certain you were making pizza? <laughs> I'm sorry? Because, I mean, how, that's potent stuff, is it not? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it kind of was. But, well, let me you know. ask you, how much did you eat? Did you eat like a half eighth? Did you eat a full eighth? What? Yeah, how much? It was, like, it was a couple, couple caps, couple stems. <laughs> oh okay, God, right, and you had done it to kind of know what to expect. So yeah, but yeah, still. Absolutely. I, I looked at it as it was going to be more of a good time than anything. <laughs> a little bit of an adventure. Best pizza time ever. That's great, Kevin. Ever. You're a trooper, buddy. Nice job. <laughs> pizza. Yeah. Pizza party. <laughs> it's a pizza party. Oh, my God. <laughs> that must have been him. I forgot right? about that. Yeah, pizza. Oh, my goodness. Uh, let's see. Teresa's been on hold for a long time. Let me go to her. Hi, Teresa. Good morning. Hey, guys. First time, long time. How's it going? Oh, awesome. Thanks for coming on, Teresa. It's going well. What's your story? So I'm a PA in urgent care, and um, never a good sign in medicine when you hear someone yell, we need help out here. Yeah. So I quickly run out to the waiting room, and there's some guy slumped over, unconscious. So I start sternal rubbing him, trying to wake him up, and then I feel something warm on my foot. And I had put off wearing Crocs for years because I was like, these things are so dorky. I'm not wearing them. But then all my coworkers were like, you got to wear Crocs. They're so comfortable after 12-hour shifts. you got to get a pair. Maybe my second day wearing Crocs, and I get pissed on my socks. So oh, <laughs> the dude was pissing on your feet? Oh, my God. And this was in the morning. This was in the a.m. So I had to spend the rest of my 12-hour shift. In a pea sock. Um, in a pea so, sock. Oh, I would have went home. <laughs> Long story short, I have a spare pair of socks with me all the time, and I still wear the crop. You oh, know what, Teresa? Great. I think you would have been well within your rights to go into one of the patients in a coma and steal their socks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Teresa. She continued Jeez. on. Not quite falling into a septic tank. But pretty yeah. Good. Uh, this one. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got <laughs> to go to Chris. Hi, Chris. Good morning. Hey, how you doing? Good. All right, Chris, you had a moment at work where something something bad happened, and yet you finished your shift. What was it? Right. Well, for, first of all, we that the uh, hemorrhoid explosion uh, got moved right to the top of the, lot, the line there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, a few years ago, I was doing side jobs. The kids are little. I'm looking to pick up money, yep. and I used to do floors for people. So we, we hook up with this this one person, a friend of my wife's, pretty hot-looking, you know, uh, soccer mom, you know. Yeah. And I'm over there putting the floor down. I had a system. I get there in the, in the day before, tear it out. So Saturday rolls around. I level everything out. I'm putting the mastic down. I, I was I was a fat shorts guy, winter guy. I you know, wear the khaki shorts doing the job. Okay. So I've been battling hemorrhoids for years. Okay. All right. So <laughs> what a catch! I'm I'm going yeah I'm going to town. No big deal, right? About five o'clock in the afternoon. I'm I'm. I'm rounding third, getting ready to come home, <laughs> and I feel some wet all over my back. I look back, and I am saturated with blood everywhere. Oh, blood, oh my God. blood everywhere. Oh my right? God! So I was, I was, I was. It didn't hurt or anything like that. 
But I was embarrassed. Like, you know, you don't want to be walking around with your, you know, your asshole full of blood. And <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think most people would. I would understand. I that. mean, at least, you, at least you would think twice while leaving with that going on, right? Yeah. Well, well, these uh, 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 the house I was working in was a row house, right, right, right around the corner from Washington High School, right. and it's like it's like a cartoon background. Every house looks the same. Yeah. You know, yeah. So I'm about ten, ten houses up, and I, and I said to this lady, I said, you know, I can't remember her name. I said, uh, do you have a, uh, a basement door? I got to get something out of my car. Yeah. She said, oh, yeah. Go so I went, like, backed out, and I ran to the car. I had to drive home standing up. Thank God I was only, like, like six blocks away, right? I got to drive home basically standing up in, in my Monte Carlo. I get home. The kids are all excited. The kids are all, like, the three little kids, like, little babies are eating ice cream. Hey, hey, Daddy, here's Daddy. I walk in. They see the blood. They go ballistic. Oh, my God, what happened to Daddy? You know what I mean? So I quit going home, and I... Uh, <laughs> I, 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 you know, of course, you're not going to lose the khakis. I had to put them in a bucket. You know? Sure, yeah. And then I the uh, got changed, ran back there, right? Now, this lady had this dog, this cute little dog, right? <laughs> so I get back, and now, now I feel good. I had to get back because the mastic was setting up on the tile. Yeah. So I get there. I walk up the front door, and the dog comes up to me, and he starts barking. Okay. I'm like, hey, little guy, you know, I've been here all day, right? I look up. I walked into the wrong house. Wrong house. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. my God. So, you, guys, you, so, two, you, so you... two guys sit, sitting there eating dinner. It was like it, it must have had, like, the, the same litter, these dogs. You know what I mean? Like, two doors down. Yeah. And um, I walked in. I'm like, hey, little dog, and I'm laughing. Uh, I look up, and these two guys are sitting there. I'm like, man, this, 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 these guys are going to kill me. I, I thought, like, you know, there was, like, guns out in the, the coffee table. You know what I mean? Like, you start saying things. You know what I mean? Right. So, I don't know what to do. I just laugh. I just said, look, Pat, I'm really sorry, man. I'm really sorry. <laughs> what a that. great day. Hey, let me ask you. When, when a hemorrhoid explodes, does it smell? Oh, no. Okay. No, no. no. All right. But, uh... It's uh, that's the only thing that's not good. That's the only thing good. And that is good. Is there's no odor? Oh my god! So your Chris. ass explodes on the job, and you go back to work. Uh, yeah, look, it's happened before. This this was the all time greatest because I walked into the wrong house. These guys were going to kill me. Then I finally walk into the right house, and she says to me, "Did you just walk into my neighbor's house?" And, yeah, you know. <laughs> So yeah, I did, you know. She was a hottie, too. I can't remember what her name was. Well, it, they but, always uh, say the yeah, quickest sorry. way to a woman's heart is through a detonating hemorrhoid. Wow. What, what's that? <laughs> Don't worry about it, Chris. Good. All right, thanks for the call, bud. We appreciate it. An God exploded almighty. hemorrhoid. And did I hear correctly? I've never heard of an exploding hemorrhoid before. That he had had that happen before? That's yeah, what he yeah said. that was he the said. worst of them. That was the worst yeah. of them. He yes. said he's battled uh, hemorrhoids all his life, which yeah. uh, he's losing. suck. Yeah, wow. It's a great story, though. Wow. All right, uh, let me see. We got to wrap up, Case? Yeah. All right, let me let me get one, one, last one more. One. All right, and, man, <laughs> uh -huh. there's a number of them. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, let me go to Jeff. This will be our last call. Hi, Jeff. Good morning. Hi, Jeff. Hey, hey Jeff, what's up, bud? <laughs> hey, Durka Durka. Durka Durka. All right, you got a story, pal? So, yeah, so I used to work at a place that builds boat trailers, uh, right out of like right out of high school, so I'm in like my like, I'm like 19, maybe 20 at the time. Yeah, and it didn't actually happen to me. It happened to a coworker, but I watched the whole thing happen. Yeah. So when you, when you stack the trailers to be shipped out, you have to put you know blocks of wood so the frames don't touch and get scratched up and everything. My coworker is cutting out a notch, for, and you know for in a block of wood like a two by four. He's wearing gloves. <clears throat> Runs the runs the two by four into the saw. The thing grabs the tip of his glove oh. and drags his whole hand. Drag his whole hand in. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So, right. so I'm thinking, okay, holy shit, he just. Oh wait, hang on. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. You can't say that, Jeff. <laughs> You're thinking, oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. No That's problem. Uh -huh. And you know, I'm like, oh my god, he just chopped his fingers off. Yeah. So this guy grabs his hand. Holy, you know, ow, you know, runs to the bathroom, wraps it, you know, washes his hand off, wraps it up in paper towels, comes back out, smokes a cigarette, and starts working again. <laughs> like, wow. Like, did he? What the heck I did know. I just see? Did he, in fact, lose any, uh, he, did he, he lose a finger? I guess not. No, uh, it actually, it took a big chunk out of his thumb. Oh. And and ripped up his uh, index and middle finger to the point where he needed stitches. Yeah, and but, and you know, he's got to go. And to the by the way, yes, when when you need he stitches, got literally wrapped in it, wrapped in a rag and, a, and paper towels, and he starts working. So the boss comes over, sees the blood everywhere, and he's like, "Dude, stop!" <laughs> 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 
<laughs> what are you doing? Yep. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, that's oh it's insane. What that's crazy. I'm like, what the heck did I just see? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they always say if you have an injury like that, first, right, you wrap Thanks, it in paper Jeff. towel and wait a couple hours. Yeah. yeah. Wait, yeah. wait a day yeah. or two. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Jeff. By the way, no, you got it. You need to get stitches soon. I found out I'd, I'd cut a, a bad cut on my foot, yeah, and, yeah. and I waited till the next day. I didn't want to go to the hospital, which is stupid. I was drunk. <laughs> uh, and uh, and the next day, I went to the hospital. like, can't stitch it up now. What? It was too late? Waited too long. Oh, yep, man. Waited too long. And I had to let that thing heal from the inside out. <sighs> yeah, it tough. took a long time. That I had is... to like I had to use crutches because it, so, it was hard to put weight on my foot. And did you also know that if you break open that stitch, they can't restitch it? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Look at all the stuff we're learning. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for your calls. This all stemmed from a guy who was delivering for Amazon, and he fell through the ground into a septic tank. <laughs> they got him out eventually, went home, showered up, finished his shift, played hurt. That's made it amazing. Yep. It's amazing. All right. We're going to take a break. We'll come back in uh, just a moment. Don't forget a little bit later on. Lesson, question, trash, music, news, that stuff, word of the week prize. We give it away today. Stay put. We'll be back in just a moment. WMMR. Uh, you got me. Yeah. There's a couple different ones. I think like sous chefs wear a different hat, and okay. so there's a variety of different uh, hats that are worn in, in certain restaurant situations. So uh, it's called a toque, Steve. All right, there we go. Uh, so oh, according to this, it says uh, the chef's hat is officially called a toque. It's that's toque, uh, which is Arabic for hat. All right. While the term has existed for a few thousand years, the French popularized the word when referring to a chef's hat, according to Culinary Anyone. Huh. That's a, a website, I guess. By the 1800s, it had has become known as the toque blanche. Oh, because it's white. Or oh. white hat. Yeah. I know you're about to get going with something. Cut right. it, sir. Uh, I don't think a cheesesteak in between white bread is, is still a cheesesteak. It is. All right. Maybe we can come back to this. <laughs> okay. I stand corrected. <laughs> no, I, I mean, is it, is it called a cheesesteak uh, roll? Yeah, I, no, I think, it's I, think I think you bastardized the sandwich by putting it in between white bread. Okay. If we're um, going to come back to cheese, you're talking about sandwich later. bread, just regular sandwich yeah. bread? Yeah. I mean, what if you put a hamburger Meat in between bread. a piece of, two pieces of white bread? It, it, Is no. it not a hamburger, a hamburger anymore? I, I will it's accept. You didn't have any rolls left and you had nothing else to use. I will accept right. a Kaiser roll, but a white bread, I think you are killing the, the very <laughs> being of what a cheesesteak is. It's still a cheesesteak. I'm not saying I'm not killing the being of it, but it's still a cheesesteak. If you put peanut butter and jelly on a hoagie roll, it's still a peanut butter and Jelly sandwich. Would you then call it a steak sandwich? Because I don't see that as a steak sandwich. A steak sandwich I see on a roll. I think well. if like if you put it on a bagel, it's no longer a cheese steak. I, I think if you put it on white bread, like I'm thinking, like uh, you know, the bread has that much sway over it. You think? Yeah, I, I, I think you have ruined huh. the well, very concept of of a cheese steak. I think you, it's like um, steak sandwich ingredients on white bread. I, I think Do it's me no favor, longer a cheese steak. Put mm. some documentation together and send it on over. Let me ask you: uh, You have a problem with cheese steak egg rolls? They're Still not- called cheese steak. It's not even a, remotely a cheesesteak. <laughs> it's not no, a cheesesteak. It's called it's a, got che- cheese it's not a cheese steak ingredient. No, it's not. It's, it's a cheesesteak cheese egg roll. Don't call it a cheesesteak egg roll. I'm then don't call it a cheesesteak egg roll. You think that's a cheesesteak sandwich because, because, because it's, it's got cheesesteak material in it? It is not a cheesesteak sandwich. It has cheesesteak ingredients. It has cheese steak. But it does not, it's not a cheesesteak. In the classic form, it's a cheesesteak egg roll. Cheesesteak egg roll. I, I just want to point out to everyone, you know, looking at Casey's yeah. body language, he's deadly serious yeah, about yeah. all oh, this, right? Well, it's, it's dumb. It's wrong. It's, you're, it's, it is a dumb conversation to have, and it's... Uh, uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. It's a dumb... Listen, it's a che- I don't... It's a cheesesteak. It's what is inside the roll that it's named after. It doesn't matter what you wrap it in. It okay. doesn't matter, like... And cut Nick yeah. some slack, because he said really loose bowel movements. Yeah, the past day okay. Or two, so. He's not thinking right. <laughs> yeah. He's low on electrolytes. <laughs> Just had a visit down to the third floor. Did you make a cheesesteak? <laughs> well, no, but man, they got a nice bathroom down there. Uh, Sony has recruited Zachary Levi to star in Sony's live-action adaptation of the classic children's book, Harold and the Purple Crayon. Did you ever read that book, or did you kids? I don't remember. Yeah. I know the title, so do I. but I don't remember what yeah, it's no. about. It was a staple in our household when Ben was three and four years old. Okay. Uh, and I love Zachary Levi, man. He's, He's great. He just seems... He seems like a guy I yeah. want to know. We could absolutely hang with him. At least you it know? seems that way. Yeah. I loved him in the show, Chuck. 
Uh, the story published in 1955 and written by Crockett Johnson tells the story of a four-year-old who created worlds around him with his crayon. He is the voice of Flynn Rider, correct? He is. Yeah. 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 Which is a far superior movie, Tangled, than, than, than Frozen. Yeah, I know. You're a big proponent That's of that. Casey's opinion. Yeah. 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 And I texted you guys about Flynn Rider last night. I yeah. saw that, and... Oh, by the way, I was looking at the cover of... Uh, Purple, uh, purple, and the and the and the periled crayon, <laughs> and the hairy donut. <laughs> purple, <laughs> purple, and the hairy donut. Hey, I know someone named Christine Herple, by the way. Okay. We do, we do. It's working not, NBC. not her first name, but <laughs> Herple. It's not. <laughs> It's Meast and Moiti. Purple. Purple. I love purple. Purple? <laughs> I mean, I'll let you guys laugh at it out, and then I'll laugh. It's so hard. It's, it's hard. Just with the so, it's just there. <laughs> hey, you got to get past I, it. So anyway, uh, yes, Nick had texted over something about the fact that uh, the people have voted that um, Flynn Rider is the sexiest Disney ca- character ever. According to who? Uh, this guy, Kevin Sparrow, uh, did a Twitter poll. I just poll. think he's Oh, he did a Twitter poll. <laughs> yeah. Nipple piercing. Yeah. Never, not piercing in general, never has appeared to me. me uh, appealed to me. I've never had a pierced does ear, Pierre mouth, and nose. He has both nipples pierced, right? Does I, think, he really? I think he does, yeah. yeah. Ooh, I, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Wow. I have five in my ears. Do you really still? Yeah. No, well, five I mean, nipples? I, could, <laughs> I got five, five nipples. I got three nipples in the left ear, okay. two nipples in the right ear. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can stick earrings you can. through them right now if I oh, want to. Oh, I didn't to. know that. Yeah. It, it just it didn't look right. Right. I tried. I was in old radio, and you know, yeah. and every time I looked in the mirror, I'm like, just, just I, I don't look That's like an me. earring guy. Yeah. yeah. I had my nipple pierced. No, what? shut up! Shut up! Are you God. kidding? Miss Needle Phobic? How long have we known you? <sighs> we Happy never. Birthday, hey, thank you. Yeah. Happy birthday, Kathy Romano. Birthday miracle. Reveal that she had her nipple pierced. I still you don't believe smiling. it. Smiling. She was smiling when I brought this up. She looked at me holding up her hand, meaning I have something to say. And you had this bizarre look on your face. Wow. Oh, my look God. Look at Steve. Steve is can't so even perplexed. speak. Steve no, I, know what this do. makes sense, though, because sometimes awesome. I'll see Kathy walking around, and she'll have a kettlebell suspended from her crotch. And I'm like, what's that? <laughs> okay, so. What's wait, that I, attached to? And she has another piercing. Let's unpack this here for a moment. Yeah. Okay, so okay. I can explain. <laughs> number one, you're deathly afraid of needles. Yes. Anything that has to do with that. Number two, you're so pristine when it comes to anything. That she has, has a perfect to, vagina. To do well, but by pristine I mean uh, no the, tattoos, uh, like uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Unblemished, and, and, and unblemished. And also yeah. no uh, no touching any. No. Any even remotely yep. no. sexual yeah, areas, <laughs> naughty areas of the naughty. body. Well, you've been Do- scarred by your mother. Let me sit down here. I know. Okay, sit down, and okay. I'll tell you the story. I want to There's got to be a catch here. <laughs> Fan no him. Catch. Fan yes. him. Please. <laughs> There's a catch here. There's got to be a catch. <laughs> All right. How long ago? Uh, okay, so. Last week. <laughs> no, let me think about this. Okay, I think it was. It was college. Yeah, I was in college. It had to be. Somebody it had was- to have been kidnapped, and like this was the only way to get them released. Well, I was trying to think if it was after college, but but it wasn't. Like a so, spring break thing? Uh, no, so it was in college. Uh, I had a very good friend from high school uh, turned stripper, turned she was getting things pierced. Okay. Um, and so I, and by the way, she hid from me that she was a stripper for a long time. So I didn't know she was a stripper, but she was. Uh, anyway, so she was going to get something pierced. Now, I grew up, my mom always taught me, do not get a tattoo. In 10 years, you're not going to like it. You're going right. to pick something today, and you're never going to like it. And so that stuck with me. What she was okay with, now I don't think she knew I got my nipple pierced, but what she was okay with was piercings because you could always take them out. Right, exactly. So, back, yeah. yeah, so I had piercings all the way up my ear, you know, okay. cartilage, all of right. that. Yeah. I had my belly button pierced. And I didn't know that either. So at this point, then there was like, well, what else do I get pierced? My my friend was going to get a piercing. I forget which. I, she was getting her nose done. I didn't want to get my nose done no. uh, because, I, you know, I have terrible allergies. I'm like, that thing's going to go flying when I blow my nose. So uh, we were just there, and she was like, just do it, just do it. So she basically convinced me and I was like I don't know I don't know if I can do this um so I was it a dude who did it it was a guy who did it um we went to like a place in we were in New Hope so it was like a piercing place it wasn't like some corner store I felt comfortable it was very like uh you know doctor-esque the room was set up 
Um, so I did it. I got my nipple pierced. You were drinking beers? My, no, listen. It was terrible. It was an awful, awful experience. My body rejected it. Oh. It never, like, healed ever. It was, like, a massive infection. Wow. And, yeah, and my boyfriend at the time was fine. He was finally like, what are you doing? Just take it out. It's not going to, because I thought I went through all of this. Yeah. Like, I had a needle go through my nipple. Like, help wow. me here. Are you? I, I, so I didn't want to take it out because I went through all of that. It was wow. terrible. It was terrible pain uh-huh. when he did it afterwards like it was awful so i did not have it very long and i ended up taking it out was so, the, was the intention to get both of them done initially and then you no, stopped after one just one i was just getting one you seem more like a completist see what <laughs> what was happened a stud, a, a, a a it was a ring it was a ring a yeah ring. Okay. it was a ring you had right. to, and but i mean it it was terrible it was so bad it was so infected i had to put like a gauze pad in my bra because it was infected oh, and yeah. no it was disgusting it was awful yeah so so that's horrible that's disgusting awful. I, I have to imagine did you at least become woozy during any of these piercings when you're as needle phobic as you are so the thing with needles and me is if i, I can't look at it I, that's every time right. i have passed out because of it i have i watched it so i watched jace getting stitches i watched the needle go through his chin right. i saw the skin pull right and i was like that was it i was out so each time time it was i was watching it so this obviously i didn't watch i closed my eyes turned my head held my stripper friend's right. hand held and your nipple out put my nipple out and there we that go that was it and did do you do you have scarring to this um, day from so it? yes there's like a tiny you wouldn't know here i'll show you come, so here, you, come on <laughs> let us decide so we're we'll trying to pick the one out uh, when you, you, you wouldn't know it, it, it is a tiny little like spot yes i can see it it's on one side but if you like if you guys were sucking on my nipples you would never you yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, leave it to Kathy to make a story like that unsexy. <laughs> wow. So, I don't know. It was pretty sexy. It started off sexy, and then the infection and the right? gauze. Yes. How many days or weeks did it last? Um, it was in a couple of weeks. Like I, like I said, I tried. I and I was, you know, I went wow. back to the guy. He was like, here, gave me, you know, cleaning and this and that and whatever. And it just, like, literally, my body you, was rejecting it. Is that why you're? nipple uh, whistles now and then? <laughs> Every once hey, in a while. Um, like, <laughs> did your mom find out about this right now as well? Probably, oh yeah. I think God. she probably found yeah, out She's now. on the roof ready to swan dive into the parking lot. So how long total do you think you actually had it in? Uh, Nick, probably like maybe like a month okay. or something, and it just was not getting better. And, and always painful uh, all the time. Uh, it was so painful the entire time. It never healed. It was always painful. Was, did removing it hurt, or was uh, it yes. really? Oh, really? No. Oh, hurt. I re- and I remember, too, I was in the bathroom uh, at my boyfriend's house in college. You know, it hurts so bad. No, well, you know, like, college bathrooms was disgusting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, so yeah. gross. And I was up there with my friend, and, and she was like, that's it. We're taking it out. And we just, yeah. Because remember the, um, the old pierce or what they used to use i don't want to know what they use now but it had little balls on the end so you had to screw the the ball off so that you could take right. the the um hoop off yep. so it was like the whole thing was just painful oh. it was oh awful my god um all right so the actual act of having it pierced because i i don't i couldn't do it it just seems like it would be so painful it was awful it was okay. so painful what did they use like ice or people what? who people who say like oh no wasn't that bad? No, it was yeah. bad. It's, it's one of the more sensitive spots on your body. Yeah. I mean, you know. It's yeah. Everything. Yeah. So sensitive. Um, well, so, and listen, here's the thing. Oh, God. Here's more Here's more info. Uh, my vaginal piercing. No, no, no. No, I never did that. But I don't have very... <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying. I don't have very sensitive nipples, yeah. so I thought, oh, okay, I can do this. Yeah, you know right. what I mean? Like I'm not like yeah. the girls who are super sensitive yeah. and are always nipping through their shirts. I've got right. tough as leather that. nipples. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah. not so much. So not when true. when it was happening, did they get like browner or or pinker or? <laughs> <laughs> You. Somebody no, says, I "Call the guy say, in New Hope; yeah, he'll be able to answer the question." On. But I will say, uh huh. I well, he so uh, they would take pictures of all of their piercings, and I was like, "Oh hell no! <laughs> like, you cannot have a picture of my boob." <laughs> I am wow. floored right now. I am, I am too, am man. So yeah. floored. Well, we all remember uh, Marissa's tongue piercing. Yeah. Remember when she removed, oh, yeah. removed that manually at home, I used to have the audio. Yeah, they, of that. With the audio of that getting clipped off. Now that. 
when you when you initially got that piercing done, Marissa, that, oh. how could that not hurt? Because uh, I was on spring break and it didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> no. right. But did I ever tell you guys a story about when I came home and my mom saw it? No. So it was Easter dinner. Um, mm. at first, I should say, as soon as I sat up, I like, or as soon as I got a pierce, I sat up and I went, Ugh. My mom's going, no, I feel my tongue pierced because my tongue just swelled up and I couldn't eat for a few days. So it was Easter dinner. We're all sitting around the table, um, like an Italian table. So like, you know, we're talking and laughing like two hours after dinner. And at one point, I just opened my, mil- my mouth really wide to, to laugh at something. And the whole t- <laughs> table's laughing and my mom just stops. Oh, no. oh daggers. Oh, and boy. she goes, what's that? And the entire rest of the table starts cracking up laughing because they have saw it hours ago. You know, right. my mom was probably cooking dinner and she didn't notice. So my mom, like, collects herself for a minute and she goes, oh, okay, all right, all right, and starts laughing with it. And then she goes, well, at least I knew about the other one. And everybody laughs more. My dad goes, wait, what oh other God. one? <laughs> Before I do my intro, okay. can can you hear me, Amy? Yeah. Can hey! hey! She's here! <laughs> Amy! Oh, my God, I'm sorry. All right, well, I, no, no, it's all right. I just, I like to always to do a nice big intro, so let me do that now. Ladies and gentlemen. All right, thanks, Kath. Uh, by the way, going up to, like, 55, I should say, not going up to 55. It's It was at 55 degrees. It is now, as the day goes on, we're going to be cooling off. Uh, so we topped out at 55 already, but by the time we get to, like, 2, 3 o'clock this afternoon, it's going to be about 50 degrees, um, and we might get some rain. It's looking kind of crappy out right now. It does now. look crappy, but it's tomorrow... It's windy, too. W- originally, Saturday was supposed to be sort of rained out, and that's not the case anymore. No, partly cloudy, 40 degrees, sunshine on Sunday, high of about 45, so that's where we stand with the weather. Uh, it is a Friday, and one of the things we do have to do is clean out the junk drawer. The Preston and Steve junk drawer fills up very quickly, and I want to go in and see what I can find. All right. Oh, it's full today. It is. It's shock full. Uh, I, this was very interesting, and I just uh, put this in the junk drawer this morning. Uh, research conducted in the United Kingdom oh, among uh, it says among over 3 million participants, they found that people who score highly on psychopath tests yes. <laughs> favor rap and heavy metal music. Ah. And they give some examples. The least uh, psychopathic... Uh, preferred classical music and jazz, bucking the tropes set by Hannibal Lecter because he was obviously a big classical music He fan. was, yes. Uh, but researchers at New York University looked at specific songs, testing 200 people for 260 different songs. Uh, they found that people who scored highest on psychopath tests rated songs like No Diggity <laughs> and Lose Yourself by Eminem more highly. Yeah. Which is funny because I I like both of those songs yeah. a lot, and uh, they're high on the psychopath scale. Uh, the researchers believe that uh, songs could help predict those with the disorder, which affects about one percent of people in the country. Do you like Eminem? You're a psychopath. I, I, I well, I like "Lose Yourself." I love yeah, that it's a great song. song. It's one of my favorites. I would think something. I guess well, my perceptions are probably incorrect. Something a bit more kinetic. Like I, I think like maybe thrash metal or something like that. Well, yeah. that's in there too. Yeah, it yeah. says heavy metal for sure. But um, I mean, this this song is tension building yeah. and, and definitely uh, kinetic and, and is kind of explosive when it really gets to the chorus. But uh, the, they said the the lead researcher said the beauty of this idea is you can use it as a screening test without consent, cooperation, or maybe even the knowledge of the people involved. <laughs> Uh, but they said in the article, to be fair to researchers, they predicted this uh, not realize, not releasing other songs which were better predictors of psychopathy. Okay. Uh, the scientists declined to name these songs for fear of disrupting further research. So if you have a party, put one of these on, and if one of your party guests kills another one, then they're, they're the know. psychopath. They're yeah. the psychopath. <laughs> yeah, you know who does, who's not a psychopath? People who listen to Bob Seger. Uh, mm-hmm. That's right. true. Yeah. Uh, by the way, the least psychopathic study participants were more likely to be fans of My Sharona by The Knack and Titanium by Sia. Uh, and I love both of those songs, too. All right. Then, yeah, well, you're very complicated. Yeah. You're like an onion. You have I many guess, layers. I guess that's what it yeah. is. I don't yeah, really there's know. Your psychopathic side and your very provincial side. But obviously, this is a uh, subjective uh, thing. Written you by know, a psychopath. We like all <laughs> kinds of music. Everybody likes you know all kinds like? of music. Yeah. I like everything. <laughs> and I like see it. It's good stuff, man. Uh, I made love to my mother. What? What? But, Did I say that? Wow. Okay. 
Uh, here we have another junk door dive to do. So we've already seen this in New Jersey, but Walmart and other big retailers are phasing out their use of plastic carryout bags and single-use paper in their stores in some cities and states due to local regulations and pressure from environmentally conscious customers. It's funny because you go, you'll go like a, two towns over. Like we, we did the video we did yesterday in the Wawa. They yeah. had plastic bags. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm all for this, but I always forget to bring the bags with me. I should just leave them in the back of my car, but I don't. Yeah. I have, I, yeah. Casey, I have a quarter of a million dollars uh -huh. worth of Wawa bags. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we weren't in New Jersey yesterday, though. I know, but I'm saying we. Oh, if we if we, if we just moved over, yeah, move yeah, over yeah, state yeah. lines, yeah. Then you have uh, then you can't you no bags, yeah. period. You got to yeah. you got to bring your own, or you can buy them. I think not plastic. No plastic, plastic yeah. in the city, right? But plastic. Well, I was just gonna say, right, yeah, yeah, the city is right. is no plastic because yeah. like right here, the Target right here, you get like a, a little reusable bag, but then the one that I go to, you know, Plymouth Meeting, they're plastic bags. Rochelle's great about the bag thing. Is she? Every time we go in, I completely forget. I one hundred. 100%, totally forget, even when in New Jersey, mm -hmm. that that is the case. And, but uh, she takes them everywhere, anywhere okay. we go, which is good. It's a good idea. I mean, right. I, I try to, though, with the plastic bags, get multiple uses out of them. Yes, uh, I do as well. We, uh, you use them for kitty litter. Well, we used to use them for kitty litter. I did. Yeah. And and uh, I, you know what I use them for? Uh, storing uh, Christmas lights. So each light, oh. I don't want all other lights getting tangled with each other. Oh, that's smart. Uh, so I wrap them up uh, in a way that uh, that doesn't cause tangles, and then I use a little zip tie, and then I throw them into like a a, a plastic grocery bag. I will use and them. And they store them all year like that. I'll pour unused motor oil into them and then throw them in the woods. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to do my part. Yeah, that's yeah. how you're supposed to do it. I like I, to put them in the fireplace. <laughs> they, uh, <laughs> Casey, when it comes to the grocery bags, the reusable grocery bags, I, I have to have a system in order to remember it. But I, I unload all the groceries and then i leave those bags by the back door and then when i go out the back door i just put them right back in the car Smart. so yep. they're in the trunk every time the best thing to do nick is to is to leave it on the door so you don't forget it forget it and then buy a new bag <laughs> yeah uh -huh. that's what you need to do what does this person say uh let's see this plastic bag ban is such a crock all they're doing is increasing profits by selling reusable bags well, that'd be true for me or they're trying to help out in the environment yeah uh, or both <laughs> walmart <laughs> or yeah both, yes listen yeah. or both sure uh, Walmart vows to achieve a zero waste goal in all of its stores by 2025. So they're jumping in on that and uh, trying to make that happen. Well, they're the, listen, they're trying to do, you mentioned yesterday, that cellulose product, right? It'd be a biodegradable bag. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see what else we got. Um, this one, this one was a handwritten note I threw in the junk drawer. Uh, and it's something that Steve had mentioned to me. And it has to do with uh, famed actor John Barry Moore's Final resting place. John Barrymore, legendary, legendary actor. You know, Drew Barrymore is in that family. Grandfather, right? Right, right. Yeah. And, uh, in fact, Drew is named after, the name Drew comes from some sort of riff on one of the, the family members' names. But, uh, yeah, this blew my mind when I saw this, Preston. Yeah, so I don't know the story. You, you uh... So it's basically a cemetery, and it's, it's in Philadelphia, and it's apparently very overgrown and not tended to at all. And acting legend John Barrymore... Is is buried there, right? And and it, but the cemetery looks horrible. Like huh. it looks like, you know, like you'd be walking through the woods and find it. And uh, some some people have suggested that they're they're now trying to turn it around and make it better. But there are apparently a number of fairly notable people buried in this overrun in this particular cemetery? cemetery. Yes. Okay. Wow. Nick, do you have it? It's the Mount Vernon Cemetery. Okay. And it's in Wesley High. Oh, it's in East Falls. Uh, and yeah, I don't know anything. Take a about look. Here's it. a picture of what the cemetery looks like, Preston. Oh wow! Oh, it's, it's a disaster. Very looking man. Does no one? Yeah, like who own it anymore? That's what I. I don't know. Whose responsibility is it? I know people. People were aware, but I was watching a, a, a video that where they they went into this and they were explaining just the basics, but they never quite determined whose responsibility. You've paid to have a loved one in that cemetery. Yeah, it or says, you assume you have. It says um, it was neglected for decades by an absentee landlord. Okay. You know what's interesting about cemeteries in general is that uh, I, I kind of view them differently than I did when I was younger because uh, I, uh, for me personally, I see no need of it anymore of, uh, you know, uh, of having a final resting place and because over time eventually eventually it's going to not really be of any interest right, to anyone right, yeah 
Uh, so therefore, the idea of uh, of cremation and and keeping ashes, or maybe scattering those ashes, yeah. and then just having it having that person uh, in the memory of the loved ones, and eventually that's going to go away too. You know what I you mean? You know what's it, funny though? You're going to generationally, it's going to age out. You'll go on vacation and you'll go check memorial sites. You'll go you'll go to bury you'll go to like yeah. we talk about Egypt and the, the Valley of the Kings, right? And all that. So that I agree. I don't want to eat up turf with my rotting body. I want to uh, cremate <laughs> me. Uh, you know, I'm I'm fine with that. I get other people want something, whatever it is, whatever your your taste. But uh, in the in the end, um, you know, this is the ultimate because you're supposed to supposed to be a place where people are going to come and visit, and you know, and it's horrible. It's, it, it's, re- but religion it's is gonna, is the reason why it's going to yeah. live on. What's that? Cemeteries. Religion is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when it comes to dying, my dad is really meticulous. He has. He's embracing that fact that he's going to die at some point, oh, and he's geez. prepared for it. Well, it's not morbid, actually. I think that we're all going to die. It's and so to the approach, wise thing to do. To approach it in a way that he's like, at some point, I'm not going to be around anymore. And so I I, I appreciate his, um, his perspective on it. Uh, he sent me and my brothers the other day a very specific article about where you can spread ashes in the state of Colorado. Oh. And there are rules and regulations. Sometimes people just, you know, they'll take them to a ballpark yeah. and or they'll take them to, you know, uh, someplace that's memorable to them. But it's memorable to a lot of people. And uh, sometimes people are spreading ashes in areas where it's illegal and they just don't know about it. So he wanted us to be prepared about it. What's an idea of where it's illegal? National parks, you're supposed to get um, permission. So you're supposed to go to, like, the Department of Interior or to that particular park. I mean, technically it's mortal remains, you know. Yeah. yeah. Preston, but, you know, it's so easy to just go over Sure, of course. Go over the turn, tape it over, no one's going to know. Now, if you want to spread them on a person, (laughs) right? like, he probably wants them on Tony Danza. (laughs) No, no, no. (laughs) He wants Tony Danza to snort his ashes. Yeah. Um, but uh, when it comes to people, you have to there. You have to be um, like twelve feet away yeah. from a person before you, you literally get a, cast a big a Lebowski wind. moment. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So do they when they um, cremate you? Do they cremate you naked? That's a good question. I've heard uh, I've heard both sides that they will uh, take the the body, if, especially if you had a viewing or, or something like right. that, and they will uh, they will just burn them with the clothes on. But I, I don't know. Okay, I'm just cracking up. There's a great bit, and I, I uh, you should you should uh, probably what's this series? I always get the title. I wrong. think you should leave. I think you should leave. Uh, there's this series, supposedly it's a reality series called Coffin Flop. Yeah, and it's the one of the funniest damn things I've ever seen. The basic concept is is that this is a reality show that shows you all the times that the bottom of the coffin fell out and the body fell out. <laughs> it, it's too elaborate to talk, but they took the time to do a video of all these different things happening. Right, uh, and it's just hilarious. But I, I'm, I'm putting in mind of that when you you know you, when you talk about anything having to do with uh, cemeteries and cremation and all that stuff. Well, I just I, I wonder because if like you have. Have, uh, you're going to be sharing ashes, right, with family members. Like, if somebody's not like, what if you're like, what you if you actually... get just clothes? Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, th- that by the way, that it has happened. Matter. There's there have been uh, bizarre file stories that have focused in on they've just burned empty boxes. Sure. They haven't done the bodies, or they they don't do any of the the, the preparation that you're supposed to do. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'd rather do that though than just have a a a, a plot of land that's now unusable. Mm. And I don't, I don't uh, disparage anybody who does want to no. do that. Yeah, it's just yeah, not for me. Yeah, yeah I, exactly. Same, same thing. I, I, I uh, think as well. So, uh, but anyhow, uh, yeah. So I was curious. Uh, Nick had pulled up. Did, can you pull up that list of other people notables? Uh, oh Nick, yeah, the Mount Vernon uh, that were in that cemetery. So besides John Bo- Barrymore, by the way, is at the top of the list, of course. Uh, and then I don't recognize any other names. Uh, Maurice Barrymore. Who's also an actor? So a number of members of the Barrymore family. Uh, then you have Civil War uh, veterans. Uh, Georgina Drew was a stage actress and comedian, but she died in 1893. A lot of members of the Drew family, whoever they were. Okay, yeah, and they were. They that's were all probably actors. where. Maybe that's where Drew got her name. Uh, uh, Drew Barrymore. Maybe those were John Drew, Louisa Drew, uh, Sydney Drew. Yeah, it was a bunch of them. Sydney Lou Drew. Sydney yeah. Lou Drew on the Waldo Drew. Uh, let's see, Andrew's professional baseball player, died in 1913, Charlie Householder. So, yeah, there's some... Chippadiah Hernandez. William Churchill Houston, <laughs> who was a New Jersey delegate to the Continental Congress, died in 1788. So, have, they go, have, these go way back. Have you ever walked around, uh, you know, s- some of the cemeteries around here? No. Just, no. Uh, yeah. Not it, around it's, here. It's no. pretty amazing. Yeah? I mean, I mean uh, the ones... Of... Uh, uh, there's there a couple of the really old ones in the city. Yeah, I have, yeah. But, I mean... 
a, a lot of those uh, headstones have all worn clean. You can't right. see who was buried there, you know, so, but... Um, yeah, that's, that's why you're supposed to write your own names. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're supposed I to do? I guess okay. he's buried here. All right, let's go somewhere else. All let's right. go back into the drawer, if you will. Uh, a man and woman, uh, Phil and Jen Tompkins, created uh, a an establishment called Rent the Chicken on their homestead outside of Pittsburgh. What would you expect to pay to rent a chicken? Yeah. Uh, and Prices have never been lower. Phil said, Air to be in chicken. Phil said, I Googled uh, crazy business ideas. He said he ran across a website for a business outside Birmingham, Alabama that was renting out chickens. And I said, hey, hon, what do you think? We got some chickens. You want to rent them out? You're the, a moron! The first year of the business was a soft launch, and in 2014, they rented out 54 coops with two chickens. Uh, each of them had two chickens. He said, we've evolved, we've changed, we've grown. Now we rent out two or four egg-laying hens. Another expansion began with a sparked interest from a neighbor's teenage nephew. He was visiting his aunt, Phil remembered. He walked out to our homestead and saw some chicken coops out there and talked to my wife a little bit, and then... We received a call a little later from him asking how he could get involved. And Phil and Jen agreed to offer sales and support for him to start his own Rent the Chicken in New Jersey. Hi, this is Gene Simmons. You are heroes of mine. <laughs> Renting chickens is wonderful. Ronaldo. <laughs> Stefan. Uh, so people... Share. <laughs> Uh, Phil said people were calling from all over the region wanting chickens, so we already knew there was a demand there, and he became our first affiliate. All right, I'm going to uh, say this, and, and it's something that I freely admit that I am a moron for because I've never quite grasped, and it's been explained to me, and I keep forgetting how, how it works out. The process of cultivating eggs mm -hmm. from a chicken. Yes. <laughs> uh how do you promote that? In other words, these chickens are laying the eggs, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and they seem to do it very regularly. One a day, usually. Yep. Right. Yeah. How uh, How is that is that process? Um, uh, how do you get them to lay the eggs? Right. They just find you a fine spot. Yeah. So, um, what I mean, I was... is, 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 is that their natural inclination to promote, the, is to produce that many eggs? Yeah. And, but the, 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 idea, the thing is, is, so my neighbors had uh, chickens when we were growing up, and they had a little hen house. And some of the chickens would lay the the eggs in the ha and then other ones would just kind of like find a little spot in the Here. Uh, in the yard. Here's a, here's an evolution of a, of a chicken, uh, of a hen, uh, creating and laying an egg. Uh, after about a half hour of this of the day, I guess it begins. A yolk is uh, released into the oviduct. Three hours later, an egg white forms around the yolk and grows. Uh, at an hour, shell membranes are added and the egg shape is formed. After 20 hours, the shell is formed in, amazing. in the shell gland and then uh, <laughs> bloom added, it says, and egg emerges. I don't know what bloom added means. That's crazy that they can do it Preston, that quickly. To have an egg. Yeah. I mean, could Created you imagine? Nothing. Yeah, if you crapped a wiffle ball every day, yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's astonishing. Yeah. And yeah. I know it's been a joke of milk for a long, long time, but the first person to eat, look at an egg and say, I can eat this, right? You know, like it was a hero bun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, the, the fact that, they, and they will produce as many as they do. Yeah. By the way, uh, now Phil said their business has expanded to 24 states, uh, Washington D.C., and even areas of Canada. So that's 10 years later, and they've been doing it. They've made a career out. So of it. people are renting. They're renting these chickens for egg production, correct? Yeah. All right. Wow. Hang on a second. Oh, uh, is this your friend, Nick, Katie? Yes, uh, a horse slash chicken expert. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hi, Katie. Hi, guys. Daily Bilotti. <laughs> Daily Bilotti. Nice to talk to you. What's up, Katie? This is brilliant. These people are brilliant. Yeah. So it is a lot of money to get started, like to buy the coop, to buy everything. Um, the biggest thing that I'm thinking of is chickens only lay eggs for a certain number of years. Okay. When your sweet little rosemary chicken is done laying eggs... If you're not a farmer, then you've got this chicken that you're taking care of for the next however many years. So how many how many how many years in an average chicken's life will it produce eggs? Uh, just a couple of years, not so not very many years, okay. two three maybe four if you're lucky. We've had a couple of chickens last eight nine years, but it's like chickens usually do like one egg a day. Right now, mine are on strike because it's too cold, and they're like, "Screw you! I'm not laying oh. eggs in the cold." Wow. I mean, you um, could. It, it depends on what your uh, uh, your ethics are, but you could uh, yeah. you could eat that chicken after the absolutely. The, the eggs a lot. Yeah. I have 
I have a good girlfriend that she said, you know what, it's been a week and, you know, Joni here hasn't laid any eggs. Oh, Off she goes. named it. Cold. That's <gasps> cold. <laughs> so, like, like I, I, I could, I, I know so many people who have raised chickens and, and are, and, and, uh, okay, we're going to try it for this, for the eggs, and get the eggs, and then they become like pets. Yeah. And the yeah. notion they of, them. they love them to yeah. death, and the uh, the notion of doing that just, and they, they, they sort of give up chicken in general. They'll stick with the eggs, but they won't do chicken. Mm. Yep, and honestly, chickens, I've learned more. I have chickens at work. I've learned more about chickens than I've never wanted to know. <laughs> I can't tell you how many chickens I've taken to the vet. They are horrible to each other. They, like, they peck each other. They, like, I had one that they, like, the gloved the neck, and I had to take it for surgery. Oh, I mean, my God. Insane. Are they, uh, do you, do you notice different personalities in them? Do you notice, uh, because, um, you know, a friend of the show has, you know, started raising chickens a couple of years ago and says, they're very, they're very affectionate to her, and and uh, they they 100%, react. Hundred percent. Yeah, really. Some of them are some of them are real sweet. Some of them are bastards. Some of them are like they like they don't want nothing to do with you. One of them like yells at me when I'm late <laughs> coming to the coop with her with her <laughs> with her meal. I mean, it's it's insane. And we accidentally got a we accidentally got a rooster when we when we got the chickens. We were oh. supposed to not have any roosters and only hens, but we ended up with one rooster and. I've never run so fast in my life when that thing came at me. Sure. They are so nasty. Yeah. So yes, it's it is it's quite an endeavor, and I think this is a brilliant business idea because then it's like you hand it back when you're done with it. You say thank you very much. We're done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that yeah. is a good idea. Yeah. Like the eggs that we have are the most expensive eggs on the planet. The amount of money that it costs to keep these chickens happy <laughs> and I mean, it's it's crazy. Wow. Do you sense that they're they're are they intelligent at all? They're smart. They're yes and no. They're smarter than you think. Like okay. they're they're definitely um, habit forming. So like the like if they hear me coming with a plastic bag, they come running because they know that it might have some lettuce in it. Um, <laughs> they're 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 I don't know. They're pretty interesting animals. They sound it. Yeah. They sound yeah. like it's a lot of work though. I, my yeah. friends got chickens specifically, Steve, just to do their taxes. Yeah, man, they're, yeah. they're very smart. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Katie. Thank you for the info. Have a good weekend, guys. All right, you too. We'll see you later. Well, okay. Well, if you want to, it's called Rent the Chicken. Rent the Chicken. And they're definitely... Toad in, the Wet Sprocket. In, <laughs> good band. I like that. I like the band. And the winner is Rent the Chicken. Beating out Toad the Wet Sprocket. Walk on the ocean. <laughs> ah, I found something else. Oh, it's Bill Weston in the junk drawer. What are you doing in here, Bill? Uh, Santa's got to go. Oh, wow. <laughs> Uh, so, Planters Peanuts knows, uh, or known for its Mr. Peanut mascot, recently posted a job listing for three Planters brand Peanutters. They will travel around the country in the Nutmobile. Okay. I think we know somebody I, who's perfect for this job. We do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Peanut. Yes, we do. <laughs> uh, the 26-long, foot-long Peanut, uh, they will drive that, and they will work for a year beginning in June. Uh, potential Peanutters. Uh, have until February 14th to apply. And they're looking for recent college graduates with a knack for nut puns uh, and encourage them to apply for this. Uh, what does it so, pay? Well, that's a good question, Steve. It doesn't indicate that in this. Ah. But the Nutmobile is pretty awesome looking, man. We're, uh, we're watching a video of it right now. It looks like the interior looks like it's got, uh, uh, you know, commercial aircraft seats and stuff like that. Aren't the controls kind of different, uh, the, the steering controls? I don't know. Huh. I don't know. Uh, I know. I remember re we, we went into an extensive uh, story about the Wienermobile, uh, the, the Oscar Mayer uh, Wienermobile and what kind of a vehicle that was that they repurposed. Oh, my God, there's yeah. a video. No way. <laughs> oh, my God. Nick just pulled this up on Instagram. They're driving in the Nutmobile and coming the other way on a highway is the Oscar Mayer Wiener <laughs> Wienermobile. That's crazy. And they're waving to each other. That's hilarious. They say, we love this crossover episode. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Uh, so how, how much fun was something like that? It'd be great if you have the time to do it. Yeah. If you have a, a thriving uh, you know, law firm that you're working at, you probably don't have the ability to do this. No, right. but like fresh out of college, yeah. I mean, you know, if you're looking for a job or you still have, uh, you know, not quite sure what your career is going to be, that'd be yeah. perfect. Or if marketing or PR or yeah. something like that is your angle, that is what a great resume uh you know addition that you were the not peanut ambassador nut driver uh for uh planters yeah so uh you need to apply by february 14th so i would check the planters website valentine's sure. day um preston would you be more inclined to eat peanuts that were already de-shelled in a bowl or shelled peanuts if they put them in front of you 
Like that you had to... Uh, the ones that are without the shell. Yeah, Really? Okay. Yeah. Why? Yeah. I mean, if you put a bowl of shelled peanuts in front of me and unshell and... and uh, the ones with the shells. <laughs> the non-shelled. Non I would go with the shelled ones. Why is that? I don't know. I just feel like they taste better. If someone would put a... Um, a um, let's say a burger, a cooked burger in front of you and a bison, oh. which would you eat first? Okay, is a bison alive? <laughs> yes. I'd or probably so go with they, the burger. So yeah. put a belt, a stick, and a wrench on the table <laughs> and said, pick one. That's from Goodwill Hunting. Yes, it is. What right. if your fingers were in that bowl for a long period of time and you kept <laughs> dipping those fingers yeah, in? Yeah, like for 15 minutes. Yeah, 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 like you saw somebody, yeah, 15 right. straight minutes, who kept going in <laughs> and putting their disgusting fingers in that bowl and then sticking it in their mouth. Right. I think that would, after a while... God knows where your fingers have been. Uh, that would get to you, so yeah. we don't have that audio? Yes, we do. You okay, just got to right, give right. me a second here, bro. All right, no problem. I'm sorry. Right, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. For 15 straight minutes, <laughs> I've been watching you putting your big fat f fingers into your disgusting mouth, which is filled with God knows what kind of f bacteria. And then you take the same big fat f filthy fingers <laughs> and you stuff them back into the bowl that is there for public consumption. What the f are you thinking, John? Well, I wasn't thinking, Jimmy. I'm sorry. Just don't do it again. Uh, well, well, one, take it, Jimmy. One of <laughs> one of Johnny Depp's best roles. Oh, that's amazing. Black Mass. If you've never seen that movie. All right, let me see what else. More junk drawer stories. You just put your hands <laughs> in the junk drawer. All right. Uh, so, would you enter a room so quiet that you could hear your own blood flow? Uh, I'm, I'm not understanding. Is it capable? Yes. I, so I, there is a, uh, it's Microsoft's Echo Free Chambers located okay. in Washington State, and it is considered to be the quietest room in the world. I went into a room that at one point apparently was listed as this, that it was in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. It was at the Bell and Howe, I think it was. It was designed to be that? Designed to be a, a the quiet room. Okay. And you walked in, and um, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of freaky. Got to be weird. Everything seems amplified, and you're hearing it. To me, it's like that that first time I did the the sensory deprivation tank, mm -hmm. and I'm there and floating. I was hearing what appeared to be stuff happening in my own body. Right, it's very weird. Right, you've done those hearing tests. You know, you have you been to the uh, you know the audiologist? Or... Yeah, those are, those are dead rooms. Those are dead dead rooms. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the chamber is useful for testing audio equipment. It is made of six layers of steel and concrete. And once inside, you may be able to hear your own breathing, your bones moving, and your oh. blood flowing, or even your heart valves. That would working. freak me out. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever laid your head on someone's stomach? Yeah. Yes. Put your ear on their stomach? There's a lot of funky noises going on all the time. Uh -huh. I remember being, you know, with a girlfriend or whatever yeah. and just laying in bed and, and laying my head on their stomach and just hearing... <laughs> all this stuff that is constantly going on. Uh, and you can also take... Have you ever... <laughs> uh, and, or... or <laughs> Have you ever taken a stethoscope and listened to a few different yeah. things on your own body? Because you can listen to your stomach. I got a stethoscope as a, uh, a as a uh, as like a toy one year. I wanted, I just wanted one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. There's a lot of noises going on in the body. Some visitors reported feeling disturbed in this room, and also a sense of fullness or dizziness as well. But I'm totally engorged. It is considered the quietest room in the world. Yeah, and it is disorienting. Have you spent, you've done cave stuff, right, where you go in, in, in like pitch black dark caves and yeah. still turn off the lights? Yeah. Oh, that's freaky. Yeah. I've been in a number, on a number of cave tours. Because you're right, generate. And they, and they do that in every yeah. single one. Right, they, right. They, they shut up, we're going to shut off all the lights now, and you literally, you, you can't, it's it's as pitch black as you can get. And you can't see anything. It's disturbing. Yes. It's, it's freaky. Yeah. All right, let's see what else we got. Yeah. All right, I found something. Uh, mental health support app, Coco. Coco. Apparently Coco. used um, OpenAI's GPT-3 to okay. counsel 4,000 people. It's an AI mental health support. I just heard of GTP-3 for the first time last night. 
I had n- never heard of it before. I don't know what it is. It's it's an AI and it's yes. it's going to take over. It's I right. Mean, it's the one that's writing stories and and yeah. Okay, then we did talk yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah, we chatted about that. Right, it, writing fan fiction and uh, a lot of times it'll say uh, they'll ask uh, it to render a like a drawing of what someone would look like as a cartoon figure or mm-hmm. yeah. It's crazy. Coco used a co-pilot approach, meaning real human beings were monitoring their responses that the AI gave, and the AI provided responses faster than a real human being, cutting the wait time to under a minute. Man, if you need your therapy fast, yeah, yeah, yeah. they got it for it you. They told me D's nuts. <laughs> um, however, people no longer wanted to talk to the AI once they realized it was not a human being. Yeah, of course. Uh, according to the uh, Coco's co-founder, Rob Morris, Coco's co-founder. Yeah. Uh, once uh, people learned the messages were uh, co-created by a machine, it didn't work. Uh, it's a, it simulated empathy. Uh, apparently, simulated empathy feels weird and empty to people. Uh, after receiving backlash regarding consent on social media, Morris clarified that the participants were himself and his team, and participants were informed when the Coco bot was involved. <laughs> yeah, someone comes in with serious problems, and I'm talking to a can opener. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. <laughs> They're trying to dabble in into areas like that as well with AI to see if it's viable or not. Well, so you know, obviously AI has um, some scary elements to it, as do the Boston Dynamic robots. Yes, they do. But I did see a video yesterday of the Boston Dynamics robots uh, dancing. Did you see this? I've seen synchronized dancing. I don't oh, know if it's the man. same one. This one was great. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, it was because these two robots were dancing together, and then like one of those like dog robots came in and he was dancing as well. <laughs> I was like, all right, these these robots. Robots are, are good. good. Yeah. yeah. Dancing robots, yes. Not the ones with the machine guns and the orders to kill. Right. All right. Uh, Let's see. Let's go back in. All right. Here's one. Uh, The Korean War Veterans Memorial, Wall of Remembrance, found on the National Mall, which, by the way, the Korean War Memorial. I love it. Is, it could be my favorite one in D.C. It's very, for some, it's just very emotional. Um, Yeah, these these really large uh, statues of soldiers in the field, um... It's it's it gives you a, a really interesting sensation when you're among them, uh, and and taking a look at them, and then of course they have the wall uh, with these etched in uh, uh, photos of people's yeah. faces, which are pretty amazing. But they also have a one that a part of it that opened last summer. It's a black granite tribute near the Lincoln Memorial, and it's etched with the names of thousands of soldiers. Uh, who made the ultimate sacrifice. So it's similar to the The Vietnam Vietnam War Memorial. which is uh, uh, very emotional as well. Uh, But according to Hal and Ted Barker, two brothers who live in Dallas and run the Korean War Project, around 1,000 of the names on the memorial are misspelled and another 500 are missing. Uh, The Barker brothers run the Korean War Project from a two-bedroom apartment. According to Ted, they began learning about the Korean War to better understand their father, who was a Marine Corps pilot, uh, who served in the conflict, and they said their dad didn't speak about it much. Uh, so uh, they researched his past. Uh, they also collected thousands of stories and information over the years uh, from other service members, creating a database for families of veterans to reference. And they have uh, apparently throughout this uh, found out that there are tons, thousands of misspelled names mm. and hundreds more missing. Uh, and the National Park Service says it was paid uh, for by $22 million in donated funds, just the wall with the yeah, names alone. Yeah. Uh, in a statement, the Department of Defense says that the errors are a very unfortunate mistake, and they are working with the Department of Interior to correct it. They said we are also aware uh, that some names are on the wall of remembrance, which were not included on the department's final list of Korean War casualties. Uh, they said the respective military departments reviewed every name on the Korean War Casualty list for correctness against available official military records, though not common, the official records themselves may have contained errors, making this review challenging. There's, uh, it, it just blows you away every time you see it, but if you go to the that whole area, and specifically you mentioned the Vietnam Memorial, you'll see obviously friends or family of... Um, uh, n- member b- names on that wall taking the etching, you know, the, the, yeah. the it's just doing the etchings, yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, so they're going to try to uh fix that problem. One more, and then we're done. Uh, sitting up straight, not necessarily the best position for office workers, according to a study. How many times have you been told? About the posture situation, you got to sit up straight <laughs> mm-hmm. because it's the it's the best thing for you. But the way that that you should is kind of interesting, and you may not be it may not be 
work may not be the right place to sit like this. So Scottish and Canadian researchers used a new form of MRI to show in to show it places an unnecessary strain on your back sitting up straight. Uh, the best position in which to sit at your desk is leaning back at about 135 degrees. With your feet up. <laughs> yeah, That's the way I like to sit. <laughs> Unfortunately, me personally, when I sit here, when I spend most of the time, I'm hunched over. Yeah. I yeah. don't sit up straight, Same. but I'm hunched over. My yep. shoulders are down. Uh, but what I should be doing is hanging back like this. Yeah. How far back does it say? What's 135, 135 degrees. degrees. So you figure 90 is this. Right. right. So, okay. So maybe like yeah. that. You're, you're in the realm. Yeah. yeah. All right. We should just like do the it. show like yeah. this. Dude, yeah. I would, yeah. <laughs> if I could stuff. sit we, back, if it wasn't inconvenient to reach for things yeah. and find stuff, I would sit like this all the but time. You guys, I mean, is, we all have back issues. We could probably yeah. say we need, uh, like, lazy boys with uh, footstools and all that. I got to say studio. my back's pretty good. But, but um, uh, people have it, and, and it's a pernicious thing. <clears throat> could you see yourself sitting this way all day? Yeah. Totally. Yes. Yeah. Yes. When 100%. I, when, I, uh, when I game, that's my position. If I'm playing video games yeah, or something yeah, yeah. like that, that's how I sit. Do what you about sit back like that? Oh, when I'm comfortable and relaxing. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. Yes. In fact, we have a, a, a massage chair, you know, that does all that zero, uh, what it, position zero or whatever they call it. Uh, it. Yeah, that's that's always in that position. What position do you guys like to sit in when you're reading, like reading a book or a magazine or paper or whatever? <sighs> Asleep. Asleep? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably. Yeah, probably like uh, that. Like that? Yeah. yeah like lean, lean back. Lean back a little bit. Your arms do get tired. They get tired. Yeah. Well, I'm, I what I'll do is I'll take a um, a pillow or something like that and rest my arms up like okay. this so I'm not holding up like that. Mm -hmm. And I look down a little bit. So, I'll, I'll, But I will have something on my lap to raise my hands a little bit. One of the best places for me to read is actually in my bathroom because right in front of the toilet is a, is a shelf. Okay. And so I can just put the book up and go, oh, oh, I'm going to keep making poopies because this is a great chapter. <laughs> uh, so, yes, uh, they said that... Um, Experts said that uh, sitting was known to contribute to lower back pain, and the research was carried out at the Wooden Hospital in Aberdeen. Uh, they had volunteers, and they used a, a, what's called a positional MRI machine, which allows patients to freedom to move so they can uh, sit or stand during the test. And see what was causing the most pressure yes. on the system. And they took measurements of a spinal angle, spinal disc height, and all that stuff. Uh, disc movement was... Semen production. Uh, well, I don't know about that. A uh, disc movement was found to be most pronounced with a 90-degree upright sitting posture. Um, and it was least pronounced with the 135-degree posture. There you go. So, so recliners for everyone. So really, you should be... The slouch position revealed a reduction in spinal disc height, uh, signifying a high rate of wear and tear on the lowest two spinal levels. So you shouldn't slouch either, which is what I do, unfortunately. You need to kick back. Uh, but researchers said the 135-degree position was the best for backs and say that this is how people should sit. If you were to <laughs> slide under the counter more, if you could slide completely. If they right here? Their, yeah, and just keep yeah. leaning back so I, you could I, reach everything. I could do that, but the uh, the oh, arms no. on yeah. the... There, there, there's also a keyboard underneath there, or at least there used to be. Yeah, and now anyway. it's yeah, uh, on your nuts. I'll work on it. All right, and there you go. That's uh, all we have time for in... Young drawer... We have to wrap things up at this point in time. You just stop talking and listen to me. All right, thank you, Bill. All right, we're going to break. We're going to come back, and we have some more Bizarre File stories to share with you, so we hope you're going to stay close. Back in a moment. Preston and Steve on 93.3 WMMR. Hello. How are you? <laughs> Good. Thanks Excellent. for having me. Oh, are you kidding me? It's it's great. Listen, we had just played uh, Better Without You. Uh, so oh, re leading right into this, and of course, it's obviously it's on the album uh, The Bitter Truth, which is finally uh, <laughs> yeah. out. And and I wanted to ask you about that because you were you were talking about this album. I mean, was it done already like in 2019? I mean, in the can and ready to go or close to it? No, no, not at all. Oh, okay. um, we really wrote most of it last year. Yeah, okay. during everything. All right, then I, I had read that you had you had you asked you wanted people to hear it at that point, so I read something incorrect. Huh, oddly enough, there was some misinformation that I found on the web. <laughs> um, <laughs> Weird. Yeah. Well, we we started it a while back. You know, we'd been working in bits and pieces through 2019. Um, in between tours, we just sort of started putting time aside when we were all together. We live all over the world. Um, all over the country, and now we have a member who lives in Germany, Jen, who we've been away from since wow. before the pandemic. She's been with us remotely on this thing since the first four songs, but we made it happen. Yeah. We really did. 
It, it's such a man. It, hallelujah. No, it, no, it's very cool. And, and honestly, it, it, the entire world has gone through a maelstrom of, of stuff, uh, you know, obviously with the the, the COVID and, and all that stuff. And then but you guys has, have also, all of you at some level, been dealing with personal crises. And, um, you know, here you are at this end of it, releasing music into the world, connecting with people and what you, you love doing. Is there just a big sigh of... It, you know, relief now that it's out there. I, I, I can't imagine what that process is like and what you're currently experiencing. It feels so good. Yeah. It really does. And for us, you know, it's not something we do every other year. It's something that is, you know, it comes out when it when it happens, when, when the inspiration hits and the time is right and everything lines up and we know what we want to do. So more than ever, it feels like a very special occasion for us and you know like you said having so much to get off of our chest personally and just feeling connected you know with the rest of this the world in this in this time of the last couple of years just strain and, and loss and frustration it feels so good to be in a rock band yeah. <laughs> pour all that out into the music i can't tell you how good it feels and now you know i'm such a i'm such a i don't know detail critic um always hearing all the little things i want to chip away and change to finally have it done and not be listening to that anymore and just to listen in my car and enjoy it it feels really really good okay i yeah. wanted to ask about that in particular so and and i would imagine all artists musicians maybe not all but some go through this where you have this final product you're very proud of it uh it it you know it's it's sat for a little while it's it's sunken in do you go back and go man i wish we would have done that <laughs> i wish i would have i wish i would have added this harmony i wish i would have tweaked this and that or are you okay that, with or is that just natural <laughs> that hasn't happened yet okay um I, I don't I don't think that about the new stuff. I really it's funny. I, I start I'm hearing so many little things when we're still when there's still the chance to change it. I'm hearing this and that and this and I don't know and maybe this and one more of this and we need more backer bubbles and all that. But then once it's done, um, finally stepping away, I'm like, I don't even remember all the details I was honing in on anymore. It just sounds great. Yeah, you know what? And and that's why I would probably I would be a lousy uh, producer or anything in that position because I'd all, you you constantly want to be changing and tweaking yeah. and, and and doing this and that. You had yeah. Nick uh, Rascalentis is, is your producer, one of the, the the best rock guy that there is to it. And, yes. And does he uh, tell me about your working with him and what that experience is like? He's he's the best. He's incredible, um, and that's part of what makes that happen he's he's very much in on the details like i am we um work really well together we don't always have the exact same idea it's good to have somebody who has different ideas and goes hey you know maybe you should try this one other thing but really it's so good to have somebody that you really trust who can say you know when you're like what's better a or b like right. this take or that one or like for me to go up here or go down here somebody who's just like a good sounding board of like dude it sounds great when you do it when you go up let's let's go for that that's you, know? you gotta have that all right i also wanted to ask you know steve had mentioned the fact that there was there's a lot of uh of uh uh there's a lot of message you're getting across uh, with this music. There's a lot of things happening. You mentioned a lot of tragedy. There's some good things too, but um, I, I wanted to ask you on a personal note. When, when I will, uh, I will sometimes listen to songs for years and have no idea what the artist was trying to, the message that they were trying to get through right. in this song. Now I may love the melody and the harmonies and the rhythm and all that stuff, and I like the song, but don't really know what it's about. Um, sure. <laughs> how do you feel about that? When you poured emotion, when you poured, you've written these lyrics, you're getting across a very specific theme that you want and people don't get it. Is that okay? It's totally okay. Okay. Um, honestly, I, I write in a way that is very cathartic for me. And in some of these songs, I, I hear what I'm saying. and I'm like, there's no way anybody can hear this other than exactly what I mean. <laughs> but there is. And something that's really beautiful about art and music is when people can take it and apply it to their own life for their own particular personal experience, what they're going through, and let it be that for them. Um, I think that's a beautiful thing. And it... it it's funny because I want to break down and explain as much as I can about our lyrics, kind of, but there's another part of me that 
doesn't because it's sort of better when you see what it turns into for somebody else. It's kind of more powerful that way. I've had songs that totally moved me and I didn't know <laughs> that they were about something for, for many, many years. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that's what that was about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, that, but therein lies the beauty of the subjective nature of, of music. But I, is, there's something, yeah. and I wonder if you agree with this, and I, I think it, it might in some way speak to why vinyl has become more popular again. The... the, the um, the, the, having album cover art and having an artist, I, I used to use when I would listen to music and listen to a, to an album, an actual record. I would look at the the art, and a lot of times, uh, you you had additional messages being conveyed through that. Yes, did, did that yeah. something you remember fondly and. Yeah, yeah, that's a cool thing, right? We don't have that anymore, yes. really. Yeah, yeah. That's always. Uh, yeah, we do. I I do that. <laughs> yeah, you know, I know you I, do. I, yeah, I yeah. Yeah, I, because I feel like that's what's so cool is you can have so many, there are so many different ways to express yourself um, and to make an image kind of have a deeper impact. That's why music videos are so cool, dude. We, we actually just just filmed our Better Without You video. It's going to be so cool um, in Minneapolis, actually. We road tripped it. I drove 13 hours in the car <laughs> with Troy and my girl Beth. Wow. Um, it was really fun. Uh, got cheese curds and everything. Uh, anyway. <laughs> When you can take, you know, something and go, okay, here's a visual also that sort of feels like the world that this is that this is living in. I don't know. That's a that is a huge part of it, whether it's album artwork or whatever. Yeah. Um, and we do that. We we almost always have some sort of like animal or insect or something that's like our secret spirit animal that goes with <laughs> the music for each era. This one's a nautilus. And to me, that spiral shape is has always been like a some kind of a symbol of like eternity, you know, like it keeps going until you can't see it anymore. And right. it makes me think about the future and the past and the soul and like the depths of things. So it just fits. And it's like, it doesn't have to be that anybody really knows that explanation, but it feels that way to me. Mm. So maybe it'll feel like that to somebody else on a subconscious level. Cool. Uh, uh, Amy Lee, I was actually uh, having a discussion over the weekend and, and your name was brought up as well as uh, Taylor Momsen, uh, Lizzie Hale and, and Dorothy. And it was because we were watching the pregame for the NCAA uh, Final Four, and they mm. had a giant Miley Cyrus concert. Now, so I, I don't want to knock Miley Cyrus at all, but she was, you know, for the masses, the female representation of rock music. And I and I was um, and I listened to her album, and I like he it. likes her a lot, I, and yeah. I do. And so so that's what I'm saying. I'm not knocking Miley, but I was like, right. I was a little bit perplexed on why they're having her represent rock and roll when she is not classically known as a rock artist. And I thought, man, Amy Lee would have been perfect for this. Lizzie Hale would have been perfect. Taylor Momsen, Dorothy, yeah. there had so many, you know, other, I thought better representations of rock music. And I wasn't sure what your thoughts were on her being a rock act now. And I'm not asking you to knock anything either. Yeah, and and again, without knocking her with you, mm -hmm. um, I, I I'm with you on that. I I feel like it has to do with the people in place that are putting those kind of productions together. They need yeah. to hire you guys. They need if yeah. there's if there's a place where you know rock music is going to be rep represented. There's so much rock music with millions of fans. Like rock is no way dead. Like right. it is full full alive. But we need people in in the positions of of power and placement to recognize and tap into that rock world instead of always trying to make it well what'll just get the most people, you know, that have heard this name before or whatever to 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 care about it. Um it, that just feels a little bit like a, a well, manufactured a, a business really. move, a corporate yeah, yeah, yeah. move. Yeah, yeah no, know? that's it's exactly like it. Get the numbers. But, yeah. That's always frustrating. It's cool to be the underdog, right. but at the same time, it's like, well, rock is real. You know, <laughs> there are people out there that like it. Give, give it a chance for sure. Yeah, yeah, but my wife did bring up the point that uh, she is, uh, you know, she's a different name out there. And so and maybe she is going to be that entree, right? Maybe somebody's going to watch her, listen to her and go, well, hang on a second. I like this style of music. And maybe right. somebody, a deeper dive. maybe somebody who wouldn't have known about Evanescence is now all totally. of a sudden introduced as a result of that. I was like, okay, well, that's a healthy perspective, I guess. Yeah, totally. You know, and in case you brought up the, you know, the, all the, all the, 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 the great female rockers that are, that are out there now. And, and I always kind of think of you, as um, you, for me and for us, I think here represented the turn where we were like, you know, we, we had obviously legendary voices in rock, but you 
represented this next wave that I think is still going on. Um, and and I, you were the flashpoint, I think. And and it seems like um, your, your your contemporaries, and I've read interviews with all of them where they they cite you as that step off point. That has to come with a bit of pride. That's really cool. It's you know it's so much cooler doing uh, all of this now, later on in life with the experience and the respect that comes along with you know, just doing it for a long time and um, surviving so much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's just it's 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 I would way rather be where I am now than where it, what it felt like when we were starting out. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's badass. It's incredible. You know, <laughs> there are so many people that came before me, you know, um, that have influenced me. So many rad women. It's not like I'm like this one pillar of rock. There have been women in rock from the beginning. Yeah, but you, um, but you had a you had a style which I kind of see as almost like dominatrix esque. <laughs> and let me let me explain <laughs> because they they incorporate pleasure and pain yeah and right. so the yeah. the instrumentation is the pain and your voice yeah. is the pleasure you have this smoothness mm. about you and then there's that raw edge of the music that Operatic. go together so i mean you know contrast yeah yeah, 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 yeah. contrast <laughs> so, you know on a visual audio whatever level i like to hear two really different things coming together to make that beautiful swirl and, yeah. and as I, I want to be the first one who has ever called you a dominatrix. Oh, Dio. Oh, Dio, man. That, that documentary about him is pretty great. You get a chance to see it. Yeah, I do want to see that. Uh, it is three minutes after Melissa, 10 o'clock. can you grab what's printed out on the computer? 10 o'clock, <laughs> you have to print up your yeah. uh, sponsor or traffic? Uh, both, because my computer likes to update in the middle of the show, and oh. for some reason, uh, Beasley won't fix that. <laughs> what they supposed to do at 943? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it said 9.43, but it went now at 10.04. Thank you, Marissa. <laughs> All right, well, here's your 9.43 traffic at 10.04. Kathy, what's going on? Oh, my God, and it's so tiny. Yeah, I, does someone up? have a no. magnifying glass? <laughs> no, no I can do it. 95 right, southbound is slow Cotman through to Bridge northbound. Columbus Boulevard to the Vine Expressway. The Vine westbound slowing from 8th to Broad. The Schuylkill eastbound backs up from the Conshohocken Curve to Belmont. And then from Girard into Spring Garden westbound side from University to South. A roving crew on the Pennsylvania a turnpike eastbound from Valley Forge to Fort Washington and then uh, in Chad's Ford 202 southbound at Green Tree Drive. Watch for an accident. It's blocking the left lane. <laughs> Wait, look. So my my traffic is teeny tiny and look at my sponsor. It's oh my giant. God, yep. <laughs> this traffic report brought to you by the Tile Shop. It's your destination for ceramic porcelain and natural stone tile and luxury vinyl tile. Explore a wide range of unique looks and exclusive designs. Visit your local Tile Shop showroom to start loving the home you're in. And that's traffic on 93.3 WMMR. All right, the floor recognizes Casey Boy Foster. Well, I wanted to wait until uh, my daughter is in school because she would be embarrassed if uh, she knew I was doing this, but um, I just wanted to congratulate her. Uh, her name is Casey, and she was named the uh, Student of the Week for the Mainline Times, and she has had just an amazing junior year. She was just inducted into the National Honor Society. Wow. She got the lead in the play, so they're doing, uh, Mary Mercy's doing James and the Giant Peach. She got the part of James, but she's, she's had a, a monster junior year thus far, and she was named the the uh, Mainline Times Student of the Week. She is <laughs> clearly not my child. Uh, she is my daughter's, uh, my my wife's daughter. But uh, you know, so if you are getting a Mainline Times, if you get, you know live on the main line or whatever, go to your stop at your Wawa. It's a wonderful you, picture. It really is. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to say congratulations. She's in school right now, so she doesn't know I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell her. That's awesome. Excellent. All right, let's do the B five. No. WMMR presents Kristen and Steve's Bizarre Final. All right, we got some stars I'm going to share with you, and we'll start with one out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Police Uh. department found a tiger cub inside of a home after officers were called to a shooting in the area. Uh, just after the 2 tiger p.m. Cub had a gun? Uh, no, uh, somebody else did. Just after 2 p.m. on Tuesday, APD learned of shots being fired. Before arriving, officers were alerted of a person shot in the leg near that area. Uh, preliminary evidence shows that the injured person was struck by a stray bullet. Officers heard another gunshot while they were on the scene coming from a nearby mobile home. They eventually located Kevin Gerardo uh, Mercado, <laughs> who was armed with a handgun, and uh, he was taken into custody without issue. Officers then followed a blood trail that led them inside a trailer, and they never were able to locate that injured person. 
However, inside the trailer home, a Bengal tiger cub wow. was found inside a dog crate. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Uh, the Department of Game and Fish took custody of the tiger. So, And as we learned from Tiger King, there were people like uh, Joe Exotic that were selling yes, tigers. They were. And who was the other guy? Uh, not Doc Mantle, but the, the dude. With the other the, idiot. The guy that wore the... Uh, uh, that wore the do rag baseball yeah. hat combo. I forgot. Yeah. But anyhow, and they probably that's where I assume they got something. Can't like do this, that. So. Yeah. No. It's very cruel. Yeah. A Minnesota Jeff Lowe. They just called Jeff the Lowe. There you yeah. go. All right. So a listen to this. A Minnesota butcher shop received an unwelcome visitor when a wild deer wreaked havoc on Saturday morning. It's so it's crazy. Uh-huh. That a butcher shop. Yeah. Like the one place it doesn't want to be. The mid-sized doe was captured making its grand entrance when it launched itself through the store's glass door and surveillance footage posted on uh, She Said Butcher Shop's Facebook page. Yeah, two London broils and a flank steak, please. Uh, The frightened deer attempted to stand back on its feet before knocking over a few flower pots. Uh, and liar dam- whore, liar whore. <laughs> damaging a wall as it attempted to escape through the store's window. Liar whore, liar whore, and you know it. Uh, it's dude, when you watch these things, they it it's usually like a linoleum or yeah. or like a slick floor, and their hooves just don't allow them to be able to stand up you or feel run so around. Sad for uh, I know this son bitch came crashing through that window yeah. too, through that door. Uh, Melissa Evans they had a great a great uh, sale going on, Nick. Okay. Uh, the owner of uh, she said butcher shop uh, said that she had no idea what was going on and thought maybe uh, somebody had driven through the building or the ceiling was crashing down. It was so loud. Uh, she said she and her daughter happened to be in the meat processing room near the back of the store at the time when they were alarmed by the deer plowing into the shop. Uh, she said, I hope that the deer is okay. And back telling the story to her friends about the crazy experience okay. <laughs> uh, she had today escaping the butcher. But I am going to sue. Uh, she said she was forced to close the business until Monday in order to fix the damages, but was optimistic about the wild scenario bringing a lot more business to her. I think by law, you're required to have a sticker on that door because it's made of glass to yeah. let people know. Yeah. Uh, you'll be hearing from my attorney, a Raccoon. I think you guys have a case here. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Alderman Derek Curtis's daughter was accidentally shot in the leg last week during a concealed carry class that Curtis himself was teaching at a church. Another one of these. And this is months after he accidentally shot himself. Oh, my God. And this is at a church? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Curtis was conducting the class on January 5th with his daughter and son in attendance. Someone handed Curtis's daughter a Glock 19, and the weapon went off. My bad. Sorry. My bad. The I'm not good at this. 25-year-old was struck in the leg and taken to a medical center in good condition. Now, the woman initially told investigators that her father had been handling uh, the gun when it went off. Her brother said that he was handling it, too. It appears the son Everyone was, got a chance to shoot her. was actually hand, handing off the gun to his sister when it discharged. Like I said, this is the second time a member of the Curtis family has suffered an accidental gunshot wound last fall. <laughs> Curtis shot himself in the wrist as he was cleaning the gun. Oh. Uh, he said the accident that required him to undergo minor hand surgery happened while he was I'm helping... i to the bathroom. Ah! Helping a neighbor with a firearm that had been malfunctioning at the gun range. Generally speaking, which kind of gun is the safest? Is, is like, a revolver the safest? Uh, I have as far as like, a Glock. Okay. Uh, but, I mean, it depends. Everyone well, has their preferences. A, that's a make. But, right, I mean, yeah, you're talking yeah. about a, a model, a type, a revolver, or... Right. Uh, I, I, what, what's your? Uh, I mean, as far as like accidental, like uh, the, the the gun going off. Discharge, yeah, it depends on the I guess the pounds of pressure that on the trigger. Okay, uh, but I the, mean, the you could drop. Police one. officers, my brother, his one says uh, they they do, a lot of them default to the to the Glock the the nine millimeter. Okay, yeah, okay. I don't know if that answers a question about uh, safety or not. Yeah, you just... can dr- you can drop it. It won't it won't uh, they won't discharge. It says revolvers can be considered safer. In this okay. particular article, so maybe so, but you know, there's anything that can happen. You never know. Uh, police arrested a 30 year old man Tuesday, accusing him of shooting another man multiple <laughs> times. But this was after an ill fated October sex meetup in Florida City. Errol Martin now faces charges of attempted murder, according to the report. The victim told officers that he met Martin, who was riding a bicycle as he drove through Fl- Florida City during uh, the morning hours. And Martin agreed to have oral with him. Oh, okay. You know, you're riding your you bike. Work it out. Yeah, sorry so. about that. I'll uh, give you a Hummer. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> Police said the victim followed Martin to a bus stop and uh, then drove to an undisclosed location and then they performed the act. Afterwards, Martin began to act weird towards the victim. He tastes make, weird. Make him feel uncomfortable. 
Uh, the man then drove Martin back to where his bike was located at the bus stop. Uh, police said that the victim sent Martin money on, ca on a cash app or on cash app as they spoke about the sexual a act not occurring. Oh, it didn't occur. That didn't happen. Uh, Martin then asked the victim for more money, and the victim had no more money to pay, so Martin pulled out a gun and started shooting him. Dude ran off, hid in the nearby bushy area uh, where he collapsed and was later located. Uh, the victim was able to provide detectives with the Cash App account, description of the shooter. They tracked him down. Turns out he was a, uh, a parolee and convicted uh -huh. felon and was already in custody on unrelated charges. So they got him. He's going to jail. All right, and then uh, we'll end with one more story, and let's go with, I have a sh short one here, yeah. Um, so a pigeon was detained last month in a Canadian jail after being caught with some strange cargo. It actually had yeah. a little backpack of meth on it. I saw that. A and pigeon. I, did you see the little backpack? Yes. Yeah, it was it's actually hilarious. kind of ingenious, yeah. Uh, so the bird wore a backpack filled with the drug and was captured near the <laughs> Pacific Institution Correctional Facility in Vancouver. Officer John Randall said, my initial reaction was shock, who noted that due to advances in technology and drone detecting, smugglers have had to go, quote, go, quote old school so <laughs> all right so now they're sending in carrier pigeons listen he handed me this backpack said i could make a couple bucks i didn't know what was in it i didn't ask you're just a mule i'm just a mule all right and there a you go winged mule that's what i have in the bizarre file for you all right so when we get back we'll test your knowledge of today's program the lesson question we'll get to the trash and music news as well so don't be gone long we'll return shortly with it all And Steve on 93.3 WMMR. Up there. Amy, I used to go to my neighbor's house um, and play with the neighbor because she had My Little Ponies. And for whatever reason, and it wasn't that I wasn't allowed to have them, but my mom never got them for me. And I was traumatized as a kid. I would I really Your mom wanted probably them. thought they were sinful or something. <laughs> so that's really funny. I, I Honestly, like, I didn't have that many toys as a kid. But there was, I don't know why. Like, there's so many cool 80s collectible. I mean, it's not like, it's not like it's only the 80s. It happened later, too, with Pokemon and Bean Babies and everything else. But, like... I, when I got to be a teenager and all that stuff was like at flea markets and cheap, I was like, I'm buying every toy that I ever wanted now. Yeah, now that you can afford it, go for it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, Amy, with the with the new record and new music, what are your thoughts on touring and, and um, what it's going to be like over the next few months? Because so much of that is up in the air for so many different acts. Yeah, um, we're not going to be out there this summer, uh, but we are making plans for the end of the year. Um, and I am... I just can't wait. God. It's been just this thing where we keep making plans. And this is like with tour and everything else over the last year and a half almost now. You just keep making plans and keep having to push them back. And then you just keep making them again and keep making them again and keep, you know, waiting for that time when you don't have to postpone it again. Um, so we just keep making plans. Yeah. And I, I feel like now, you know, we're in a different situation than when we were in last year when we just kept pushing it back hoping for something. Now there's a vaccine. Now things are changing. I've already gotten my first shot. Um, we're headed towards the end of not being able to do it anymore. So we are going to <laughs> unleash the fury. I am so ready to get out there and just play and feel what it feels like to be on stage just immersed fully in music with a group of hot and sweaty people. Don't you want that so bad? Yeah, right absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah. Yes. As a matter of yeah. fact, I'm, I mean, when was the last time you played out? Our MM barbecue. How many years? Obviously, it wasn't last year. Was that no, was that two years ago? I, uh, yeah, 2019. I yeah, because yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a great memory of uh, being in the uh, commissary, if you will, and I believe they right. might have been uh, serving kielbasa sausage, <laughs> and I started singing Tenacious D, Tenacious and D. you were there, <laughs> and you actually sang with me a little bit. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Your butt that. cheeks is warm. <laughs> yes. That was our road trip music. That yeah. we, just, we were just on that road trip. It was all Tenacious D, like That's every, awesome. all of it. Uh, I'm we, an old school fan from like the cable days. Yeah, like the HBO show. They they played our uh, they played the MM barbecue one year, and they were no that was at the it was a festival. festival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a festival. Uh, another festival that we did, and nobody really knew them except the musicians. And it was yeah, it was so wild fun. to see that the audience was like, Amazing. "What in the yeah, f?" It was, it was before every, Jack Black was a, right, was a household name. Yeah, every band was lined up stage side, and yes. they were like freaking out. It was just hilarious. 
this. Mm -hmm. It's so funny because it's one of those things, right? Like Spinal Tap, where bands get it on a level where it, especially with the Tenacious D, their, their musicianship is so good. Yeah. That's part of what makes it so funny. <laughs> like all the details of like talking about writing a song and everything, you just relate to it. Yeah. <laughs> it's I, I, like, I, That's right. And it actually sounds great. It does. <laughs> they're, they're really great. And, and, and Pick a Destiny is just, a, you know, you can watch that over and over again. Uh, I wanted to ask you, when you, when you are, um, when you're performing, when you're getting back to the concert um, uh, dynamic, what's the better scenario you're able to roll out the music and a lot of your listeners have heard it they're live perform live with that energy or they come already pre-schooled on the music because they've been listening to it over and over again off of the album you know it's cool when they know it a little bit that one of the one of the cool things about this situation is we're going to be going out there playing the new album right and by the time we're able to be up on stage playing it the, the fans have been living it with it for a year right. I mean, we started releasing the songs you know already a year ago now um so it, it won't be that Ooh, what's this one i haven't heard it before i mean it'll be <laughs> cool to hear it live but they'll know the words and i think that's going to be really powerful yeah. I'd, I'd always i remember when i would be going to a concert uh i i would take a little bit of time to do the work to get the album yeah. and listen yeah. to it, yeah, and then go. It's a completely totally. different experience. And would you were you the same way when you were when you were pre rock yes. star? Yeah, yeah. As, even now, like if we're gonna go to a show and it's a band that like a friend wants to go to that I don't really know that well, or I know like the hits, but I don't want to be that person. Yeah, like you always jam that album that day when you're like getting ready to go, just yeah. so you're kind of familiar with what's going to happen. It makes it more exciting when, when totally. the songs you like do happen. It serves you better as, as the, you're paying for this ticket. Yeah. You know, you're, you're going to yeah. get more out of it. If you listen to the material, I remember uh, rush had done a tour and it was a concept album that they had. And they said they were going to mainly just be playing music from that. So I did my work. I right. listened to it. I yeah. loved it. Our boss did not listen to it. <laughs> yeah. He thought it was a lousy concert. I thought it was an there awesome you go. concert. Yeah. So that yeah. can be the difference. You got to listen to the material. I and totally it's be... agree. Hey, I wanted to ask because uh, uh, Taylor Momsen's name came up. Lizzie Hale's name came up. There are a couple of the featured uh, backup singers on this album. There are several people that you uh, uh, brought on board. Uh, and all of this done remotely. Um, how is that? I mean, just a quick phone call and yeah, they're in type of thing. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, it wasn't completely remote. That was uh, when we were recording Use My Voice. It was right before the shutdown. It was okay. the beginning of last year. So um, we recorded in Nashville. Um, that's where Nick's studio is. And Lizzie, and they live here. So it was easy for her to come by, like check out the song, get in the booth. And Dina Jacob from Viridia, my friend who helped me actually write a little bit of the song she could come in she lives here so we did that but also i just like texted and called a couple friends and was like i don't know do you want to lay a vocal down on this and everybody wow. said yes and awesome really cool. you guys all have your own style and all shine in your own ways but when you're watching lizzie do you kind of sit there and go a little less <laughs> <laughs> no. don't destroy no. me on this I'm sure her voice no, is I hear so lizzie, powerful I'm like turn that girl up <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's so cool that you guys all live out there that's just one of those things cities that I need to get to. Uh, well, are you in Nashville? Yeah, I am now. Wow. I was in Brooklyn for 13 years. It's wow. weird. It's different, but yeah, it's totally. good. We're closer to my parents here. Hey, okay. um, I wanted to uh, listen. I don't know if you have the details or, and if you do, if you're allowed to give them out or not, but uh, you are going to be announcing a streaming concert uh, next month. Can you talk about that right now or no? I don't know. I haven't talked about it yet because I didn't think I was supposed to, but you just spilled the beans. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Feel free to get in trouble we're because normal. of yeah. us. Yeah, yeah. Nobody's listening. <laughs> we are. We're working on it. We're just now talking about the set list. So um, we are We are doing something. Yes. Okay. I've watched a lot of streaming concerts over the last year, and it is, I mean, there's some really, really great things. Um, uh, I'm a huge Fish fan, and uh, Trey Anastasio did a, a run of shows at the Beacon, and what they did, which I thought was really, really cool, is they performed towards the back of the stage right and so oh. all, and and then they lit up all the seats behind them i mean just oh. uh, are you talking like you know just visuals alone because obviously the music's gonna you know speak for itself but the visuals alone i thought that was a really cool visual that is really cool that's a good idea hey what no, uh, we still have to figure out what we're gonna do exactly when, when you're putting the set list together what's um what's most important opener or closer to you <laughs> what do you think that is a difficult question yeah. um Man, uh, the opener is really important. 
I, I, I'm tempted to say the closer, but honestly, like the way you start the show really sets up the whole energy of the night. If you come in strong, like that is going to just get everybody to buy into everything else you're about to do. So I think starting is really important, but ending is important too, because whatever you end with, hmm. that's what's going to be in everybody's head for the rest of the night. I saw a cheap trick one time and they opened with, I want you to yes, want me. And yes. we were like, Whoa! <laughs> and I still remember that to this day. I mean, that blew me away. There's a lot of, there's a lot that can go into, there's a lot behind those moves. I think that's a statement. It's like if you guys came to just hear this one song, you can leave now. <laughs> yeah, right. We're not the rest gonna... of the show is for the fans. You guys want to go to the bathroom? Just go. Yeah. Go to the back. Uh, this is for the fans now. That's what that says to me. <laughs> we, we had a show one time, and we won't mention the band, but the band opened and closed with their hit at the yeah. time. It was like it was, it was a weird. It was a weird thing. Well, it was the New Radicals, it and the they, new... they really didn't have much material. Much what and, they had. and uh, yeah. and that's a great song. You get what you get. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, but hey, I wanted to. Um, I know. I don't know if we've talked to you since you guys uh, released your cover of The Chain, but what a an amazing rendition of that song. And I just wanted to Thanks. thank you for doing that, choosing to do that and, and Boy, releasing and, it. Yeah. And ballsy, too. Yeah. You know? I mean, Thanks. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a bold uh, mm -hmm. shot at a really a song that's got its own identity, for sure. It was awesome. Totally. Man, it felt really good to do. We our band is made up of people we all have a little bit of a different taste um in music and we all like different things and you know some of that contrast between us is what makes it great but one place that we all super agree is Fleetwood Mac uh. so to be able to go in and for us all to just be like yes like equally excited to have the opportunity to do it was really cool and my thought on covers is always find a new way like make it somehow like really your own mm -hmm. because if if it's really just going to be another version of the original like that's just i don't know i want to go hear the original then like that yeah you, you, like that, you're that just reminding it. people if of a version they like better yeah which is yeah, yeah it's a totally. it's problem like, yeah bring something bring a new perspective to the table and see if you can show you know another potential interpretation of the music so I, I that song definitely you know it's it's different it's, well, you, it's very different from the original i really like yeah. it you mentioned each band member having their own taste and then the, confirm or deny is your number one pie choice these days pecan pie and how did that happen <laughs> You guys researched deep. <laughs> <laughs> far on Instagram. It, can you um, confirm or, or deny? Confirm. I love pecan pie. <laughs> Me too. Um, I mean, I like food in general. I'm a food person, but um, I yeah, I think that was You're like joining last us. Thanksgiving. So this event in Montage Mountain. Oh, so and exciting! This is going to be on the first Friday of March, which is when we usually do it. It's March third. Uh, and that night, after the Cardboard Classic is over, 5 p.m., Everclear is performing at Mountain Fest. And there's also going to be, the following day, a concert from Lit and Fuel and Pond Skimming, where people ski across the water and costume and fireworks show, all this stuff. So it's a, it's a whole weekend. I love it. You just spend a montage. Get the details, WMMR.com, or you can text the word CARDBOARD. To 39333, and we will send you a uh, link with uh, the information. All right, today is, uh, well, we're going to give away a lesson question. That's what we're going to do. I already talked about today. Today's Friday. We're going to give away a pair of tickets for Bruce Orama, which is coming up at the Keswick Theater on April 14th. I'll tell you about oh, what that is in just a moment. But the question we pose to you is this. For my dad and his football career, uh, they played two-way football and were also what? <laughs> If you remember what that was. A lot of people don't know that. Not only, only were they playing Iron Man football, they were playing it in a very specific way. What were they, uh, <laughs> in what way were they uh, playing? 215-263-WMMR is the number. Call if you heard and you know the answer. And you had to have heard it, by the way. The trash business is a gold mine. 93.3 WMMR with Preston and Steve's Hollywood Trash. All right, so we're going to get some stories while we're waiting for your calls. Let's get them, Steve. What's up? Yes, a Zoe 101 reboot movie called Zoe 102, featuring most of the original Nickelodeon cast, is coming to Paramount+. Plus. Producers say the movie will remind you why you love Zoe 101 and help you conclude it was because you were a stupid little kid. Uh, oh, right. my God. Tom Brady took a big financial hit when the crypto exchange FTX filed for bankruptcy. While the exact amount lost is not known, CNN is reporting that Brady might have to move in with a distant cousin named Gary Lauer. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know if it's the same one, but that's bad. And finally, uh, Gerard Butler 
revealing that Robert Downey Jr. sent him an email saying how much he loves Butler's Fallen movies, which include Olympus Has Fallen, London Has Fallen, and Angel Has Fallen. Butler says he's eager to get Downey a role in the next movie, which is Grandma Has Fallen, and she can't get, <laughs> and she can't get up. Uh, you jumped on it. Yeah. Well, so... Real quick, peel back the curtain real quick. Uh, these buttons, the, the buttons before we got this new system, they activated on the release when you hit the, the mouse. This doesn't. So, ah, uh, listen, this I'm one, dealing with my own stuff, bro. Yeah, yeah. No sad. <laughs> no sad. All right. No All right. sad. And that's your Hollywood trash, by the way. Yes. All right, let's see if we can get an answer to the uh, lesson question, which is, uh, for my dad's football career, they played uh, two-way football. And we're also what? And we will go to Greg, see if he knows the answer. Hey, Greg, good morning. Wow. All right, Greg. Yes. He's loving it. Uh, Greg, uh, for my dad's football career, they played two-way football, and we're also what? Uh, they were also naked. They were naked. <laughs> A different time. Not of him naked, no. Uh, Greg, hang on the line. We're going to get your information. We're going to give you a pair of tickets to Bruce Rama. The uh, two events that are happening are going on in one fun night, and it's hosted by cult film star Bruce Campbell. Friday, April 14th, Keswick Theater. Part one is a last fan standing interactive trivia contest for fans <laughs> of fantasy, horror, sci-fi, superheroes, and gaming. Bill's getting a phone call. Okay. No, wait! Oh, my God! What? Bomb. Bill, Did you what? just? Do... His phone's ringing and he's cursing in our studio while we're on the air. He can contribute talk, to no, the I... chaos that Casey's already causing. He called me on my phone and then I realized it and I and I dropped the f bomb by saying effing Casey. I'm sorry. Oh, you're blaming me for bringing I, your I, ringer I'm sorry. phone, Preston. In? I apologize. So uh, I'm going to get you a Shake Shack gift card just for that. Uh, oh, no, Kathy gets one too, right? Oh, for right. Her son and uh, oh, I didn't hear that. I didn't hear Casey's you. Casey's kid. No, I'm, I'm no. I'm sorry for the. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> He's razzled now. Oh my God! You drop one little f bomb on a terrestrial oh, radio, and <laughs> yeah, that's it. I was I was enjoying. You you don't keep your phone on the vibrate. No. <laughs> no, he's over 60. <laughs> I am too, but I, I keep it on vibrate. Yeah, but you're also tech savvy. Yeah. Well, okay. he's pretty, Bill is tech savvy. Is he? I, I think know. so. I don't know. I just told Tech Kathy how to reboot her Yeah, computer. you just yelled yeah, at me yeah, yeah. computer. Okay. Well, I, I knew that much. All right. It, put it on vibrate like a simian. <laughs> simian. Simian. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna, okay. Uh, I think we're fighting. Uh, I think we're gonna. You know, we're gonna okay. fist the cuffs. I think Preston was like right in the middle of actually. <laughs> he he might have been. I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. It it's okay. Uh, part I didn't two, hear the F word by the way. Did. <laughs> part did. two of the Bruce <laughs> Campbell uh, event will be the Groovy Bruce movie screening, and it includes a Q and A with Bruce. Tickets are on sale this Friday today. Uh, at 10 a.m. via AXS.com. So they went on sale 30 minutes ago. Go get them. All right, music news time. Now, Preston and Steve's Music News on 93.3 WMMR. All right, we're going to start with the uh, story we led the entertainment uh, segment with, and that was the fact that uh, Lisa Marie Presley, the only child of Elvis Presley, uh, has died at age 54. Priscilla Presley, her mother and Elvis's wife, uh, said it is with a heavy heart that I must share the devastating news that my beautiful daughter, Lisa Marie, has left us. She was the most passionate, strong, and loving woman I've ever known. Uh, she had started the week in a great mood, uh, very festive, celebrating what would have been her father's 88th birthday with fans at Graceland, and then later tearfully applauded alongside her mother, Priscilla, as Austin Butler received a Golden Globe Award for his portrayal of the King of Rock and Roll and Baz Luhrmann's biopic, Elvis. And they, they had both um, given the go-ahead to his selection as Elvis, and they consulted with him, and yeah. so they'd become close. But on uh, Thursday, um, she suffered an apparent cardiac arrest at her home in Calabasas, and was transported to a local hospital, and she died a few hours later. So she herself, you know, released a few albums, tried to get a music career going. Uh, you remember when she married Michael Jackson, the suggestion was she'd married Michael Jackson to get some of his magic uh, incorporated into her uh, music and the production of her albums. And then uh, her other husband, Danny Keo, 
He was a, uh, a music producer as well, was he not? Uh, he was a guitarist. I'm not sure if he was a producer yeah, or not, yeah. but he may, have, may right. have been, as far as I know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, and she was also uh, married to Nicolas Cage. She had, uh, I think, four ex-husbands right. uh, total. Uh, but um, she did have uh, some lasting unions with her children uh, that included son Benjamin uh, Keo, who apparently, she had four kids, but yeah. he, he died by suicide in 2020 and was laid to rest at Graceland. I assume uh, that Lisa Marie will also be laid to rest at uh, Graceland, but I don't know. Isn't it wild that she would have, you know, because Elvis had his life and his ups and downs and troubles and so on and so forth, and, and you know, she befell a lot of the same stuff he incurred. Uh, and her poor mother, too, to, mother, like, yeah. have to, you know... Grandchild. She's seen, a lot, of, she's seen a lot of close yeah. people uh, pass, unfortunately, and way before their time. Yeah. That's the thing, way before their time. Uh, Nicholas Cage had said, uh, this is devastating news. Lisa had the greatest laugh of anyone I ever met. She lit up every room, and I am heartbroken. I find some solace, though, believing that she is reunited, reunited with her son, Benjamin. We had another uh, death in the world of rock and roll. Robbie Bachman, co-founder and co-founding member and drummer of Bachman Turner Overdrive, passed away. He was 69 years old. Randy Bachman announced the death of his uh, brother and bandmate in a social media post. Uh, he said, another sad departure. The pounding beat behind BTO, my little brother Robbie, has joined mom, dad, and brother Gary on the other side. Mm. Maybe Jeff Beck needs a drummer. Uh, he was an integral cog in our rock and roll machine. I dig Bachman Turner Overdrive. I do too. Yeah. And he said, and we rocked the world together. BTO's uh, core lineup insisted of Randy and Robbie Bachman and Fred Turner, followed by uh, following a previous run under the band name Brave Belt, excuse me, which uh, Randy formed after he quit the Guess Who. Uh, another Bachman brother, Tim, was also a founding member of BTO, but he was replaced after a couple of years by Blair Thornton. Uh, during their heyday in the 1970s, BTO released uh, several hit records and albums, including 1974's chart-topping Not Fragile, and among the Canadian band's most popular hits, are the ubiquitous uh, Taking Care of Business, which we're playing here, uh, but also You Ain't Seen Nothing Yet, another great song, and Roll On Down the Highway, another yeah. great song, which Robbie co-wrote. Uh, that peaked at number 14 in the U.S. After BTO disbanded in early 1980, uh, Robbie didn't return to the band when they reunited in 1983 due to business conflicts with Randy and other members. So he wasn't taking care of business? But no, yeah. apparently. But, uh, however, he did come back in 1988 after he took care of business. I reconsidered and now I'm taking care of business. And remained with the band until 2005. So that is uh, sad news. A lot of these bands can now, and it seems to be more uh, of a of a frequent thing, where you'll get, get a couple of these one or two hit, three hit Wonders, mm -hmm. and not the, you know, and there's a substantive career there. Put them on a bill with two or three other acts, sure. <clears throat> and just for the sheer nostalgia of it, people go to these shows and, yep. and love them. Yep, absolutely. I mean, if you know you're going to get what you, you know, you're not going to get any deep cuts. Yep. Yeah, you're going to get the hits. Out yeah, of them. this is from our concept album. Yeah. Uh, Vince Neal's been diagnosed with COVID-19. Uh, Vince took to social media to let fans know that he would miss the Rock Island, or is it the, uh, is it Rock Island? It's got to be Rock Island. Uh, uh, fest in uh, Key West, yeah, so 2023. Okay. Uh, he said, hello, Rock Island friends. I am sad to report that uh, yesterday I was diagnosed with COVID. I'm okay, but this thing is really kicking my ass. All that being said, I am unable to perform at Rock Island uh, Fest next week. And he put COVID-19! The... <laughs> he put the Rock Island bumper sticker on his mobility oh, scooter. Oh, no. He continued saying, I would like to extend my sincerest apologies to the Rock Island Fest organizers and most of all my friends and fans. Most? Oh, no. And most of all oh. <laughs> my friends. Not all, Not of, all them. of them. And most oh. of all my fan. Most yeah. of all of my fans. Oh. Most uh, of all that guy. You know who you are. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, is, is he performing solo, I guess? Uh, no, uh, a lot of crew. Okay. Yep. Right. Uh, so he said, I'm disappointed to say the least. He wasn't doing his Bachman Turner Overdrive tribute. So looking forward to the show, and I'm hoping uh, that I'll have an opportunity to make this up in 2024. What kind of shape is he in? Besides, obviously, besides the COVID, I know he's sick. Brown. But f physically, is he, he's a little, is he a little hefty these days? Uh, but he, the last time I saw him, I haven't seen him in any of the video Taking shots care of, of, biscuits? Of, of this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Of the stadium tour that they've done. But, you know, I mean, he's, he's good enough to get out there and there go. perform every night. But um, I, I've not seen him, so I, I couldn't tell you. Uh, Twisted Sister will reunite for their induction later this month into the Heavy Metal Hall of Fame. 
Blabbermouth reports that the sixth annual charity gala is set for January 26th at the Canyon Club in Agora Hills, California. Uh, the classic lineup of the band, Dee Snyder, J.J. French, Eddie Ojeda, uh, Mark Mendoza, and late drummer A.J. Perro, uh, Perro will be inducted by Steve Vai and Mike Portnoy. Well, that's pretty awesome. Uh, the band's performance will mark their first live outing since 2016. So growing up on Long Island, the um, Twisted Sister was one of those bands. You'd see them all over the place, Preston. It's like, what? what's with this band? It's mm -hmm. just crazy. And then you watch that documentary, which we both love, a uh, twisted mother effing sister. Yep. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's it's they just stuck with it. Yep. Uh, it's 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 funny and it's encouraging and uh, they certainly deserve that honor. Yeah, it's a great doc. Uh, and then it's a happily ever after ending for the long and sordid tale of John Fogarty and the songwriting publishing for his Credence Clearwater Revival songs. He wrote all the songs. And he finally has ownership of them back. He has purchased a majority interest in the global publishing rights to his legendary song catalog from Concord for an undisclosed sum. Uh, for years, Fogarty had refused to play his Credence hits yeah. rather than uh, line the pockets of the late Saul Zantz who owned the band's masters uh, through Fantasy Records? Do we know how that came about? Uh, In other words, that, that he had that he had that control over it. Was he was he an early manager or? I just think yeah. Well, he was he he. So at the record company, I mean, it depends on what kind of a deal sure, you sign yeah, with them. And signed a bad I assume deal. they signed a deal where they yeah got ownership of the masters, and you just can't have them yeah. unless they give you permission. So. Uh, in an effort to extricate himself from Credence's back-breaking contract, Fogarty sold his publishing, here you go, Steve, in 1980. There you go. Uh, so apparently there was a contract he didn't like, uh, and it was too overbearing. So in, to compensate for that, he sold him the, the songs. So it's happened, you know, where like um, you know, Michael Jackson, for example, and Paul McCartney, when he sold off, I guess Michael Jackson bought up a large portion of Paul McCartney's catalog, mm -hmm. and that caused a rift that was you know I mean, it, it's your art it's what you created Fogarty said in a statement as of de this January I own my own songs again this is something I thought I would never that would never be a possibility after 50 years I'm finally reunited with my songs I also have to say uh have a say in where and how my songs are used up until this year that's something that I'd never been able to do I'm looking forward to touring and celebrating this year and I want to thank Concord for helping to make all of this happen and I'm excited for new ideas and renewed interest in my music. He said, like a revival. Yeah. CCR. Oh. So, right, so you can bet that uh, there'll be a Tylenol commercial with Who'll Stop the Pain. Uh, right? Sounds like that would fit. <laughs> and then one last item. We got an email from James, as in uh, Jim from the Jim and Aaron story you guys covered around the Phillies a while back. Oh, yes. The, the two that uh, she got... She hoisted him up on his shoulders, or her shoulders, yeah. so that he could find his friends out in the middle of all the chaos that uh, when the uh, the Phils uh, were winning. So he said, uh, now he plays in a band, and uh, he wanted us to give him a plug, so I'm going to sure. do that. They're actually playing with Weedus tonight. What? <laughs> That's pretty Teenage cool. Dirtbag Weedus yeah. at World Cafe Live. Um, and he said, the uh, it starts at 8, my band Pokey John is <laughs> up first. Oh followed by Todd Morris, bassist of The Offspring, uh, who put out a solo album, and then Weedus is headlining. He said, General Mission is sold out, but there are a handful of seated tickets left, and we're really trying to sell this out. It's just our second show. He said, we're a pretty new band. Well, the fact they're with that bill is, has to, they have to be worth something, right? He said, uh, we'll have merch for sale. A lot of people asked about the Pokey John shirt I was wearing in the picture that went viral of me and Aaron. Uh, follow us on Instagram for updates, and they are at Poke John, P O K E J A W N. Does he mention whether or not he's still there? Still, he didn't say it in this. I don't know. Dating? Hold on, Marissa's got an update. Here we go. I talked to him. Um, they hung out. Remember, they went to that one game. Was it maybe three or four? Right. And then um, they're good friends. Oh, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. All right. yeah. That's too bad. No, but they catch up. There's like more than just they didn't just like friends with say benefits? this was fun and never again. Friends they... with dental plan? <laughs> hey, not everybody's a match. Come on. Yeah. That's true. Well, yeah. through us, we have an un unblemished record of providing eternal love to people. Mm, that's what we do. <laughs> unblemished. <laughs> <laughs> I can find a lot of blemishes in that love. <laughs> All right. And that's the last item in music news. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in a second. Wrap it up. Word of the week prize. We will give that away when we return. Now, I hit the damn button. Hang on a second here. Uh, no, I didn't. There we go. All right. <laughs> we'll be back in a moment. Stay with us. Preston.
Jason and Steve. On 93.3 WMMR. What's new? Love you, ask. Okay. Playing around. This isn't a joke anymore. So you yeah. pronounce it pecan pie, which is how I say it as yeah. well. Steve says pecan. pecan. Yeah. So then where, where are yeah. you from? Where did you grow up that you got that pronunciation? I actually grew up all over. Um, my dad's in was in radio for 30 years, so we're kind of a no-dialect family. Um, South Florida is okay. where I grew up as a small child, but then Illinois and then Arkansas. But, I mean, I, I've lived everywhere, kind of. All right, what did he do in radio? But pecan. We say pecan. <laughs> pecan. pecan. <laughs> what did he do in radio? He did what you do. He was a DJ, a program director, a morning show. Oh. Um, wow. We traveled. A, that's why we moved around a lot, you know, just different jobs. Wow, cool. Excellent. Well, listen, we're excited about the, the prospect of uh, maybe, you know, a streaming show coming up. And obviously, yeah. you doing the live stuff, yeah. which is going to be fantastic. And, and the new album is great. So, Amy Lee, congratulations to you, the rest of the guys uh, in the band. Thank you. Uh, and just keep doing what you're doing. And, and we love it. And we appreciate it. Thank you. Can't wait to see you in person again. Yes. Excellent. The Bitter Truth, Amy Lee Evanescence. Yeah. Thank you very much. Hey. And thanks for coming on this morning. So, wow. <laughs> She's so cool. She's awesome. I love it. Um, I, I I love this. I was looking on uh, our next guest uh, Twitter account, and he's got a, a tweet from Ryan Reynolds. Yes. Uh, it says, uh, excited to see the Snyder Cut, but ahead of its debut... And with the aid of a good amount of aviation gin, tonight at 6 p.m., I'll do something I've never done. Actually watch the Green Lantern. <laughs> Happy St. Patrick's Day. That was sent to Zack Snyder. Ladies and gentlemen, we're very fortunate to have this gentleman on. Uh, he was gracious enough to give us this wonderful interview at the Camp Out for Hunger. It was uh, fantastic. So cool. And we're stoked on the day. That this big event that we've long awaited, that he is joining us this morning, is very, very cool. I mean, the stuff that so many people thought would never happen, and here it is. Please welcome Zach Snyder Yay! to the show this morning. Yay! Zach. Hey, guys. Hey, how you doing, man? Doing great. Doing really great this morning. Uh, it is an exciting day uh, for a lot of people, <laughs> including, most of all, you. And the first question I want to get into, Zach, is just to remind everybody... How did this come to be? Where did this idea start that th this movie needed to, to to go back and be redone and, and added all this extra footage? I think it was it was fan based, was it not? One hundred percent fan based. Um, I don't know. It's a it's a long saga of what what happened um, during the film. Um, you know, people might not know that I I the original Justice League that was released in theaters that um, I've never seen the movie. I left the project um, due to a family tragedy that we had. And uh, so I never, I never completed the film. They, and they brought in another guy to finish it. Um, but, um, and they made a couple of changes uh, in my absence. Um, and so, um, you know, I guess the, there was a hashtag that circulated called release the Snyder cut. Um, and that hashtag started on November 17th, 2017, which is the day the movie was originally released. Wow. <laughs> there was a guy who walked out of the theater and just went like, nope, and, and, just, <laughs> and, and tweeted that. And since, you know, it's been tweeted millions of times, um, and, uh, you know, the, the studio finally was like, okay, well, I guess we have to do this. It's, and um, It's miraculous. Yeah. It, it, it is it is a miraculous thing when you stop and think about it. So the actual release itself, Zach, the actual movie that it's in existence the way you originally envisioned it, but now the story of it has become Hollywood legend as well, how this actually was executed. So something that I'm sure ha would have to frustrate any artist and any guy, and I consider you a visionary person. I, we all love your work. I mean, we're massive fans. And and to think, okay, I guess I have to cast that one into the dustbin of, you know, that's it. And then to be able to go back, and then you're getting things like IGN saying Zack Snyder's Justice League is a vindication for the director and the fans that believed in his vision. That's got to be awesome on this day to hear stuff like that. Yeah, it's really, it's really cool. Um, and just the fans have been so amazing. You know, our big cause... Um, is suicide prevention and right. mental health awareness and you know the fans have raised now like you know six hundred thousand dollars just you know in the little fan community um 
because every time they did an activation, like if they bought a billboard, half the money would go to AFSP and the other half the money would be like a billboard or like whatever they, whatever they do, they half of the money goes to, you know, AFSP and, you know, for suicide prevention and mental health awareness. And it's just an incredible, you know, I, I've said a hundred times, like, well, if there was no movie, what the fans have done is incredible, I, you know, especially during this pandemic where like, you know, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of people suffering, you know, through, through, through some hard times, you know, on top of the, you know, this virus, there's also just the impact on all of us as people. And I think that they've, they've really been just amazing and, 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 you know, tip of the spear in that way. And I really, I, I'm just proud of the community. Well, you participated in our camp out for hunger and just to put into um, you know perspective what happened, that ended up when we thought we were fighting, you know, the battle of Sisyphus there, pushing the boulder up the, the hill. Uh, it ended up being by far, by leaps and bounds, our most productive camp out ever. You know, and again, thanks in part to, to you and the other people who, who did it. So uh, the, the generosity is not gone. And for anyone who's going to enjoy uh, you know, and has been excited for this event that we're going to, we'll put the link up. I'm sure Nick probably already has mm -hmm. to direct money for people who want to make donations to uh, this, this charity, which has touched your life and, and is sadly touching so many lives right now. Uh, and then, t you know, turn a, a, a negative into a positive. But uh, I have to ask you, so there is so much that, that initially I was unaware after having seen the movie in the theater and having loved the way you had progressed this story uh, you know, with uh, the with Man of Steel and Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. It was to me, it seemed very Wagnerian and very operatic, and I love it. I love that whole thing. And uh, while Justice League definitely has its moments, it, it, the tone was different. Uh, and uh, and so now that I realize there were huge chunks that were excised. Preston and I loved the character of Cyborg, mm -hmm. and just you oh. could just feel he had been shorted so much screen time. That has been corrected, correct? Cyborg is really the it's his movie in a lot of ways. I, I think when you see it, you're going to be very much, um, you know, you're basically seeing Cyborg's story in a lot of ways. It's his origin, you know, and that was always when Chris and I, Chris Terrio and I, were working on the story. Our, our intent was always to have Cyborg. It, it was his time. You know, we thought this movie was going to be all about Cyborg. And and, and, and and frankly, Justice League really takes that character, you know, all the way. And I love I it. I can't wait for you to see it. But I was suggesting that you guys leave the, the studio right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Zach was actually giving us a pass <laughs> all right, and suggested, and, and I suggested we ran the show from like the time of Live Aid, and That's it would probably, cool. uh, right. yeah, it wouldn't work out. But yeah, yeah, that we, so we're going to tell our bosses you've given us the pass right now, actually, on, on social media, and, and there are people responding who are just, who are just loving it. Um, you know, and you've always dealt with people who just summarily just don't buy into what you're doing. Uh, I've, from the get-go, has had legions bought into it. And and you 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 like long movies. We talked about this last time at the camp out for hunger. And and if you're telling yeah. a story, how you, like it's like I was looking at the runtime initially when Justice the first iteration of Justice League was released. Like how are you? <laughs> what is this? What was this filmed in a, in a photo booth? I mean, how does this? How are you getting this this these huge stories yeah, compacted? Because... The movie, I think the runtime of the movie is it's two hours with credit. So it's, I think an hour and, you know, 40, you know, or 50 minutes. Yeah. Total. I mean, I think that's, that's, you know, not even half of the movie that I, that I've just finished. So I, I yeah, if you're ready for it, you yeah. Good for your soul. It's rush. 93.3 WMMR and Limelight from the great album Moving Pictures. It is 10.50. It's a Friday morning. We're wrapping up our program. We've had fun today. Yeah. It was a good time. Just hanging out with us. No guests, no nothing. Yeah. Just you know, sometimes it. you just need to, to get back to the uh, the origins. What, what made this the legend? The legend. <laughs> Lots of great phone calls today. Thank that's you. what made it. See, that's the best part. Rely on others to deliver a quality show, and you'll never go wrong. There yep. are a bunch of those dudes that called in when they were talking about uh, being injured and sticking at work. Every time they started the phone call, they were just laughing at yeah. themselves. And it like <laughs> they'd set up the phone call so well because they, they knew that they were idiots or whatever, but they, yeah. they lived through it, and they were, they were fantastic stories. There was always a little chuckle at yeah. the start. 
Whenever you laugh right before you tell a story, you know <laughs> it's going to be a good one. Yeah. For sure. Uh, so thank you for all the calls today. We do appreciate that. Uh, we do have just one more order of business. Well, a couple of quick little things to do. Uh, but we're going to need to give away our Word of the Week prize. And there's only one human being in the world that can in help us world. move forward. In a world. In a world. Where things need to be given away. Yeah. <laughs> there's a man. Um, one man. <laughs> With hair like Tony Katane. <laughs> oh, you know what? We need to get, we need a fan over there. Yeah. When Pierre's oh, hair is yeah. down. For drama. So it, uh, so it flies. Yeah. Well, we did, uh, when I did the, the morning show, we did the flying hair photo. Ah, um, legendary. Uh, it is kind of legendary. We have a few things of it around the building. I had to stand up on a ladder, uh, about a four-step ladder. A giant fan, the likes of which I've never seen before, was right in front of my face. And then... They had fans behind me to lift the hair. <laughs> wow. And it still wasn't enough, so my hairstylist, Charles Slider, came in with a uh, blow dryer and was <laughs> in the back blowing it. And it looks... So the idea was that it looks all natural and in the wind and all this, you know, like those Panasonic uh, old ads yeah. where they would, guy would sit there and he'd be blown away by the music. This was like a free-flowing hippie thing. And it was... It took hours. <laughs> and and I could only do one or two takes. The fan was blowing so strong, my eyes were watering. Yeah, I'll so bet. So I'd have, to, I'd have to do... Turn and smile at the camera. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Hang on. And wipe my eyes. <laughs> to be off. honest, I always thought that you perhaps had been laying on your side yeah and the hair was pulled oh. out it doesn't look natural right it it's does not, not look <laughs> doesn't look flowing naturally well a lot air. of things have been cut out of it uh all the different people that are behind it and the fans <laughs> you can't see charles with it with a with the one hair with the one <laughs> blow dryer that's lifting one portion of it up in the giant fan underneath it which is lifting the back part of it up but i'm standing at the top of a little step ladder maybe like a small ladder larger than a step ladder looking at the camera smiling and then being utterly blinded <laughs> yeah it's hard to keep your yeah. eyes open in a raging wind storm a raging wind storm yeah. now look happy and carefree <laughs> and then you know it was westinghouse that owned us and they had some ridiculous slogan it said live the life respect the music what the f does that mean <laughs> Live the life, comma, respect the music. Eat the now, fart the love. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That would have been far better. Um, uh, yeah, they, they, well, there's some, somebody to validate their jobs. Yeah, this, this is it. This, this is the consultant one. consultant guy called me and says, so tell me about yourself. And he was wearing a suit with cowboy boots. <laughs> and I go, okay. And he had a cowboy hat on his desk. Well, you know, this came from California. Hi, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. good. All right, good. You can go now. And then out of that came live the life, respect the music. Oh, dear God in heaven. <laughs> I, I have lived you the life. You should have said, I'm, I'm like, a bit like you. I'm a cowboy. Yeah. They did eventually change it to wake up and smell the karma, which I kind of liked. I like yeah. that. Yeah, that's uh, a good one. Yeah. I like that. But live the life, respect the music. Excuse me, what? Good morning, and, Cincinnati. And, and then there was a You've Grown Up, We've Grown Up. Oh, my God. That was the worst of yeah. them all. That's where we, we went back to the... We, we went back to the radio station, which as I still love. The radio our station. Our slogan, the radio station. Yeah. Uh, I love that to this day. And some of our old vintage IDs that I still play have that on it. But um, the Live the Life, Respect the Music was a, an attempt to capture the yuppie audience of the 90s. Oh. And so they went to this, again, a consultant researched logo with a pink um, <laughs> oval egg and the MMR inside the pink. And it just was it ghastly. And um, and then, but on top to throw insult upon injury, the ads, they had TV ads, and they go, we've grown up, you've grown up. And it has this, this guy, this hippie guy in a Volkswagen van being pushed aside in honor of the new, you know... Chevy mid-size minivan or whatever the hell it was they were plugging and 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 it was just like excuse me you're just stabbing me right there right there and then live yeah. the life respect the music you've grown up yeah. we've grown up These old kill the hippies <laughs> let's play some Alanis yeah. Morissette and I mean you know and it was just like uh, okay but you do love everything that rocks because I, I you say it quite a bit and I, and break it down a bit too well I do yeah I've That's heard, a good thing. I've been airing that break for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is remarkable, though. Uh, Here's your that, fan. Uh, that the, oh, my fan. 
Oh, we have a fan for Pierre. God bless Marissa. She's trying. Would you plug that in? We're trying to recreate. Marissa's brought a little plastic fan. The other way. You're that thing even working? Up. She's no, blowing. There, there you go. There we go. Turn around, Pierre. Turn around. There you go. <laughs> That's it. Now we got oh it. Live the life. Respect the effing music. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's actually pretty good. I mean, it was something like that, but yeah. the power of that wind turbine, God bless you, child, for going to that extra effort <laughs> for that small amount of payoff, but that was good. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, Speaking of paying off, let's pay off some listeners right yeah. now. Yeah, I've been hearing that? that for 10 years. Here we go. Preston and Steve on 93.3 WMMR. Now, the Daily Letter. All right. Preston and Steve show brought to you today by The Letter. It was really early, and I was listening. You never thought I'd hear it. And then I came in, and I just barreled on you. It was great. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, oh, right, The Letter. Um, it's S as in Satan. All right. All right. <laughs> All right, we'll take caller seven. We'll stick with the S's. Uh, 215-263-WMMR. And you need to know the word of the week prize, and it's just some straight up cash we're going to give you. So give us a call right now. Let's see if you have to know all the letters that make the word the word of the week. Uh, so what do you have in store for today, Pierre? Uh, well, we are going to live the life and respect the music. We will do everything that rocks. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, we've grown up and you've, you've grown, grown up. up. Here at the radio station. Yes. Uh, we had another one tuned in to you. Oh. Uh, I think the worst was that much closer to death. That but, much yeah, closer yeah. to death. We're all about to die, so please tune in. <laughs> um, anyway, The Who will be on the workforce box. Uh, Nirvana and some Foo Fighters combined for Dave's birthday tomorrow. And um, we'll see what else we can get into. And I've got a great song in the sweat set. Uh, which will get you dancing coming up shortly. <laughs> and I think we'll play some Bachman Turner Overdrive. Nice. I think that's a good call. Uh, yeah. uh, in our sweat set coming up shortly. All right, excellent. Let me uh, go to the phones, see if we can get a winner. It's, uh, hey, it's Sandy. 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 On the presidency show. Let's get her a Sandy, a proper entry, a p uh, intro, please. Sandy. All right. Hi, Sandy. Good morning. Hi, good morning, it. Uh, good morning, <laughs> it. Sandy, what's the word of the week? Chaos. Great day of the morning. <laughs> Chaos. Exactly. And Sandy, normally I read this lengthy bit of copy when I give you the prize, but not today. I'm just giving you $300 in cash, all right? Awesome. Thank you. You bet. Hang on the line, Sandy. We'll get your information. We'll take care of you. That is that. And with that, I need to thank our sponsors, the Preston and Steve Show. Brought to you today by Duncan. The President Steve Show runs on Duncan. Also brought to you by Acme Markets. Uh, Acme Markets Fresh Foods, local flavors. And also by Trinity Rehab locations all over and now open in King of Prussia. Trinity-Rehab.com. Uh, next week, we got lots of stuff. We got things. <laughs> we got all that. Well, the problem is that we would, it would, we would appear to be bragging yeah. were we to read off all the things. I understand. Yeah. Just, Charlton Heston will just be tune, there. Oh, wow. Bob Hope's going to be on. Dead. Dean wow. Martin, I want to tell you, I'm really decomposing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have those guests and more next week. That is it. We are done. Rage on. Have yourself a wonderful, safe weekend. We'll see you later, gang. Bye-bye. Preston and Steve on 93.3 WMMR. <laughs>